All right, good afternoon, everybody. How's it going? Do, 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 do. Sorry that we're late. Um, I realized that I had uh, I had capped my resin on Genshin Impact and I had to go spend some real quick. I, I went and did three ley lines really fast because I'm out of Hero's Wit. I actually would have been fine and on time, but then my microphone wasn't working because OBS changes its settings whenever Windows does an update. Does anyone else have this have this experience with um, with Windows um, update lately that it, it like up it has to update like ten times or some shit? Like it has to like it shows up in your taskbar and it's like, hey, we need to update, and then you update and you restart. And then it just doesn't do anything. It just it just doesn't. Like you specifically hit update and restart, and then it doesn't. And then you, it, you do it like ten times, and finally it restarts. And then it does the update, and it's like, okay, cool, I finally did it. And then you come back to your computer like n n later in the on the evening, and the fucking update symbol's back. It's back. It wants to update again. It, it's like, what? We already did it, and and you're fucking. Your Microsoft Edge bullshit held the computer hostage for a bit. Like, we went through it, and now you want to update again. Just... Ugh. Can't relate. Sorry, Lin Linux Master Race. Boomer Joe. A little bit, a little bit, Boomer. A little bit, a little bit. All right, so it's almost Christmas, everybody. So you all know what that means, right? What does almost Christmas mean? It's almost Christmas. Almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. All right, so here's the plan for this week. Uh, I'm hoping that we... I heard that the uh, episode 4 of this game is short. So the plan is to finish episode 3 and 4 today. And then tomorrow and the next day, finish episode 5. Because I hear episode 5 is long. And then uh, Thursday we're going to stream Cyberpunk for I don't know how long. I don't know. I'm, I'm having... This is gonna sound ridiculous, and I'm sorry. Um, I was never one to have any any anxiety or anything like that about about anything really, apart from public speaking, which is just like funny now considering um, you know the profession. But I don't really consider speaking to YouTube and speaking on stream to be public speaking. You know, like if uh, if you were all in front of me, I would be terrified. Like if I have to, if I have to go up like in front of a crowd, I would be I would be terrified. Um, so I have a lot of anxiety about, about, uh, like since the kids were born, you know, like I've become a person that has a lot of anxiety. Um, I don't know, I don't know why specifically it's probably to do with being a father and you know, there's a, there's a lot riding on you now. Like when, when you're a dad, um, you getting sick becomes like a really, a really big thing because of other people. But anyway, um, I, I have a lot of, I have a lot, of, I'm having a, a lot of anxiety about Thursday string for some reason because having done the videos on The Witcher and like having interacted with um, not a lot, but some people that work at CD Projekt Red, you know, some of the, some of them have messaged me. Um, like, I don't know, I just, I just feeling a lot of anxiety about playing that game on Thursday. Like, what, what if my superpower kicks in hardcore and it's just like worse than Fallout 76? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm really, really anxious about playing that game on Thursday. I'm, I'm anxious about, like, like how it's going to add to the, the Witcher 3 video, of course. Like, I, I'm really, I'm just, but I'm also really anxious about, about just cringing as, as we play this game on Thursday. And if it's just like, oh my god, like, I saw a video of someone driving through a gate. <laughs> That's all I've seen. It's just like, oh. <laughs> I'm anxious, man. I'm anxious. 
Um, okay, uh, one other thing, uh, I, cause, uh, I've been playing some games, um, I've been recently playing Sakuna of Rice and Ruin, and I am sorry to say that I am going to stop playing it. I played it for about four to five hours, and I'm not enjoying it. Um, I was thinking of, um, of, of making a video on it, and, like, just making the video and then just, and then just not releasing it until the Witcher 3 video is done because I just felt like making a really short like flash in the pan video um you know just a completely new project a new game new everything and uh I, I don't like it and considering that it's it's a a lesser known game and no one's really gonna care that much about a video on it like I'm sure some people find it interesting no matter what but uh like you have to pick your projects a little carefully um, I don't want to. I just don't want to like pick on the game. Um, so if you're playing it and you like it, then then maybe you can message me and tell me what I'm doing wrong from what I'm about to say. But just like the the farming is is kind of vague and a bit tedious. I'm okay with some tedium, but it's just kind of it's just kind of boring. Um, I, I feel like they're not giving you enough direction, it's, and it just kind of like eh, you know like the combat is is very very uh, progression based in that. You know, it has an additive system where if you don't have the stats, you're literally doing one damage. So it's like the Dragon's Dawn and Breath of the Wild system, and you, you're gated through that. Um, I I find that the combat is quite quite buggy. The AI is brain dead. There's not much enemy variety. The main character is annoying as fuck. I think the main character is meant to be annoying and is supposed to grow throughout the game. But like I'm like X many hours in now, and she's still annoying as fuck. And she's also one of those like. I, I look like a kid, but I'm actually a thousand-year-old goddess, or whatever the fuck that trope is. Um, I don't know, like, it, 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 it's, it's a bit buggy, it's a bit glitchy. I don't know, I'm just not having a good time. I'm just not having a good time. So, like, the, the combat is just kind of like, I feel like, I, like you, there's a parry, and I, and I do it accidentally sometimes, I don't even know how it works. Um, like, the first boss was a reskin of an enemy that was already in the game, and that, that was really, I think, the final nail in the coffin for me. Um, uh, and, and the fact that I, I got there before I had even done my first rice harvest and I think that the game wasn't really prepared for that. So, yeah, I, I don't, I, I'm not having a good time with Sakuna of Rice, of, uh, rice and Ruin. If you have played the game and you loved it and, and you want to message me and tell me, it, it really picks up, you know, after you get through the forest area or something like that, or after you do your second rice harvest, it really picks up. Then, then message me and tell me that. Like, I, I will, I will read your case, and I'll be like, okay, cool. I'll, maybe I'll go back and give it another try. But uh, as it is right now, I'm giving up. I don't like it. Are you talking about again? No, I'm talking about um, Sakana of, of Rice and Ruin. Do 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 do. Because I was playing that a little bit over the weekend. Do, 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 do. I eat rice. I'm at soup. Persona 5 Strikers. I don't think we're going to play Persona 5 Strikers until we play Persona 5 Royal. Play Phoenix. Yeah, I want to play Phoenix, but um, like we're playing right now. No, I want to play Immortals Phoenix Rising, but uh, I don't know. It's, it's just a big commitment right before Cyberpunk, right? I'm going to guess that Immortals is at least a 50-hour game. So, yeah, I don't know. No Game Awards stream? I haven't decided yet. We'll see. Have you been a chance seeing the portal stuff I sent you? Any opinions? I have not seen that, sorry. If you want to send it to me again, I might check it out. Uh, there's some pretty cool fan art on Discord. Um, the the fan art is still coming in. If you would like to go and see it, uh, check it out in the in the Stream Art Museum. I check out everything that comes in there. But uh, for now, fan art is is still gone. Sorry. The new policy is still in effect. I've purposefully oversteered with a bunch of stuff, and then we're gonna correct as we go. So like the first couple streams back, I, I barely read chat at all. Now I'm reading chat a little bit and we'll settle somewhere. But like, I just want to be clear, it, it is never going to be what it was ever again. 
like we're never going to get back to what it was um, and that's intentional and that's for the best for, for probably all of us involved but um we we will be finding somewhere in the middle to be comfortable but uh it'll be closer to the new thing than it was to the old thing and if you don't like that that's fair you could you can watch someone else you can go do something else with your time this is just how it has to be apologies or i'm afraid uh, thank you, Big Ol' Ryan, for the 27 month resub. Thank you, Charlie Murp. Not Murp. Murrow. Murrow for the for the element three sub. Tier three. Holy shit. Thank you, Charlie Murrow. Uh, we don't have a tier three emote because we don't we don't um uh, I don't know what the word is. Uh <laughs> we don't we don't uh sell out that hard here, but uh thank you for the tier three uh sub, Charlie Murrow. Thank you, Lobster Persona, for the 14 month resub, Captain JK for the two month resub. Samaranth for the 4 month resub. That's a fun word to say. Mr. Smarticus for the 15 month resub. To Toto Q. Totok for the 24 month resub. Welcome to the two year club. Tom Pretty, not Tom Petty, 45 for the 4 month resub. Milevis for the 31 month resub. V Colo for the 2 month resub. And Numi24 for the 4 month resub. Diego JP73 for the 4 month resub. Grab Wrecked. Grab and Wrecked for the 4 month resub. Depressed Luigi for the 4 month resub. Uh, I think there are a lot of depressed Luigis considering how Nintendo's been acting lately. Fucking hell, man. Uh, Persona Sheet for the 313 sub. Sack Gooner 63 for the 413 sub. Zorgrox for the bits. 333 bits. Nice. Bozo Link for the 613 sub. Ipsin 13 for the 1213 sub. Welcome to the One Year Club. Ralph Clogs for the 3413 sub. Holy shit, 34 months. Sly Gamer 64 for the 2413 sub. Welcome to the Two Year Club, Sly Gamer. Gamtheus or Gam Gamtheus depending on your mood, for the 513 sub. Slygamer64 for 2,000 bits as well. Holy shit, Slygamer, thank you so much. And Finn Freezer for the 21 month resub, which always makes me think of my son um, digging through the freezer for a secret popsicle or something. <sighs> Alright, so um, we're in the trial, and uh, I don't really remember everything that, that went on uh, in the last stream, but I don't think I need to recap it because the games usually do that for us. So uh, I'm sure there's going to be some sort of recap, and we'll we'll get through it as we go. So yeah, let's get into it. Uh, our day, our goal today is to finish this trial and the next case, and then we're sitting pretty for getting um, case five done uh, tomorrow and the next day. So uh, today might be a longer stream. And I'm drinking my coffee. Ah, Lily Blend 101. Just the perfect amount of Nesquik. Makes you realize that you're not drinking coffee. Good nom nom nom, Mr. Right. Good morning, Maggie. So what do you think is going to happen today, sir? Yesterday's session didn't go so well and ended on a giant mystery. That's true. And we still haven't solved a single part of it yet. Are you okay, Nick? How's the sound? It's a little too loud for me. How's it for you guys? Are you okay, Nick? Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, of course. I saw that, that little flash of doubt in your eyes. Oh, oh, sorry. Sorry for the interruption. This is, this is the last one. Does anyone know, like, has Twitch made a statement on, on whether we can show the genitalia in Cyberpunk 2077? I know that they let that go for, for the Conan game, and if it isn't the focus, they're okay with nudity, but, like, I mean, like, the character creator starts off with choose your PP size, right? Like, am I supposed to censor that out, or, or what? Like... Or is that a joke? Is that not even a joke? Is that not even a thing? Like, I'm- I'm pretty much blind on this game. Can people- can people stream Witcher 3's boobies? They must, right? It's probably fine. You can only show the PP if it has a chainsaw augment. <laughs> you can only show PPs. So, like, as long as there's a PP on the screen, you can you can stream Cyberpunk 2077. So, if there's no PP, you can't stream it. So, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to have face cam. God damn it! I saw that that little flash of doubt in your eyes. No, no, that wasn't doubt. That was um, determination. Why don't I believe you? It's nearly time, Maggie. You better get going to the defendant's seat. Roger, don't let me down, Mr. Wright. I'm counting on you. Hey, pal. 
Hey, Detective Gumshoe. Quit stressing Maggie out. She doesn't need that. How did you know she was stressed? I was watching through the doorway. Oh. You look like you lost the case already. Show a bit of confidence, will you, pal? Here, maybe this will help. Huh? Have you taken up aromatherapy too? Not in a million years, pal. Don't tell me that you don't remember this thing. I mean, in a million years, I think you dabble in aromatherapy after a million years. Hmm, come to think of it, it doesn't look like one of those aromather aromatherapy bottles. This is the small bottle that turned up in Trebian's kitchen a couple days ago. Bet you forgot about it. Wow, look at all these little bottles. Oh, they're aromatherapy oils. He's got so many, they're overflowing onto the floor. Hey, wait a minute. There's one bottle that's different from all the others. Well, what do you know? It doesn't have it doesn't have a label either. And sniff, it doesn't smell. We finally got the analysis results back from the lab. So, what is it? Is it the poison? I'm afraid not, pal. It's medication. Medication. Yeah, for ears. Topical use only, apparently. For ears, you mean? Yeah, it's the medication Glen Elg was using for his ruptured eardrum. Oh, okay, so he's the, the um the kleptomaniac stole it. All right, what was Glen Elg's ear medicine doing in the kitchen? The same reason our Magatama was in the kitchen. Small bottle refilled into the court record. Refiled, sorry. Um, what about the unidentified fingerprints? Anything on that? Someone screwed up, so they only had time to analyze the contents of the bottle. Convenient. Another hour, and they might have gotten something on the prints, but hmm, that's going to weaken its impact as a piece of evidence. Cool. Okay, pal, this is it. Make sure your defense is impregnable today. Got it? T today's trial. I'm gonna expose that guy for what he's done, or my name is in Phoenix, right? This really is Markiplier, can see Right? I, I, I'm not the only one who thinks he kind of looks like Ma that Markiplier, right? Thank you. I, I, when I said it, a lot of people in chat were like, what? I'm like, Th thank you. I think he kind of looks like Markiplier, too. Just from that angle. January... <laughs> Glen Elg. This guy, right? He kind of looks like Markiplier. This is Corey's on session for the trial of Maggie Bird. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Ready and waiting as always, Your Honor. Very good, then we'll get underway at once. Yesterday we heard the testimony of Mr. Victor Kudo. He claims to have witnessed the defendant putting a powder into the victim's coffee. However, the witness's testimony was played with a number of problems. The mark on the rim of the cup shows that the victim drank from it with his right hand. But according to the old man's testimony, he picked it up with his left hand. And we're not even going to entertain the possibility that he just picked it up like a chat and didn't use the handle. His fingers probably Markiplier's fingers couldn't even fit in that handle. He just picked it up, wrapped his thumb and his forefinger right on the left side, like I am right now. Thank you, Mr. Godot. Furthermore, according to the witness's account, the victim was listening to the radio with an earpiece in his left ear. Yet the victim's left eardrum was ruptured, which made him effectively deaf in that ear. It's amazing how many contradictions a single case can have, huh, Nick? Ha! <sighs> allow, allow me to enlighten you, Your Honor. First cup, the world, you see, keeps turning, and we must turn with it. Is that a soap opera? You've lost me already, Mr. Godot. Don't let the mysteries of yesterday's yesterday mystify you today. Only losers think like that. You've got to change with the times. That's one of my rules. Are you implying that you resolve these contradictions? You know the answers to these riddles? Sorry, you know the answers to these riddles. The old guy wasn't just throwing seed in here. He was throwing us off the scent. So, like... I really think that Ace Attorney 3 so far has been a lot better than Ace Attorney 2, and I, I have to wonder, is that because Ace Attorney 3 is just better than Ace Attorney 2, or is it because we had a longer break between them? Like, we, we went Ace Attorney 1, and then Delta Rune, and then BOOM Ace Attorney 2, and I, and I wonder if maybe because we had a longer extension between them, uh, between 2 and 3, I wonder if, if that helped. I don't know, I'd, I'd have to go back and see what, what my issues were 2 were, just... Three just seems a lot smoother. I don't know. The investigations are still a bit dull. And today I'll prove it. Very well. Let the first witness take the stand. And you are... Oh, bonjour, everyone. I am Jean Armstrong, the owner of and head chef of Le Trebian restaurant in Chante. 
What do you mean for asking a witness? But are you a woman? Damn, Perf Judge Oak over here. Ooh la la, monsieur. As you can see, I am le pert and perky gentleman, no? Uh, um, can you answer the question? Uh, on the day of the incident, you were in Treben's kitchen. Isn't that right? Vis you, monsieur. Huh? Everything feels right. Yeah, time for a celebratory cup of coffee. Ah, wow, he's totally unfazed. Doesn't anything intimidate this guy? Very well, your testimony, please witness. Please tell the court what happened that day at Trebian. Oui, volunteers. At Trebian. When it all happened, there were just two customers in my restaurant. I remember I was experimenting with some new art deco that day. Like, <laughs> this accent is just the fucking word. Like having a large mirror between the tables, for example. Oh, great! We're only saying that now? We, oui, perhaps that is what the old man was looking at. La cup, la ipiris, and la glasses. He would have seen everything in reverse. Now, oh, we're just this. We're just like revealing this bombshell in the first testimony. A m m mirror. D oh, we on grand mirror, la most enormous mirror, and and I took it down after the murder because uh, why not? And I didn't tell any of the detectives. Actually, pal, he did tell us. You just never fucking asked. That's right, Phoenix. You never asked if there was a mirror. You should always ask if there was a mirror. I knew that already, and suddenly the mystery disappears. Like I said, the world keeps turning, so roll with it. Hmm, that would explain the coffee cup and the earpiece conundrum. The mirror would have made everything appear back to front. What, what the heck, it's way too early in the morning for this to be happening to me. Now then, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. What, 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 Why didn't you say this before? Hey, remember earlier when you and your friend tried to beat me the fuck up? How about we bring that up when it all appear happened? And who were the two customers exactly? Mice, of course, the young man who died. And the other, not so young man. Hmm, you are referring to yesterday's witness, I presume. What about the other man Maggie says she saw at the table? Something tells me Mr. Armstrong isn't planning to disclose his existence. We need some hard evidence first before we can bring him up, don't we? I guess I'll just have to try a different approach for the time being. I remember I was experimenting with some new art deco that day. You were experimenting with art deco? How come I never heard about that before today? You never asked. You are not familiar with the language of interior design, monsieur. Monsieur, please stay on topic. Now, why didn't you tell me tell the court about this before? But I did, just a few moments ago. Ahem, excuse me, Mr. Armstrong. This deco you mentioned, are you referring to some sort of deco? Decocture? No, no. Art deco. Art deco. It is a style of design, Your Honor. He's talking about interior design, walls, ceilings, carpets, that kind of thing. Ah, uh, yes, of course. That that deco. I was trying to achieve a more la effeminate look for my restaurant. I was planning the most bold remodeling of the decor, like having a large mirror. How big of a mirror are we talking about here? Boof, something about four meters wide and, uh, we oui, about two meters high. As, as big as the largest genitalia option in Cyberpunk 2077. Let's see, if one meter is about one yard, holy glass in a frame, that's huge. Is that how you got five, half a million dollar in, dollars in debt? I was intending to install it on the ceiling eventually. The ceiling? Was there a mirror on the ceiling? I don't remember. Mize, no, but I decided not to go through with it in the end. What should I do? Should I ask him more about- Of course we ask him more about the mirror! Where was it? If you really had such a large mirror in the restaurant, someone would have noticed it. But there's nothing about a mirror in Mr. Kudo or Maggie Bird's testimonies. But, but- Objection! You didn't ask, try it. You have only yourself to-
<laughs> Fucking hell. Fucking hell. Thank you, the Wuggy. The one and only Wuggy for the 3113 sub. Did you get my DM, Wuggy? You did! Cool. Alright, we're good. Awesome. Curio Twitch for the 150 bits. Uh, a username, and username, for the 737. Thank you very much. Bouncy Bob for 100 bits. The Real Salty XD. I'm the Real Salty XD fucking right now with this you didn't ask bullshit. Rabid Clone for the new sub as well. Thank you, Rabid Clone. Welcome. Welcome. Is you didn't ask an anime bullshit trope? What? A mirror was delivered to Trey Bien the day before the incident. Really? As Mr. Armstrong testified, he was carrying out some design changes. Is Ace Attorney even anime? And as it turned out, he didn't actually use the mirror in the end. This just doesn't add up. Even if a mirror was delivered to, Tra to Trey Bien, it doesn't prove that it was in the restaurant on the day of the crime. Ha. If you want to doubt someone, try it. Look in the mirror. Where is it? I'm sure the person looking back at you will, will be dubious enough. Hmm, so the witness yesterday had seen the victim reflected in a mirror. Oui, but perhaps that is what the old man was looking at. Normally, I'd expect people to know the difference between a reflection and a real object. Objection. That old man's fucking crazy! Normally, how does normality come into this? That's lame, Trite. Even for you. Damn, fucking banging the fa- Oh, your response right! Huh? Are you trying to say that if something isn't normal, it is impossible? Is that it? Where does that leave the porky-headed lawyer and the top-knot chick over there? And the ungodly cool guy with the mask over here. Well, try it. Ack, not the hair. I do not have a top-knot. It's a top hat. Mr. Go Godot is correct. Is he? A lack of normality is no basis for discounting an argument, but it's like a good... Okay. Is it... Is it... Isn't it normal that someone would notice if someone was it was shot in the head in front of them in a cafe? Normal normality doesn't factor into it. Just because it, just because it's not normal doesn't mean it's possible. Someone wouldn't notice someone getting shot in the head right in front of them. Mm, that's a good point. Yeah, normality doesn't add into it. Yeah, well, your response to it. Bien, logic has won the day, has it? The cup, the earpiece, and the glasses. He would have seen it. everything in reverse. No. Where did the mirror go? Everything, he would have seen everything in reverse? Oui. Hey Nick, we should take a second think about what old CD said in his testimony. How do you phrase it again? The boy is wearing the earpiece on the same side as the green lens of his, of his specs. No question, you can lock me up if I'm wrong. It was his left ear, without a doubt. And then he used the same hand to pick up the cup, his left hand. If he saw everything he described reflected in a mirror, then everything he said he saw on the left was actually on the right, huh? And that clears up the problems with his testimony, I guess. Or does it? Ha. <sighs> it's kind of hard to believe everything's the fault of a mirror, but... Do you think old CD saw everything through a reflection? If he did, it would explain all the contradictions in his testimony. But that just makes the situation worse for Maggie. There's got to be something in that old man's testimony. We've just got to dig deeper. Okay, but, like, th this is his left eye, right? Just to be clear, I understand that it's on the right of the image, but it's his left eye, and it was his left ear that was... Like, this isn't reflected, is it not? Is that... Um, like, she has it, and she's not reflected. See, after the after the 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 possible messed up art, like I'm, I don't know if that's a mistake, or like is that the corner? I don't think so. I don't know if that's a mistake or if that's a clue. Shit, man. Absolutely not a robot. I wonder if she's gonna show up to the trial. Wore a HMD over left eye. Yeah, left eardrum was ruptured. Okay. Okay. 
there's no way they got that wrong because that that was that's from an inspection right that's not from a, a reflection thing okay let's let's present it the coffee cup the earpiece and the HMD let's think back over mr. kudo's testimony for a second shall we the boy was wearing the earpiece on the same side as the green lens of his specs. No question, you can lock me up if I'm wrong. It was his left ear, without a doubt. So, to summarize, we were told both the HMD and the earpiece were on the victim's left side. Now, if Mr. Kuda saw all that saw all that in the reflection in the mirror, it means both the HMD and the earpiece were actually on the victim's right side. Okay, I'm impressed that was actually that was actually um a clue that you have to know this. Alright, that was really good. I enjoyed that. Good. I'm really, really happy that wasn't just a mistake. And exactement, you see, Monsieur, now that you think about it, it is not so odd, no? Unfortunately, that's where we run into a monumental contradiction with the facts. I love that word. Use it in every video. If Mr. Kudo really did see everything in the mirror, why is it that the HMD is now on the wrong side of his head? Ah! Order, order, Mr. Wright is correct. If the witness genuinely observed the victim reflected in a mirror, then we would expect the victim's eyepiece to have been on his right eye, over his right eye. How bitter. Try it. you should have a taste of this bitterness. It'll calm you down in no time. Are we talking about your coffee or something completely different? Whoa, you don't understand the way the witness thinks. How he thinks? You remember this, I presume. The I broke the vase, sorry, apology, let I mean Mr. Kudo's sworn testimony. <laughs> exactly. The old man has one very grievous habit, other than throwing seeds, making up bullshit. The more of an impression something makes, the more muddled his mind makes it. And what's the most striking thing about Mr. Elk? Clearly it's the victim's eyepiece. And that's my point. The old man strikes again. So, despite despite this argument, everything he said is still going to be valid testimony. Mr. Elk's HMD made a big impression on the old man. I saw the earpiece and those newfangled spectacles he was wearing. Oh yes, they were both on his left ear. Do you, do you hear? His left ear. Ha. Huh. Well, try... Um... This, that's the worst but best impression of Kudo ever. Wow, I really thought he was old CD for a minute there. Godot was good. Godot, enough. I must agree that yesterday's witness was irresponsibly rash in much of his testimony. Bad luck, Nick. Looks like the boil of a contradiction you found is just a rash. A mirror can't be beaten by a handful of seeds, nor can it lie. So, what exactly was the old man looking at? Fill us in, Mr. Armstrong. Go on, tell the court. We're all ears. Except for the victim. Oui, oui, I can explain. Please, if you will look at the plans of the restaurant. Sometimes I wonder if the judge is even paying attention. Alors, is everyone sitting comfortably? Then let us begin. La mirror, it will. Oh. Oh. What do you mean it was here? La Mer, it was in the middle of the restaurant, dividing the two halves. It was like the other guy sitting on a different table completely and they were just like having a remote conversation. Like what the fuck is this shit? There's there is only one seat from which you could have seen an seen an image of the victim. That was the seat at the table next to the victims. That was where the old man was sitting. This is, this is pure tank and rumpa bullshit right now. Oh my god. It's like they were bringing the mirror to the back room and they got tired and they were like, ah, fuck it. Let's just leave it here. After the terrible inc incident occurred, I moved the mirror so it was not in the way. Wow, just tampering with the crime scene. But naturally, I did not touch anything else. Correcio. And not show you my reflection trick? Hmm, I see no problems with the explanation we have just heard. Really? For, for the table next to the victims, Mr. Kudo could have seen the victim in the mirror. What a naughty little co coquette. I am confusing all the men like this. Don't worry about it. 
we can keep up, except for the guy breaking out in a cold sweat over there again. <laughs> the whole world's gone mad, I can't hate that guy. <laughs> you said you didn't touch anything else apart from the mirror. Are you quite sure about that? The volunteers, of course. Very well, Mr. Wright. Your cross-examination, if you please. Okay, if that's part of the testimony, I know I can contradict that. The mirror. Lemira was in the middle of the restaurant, dividing the two halves. Hold it! Why the fuck would you do that? So run this by me again. <laughs> Phoenix is fucking done. <laughs> the mirror was here, correct? We, oui. we oui. really? Because I know if I were you, I wouldn't have put a mirror there. It would be in the way. <laughs> He's just fucking. Look who's talking trash. <laughs> You're obstructing my view, among other things. Oh, yes, good response, but, 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 this is my seat in the courtroom. <laughs> Trayvon's charm is that it gives you the impression that you're the only customer. <laughs> oh, this is, this is amazing. It's just... Temporarily <laughs> placing a mirror in that spot would hardly be in the way. Unlike you, I tell you, Monsieur Lemire was there. It's the middle of the restaurant. Judge! Zerk is only one seat from which you could have seen an image of Lemire. And where would that be? Oh la la, look how you lean towards me. I always attract the younger boys. Maybe I should keep you in suspense a little longer. Oh, please don't. Mr. Armstrong, tell the court what you know at once. I attract the older ones too, you know, and some. Shall I tease you too? Yeah, it's working. I'm already seeing a very hot someone, so I'm afraid you'll be waiting for a long time. I bet she has mocha cream skin and cappuccino perfume. Oh man! Does she make your coffees into mochas? Bien, I will tell you, there was only one seat from which you could have seen. That was the seat at the table next to the victim. So why can you only see the victim from that particular seat? Mais, monsieur, is it obvious? No, it is obvious. No, if you if you look at the plans, you will understand. The victim would have been uh, reflected in the mirror like so. But what about a second mirror that we haven't asked about yet? If there was if there was like another mirror here. And another mirror here, and he, and you turned your head in the right way, you could probably like bounce it over here, like we we never asked about a second or third mirror. The victim would have been reflected in the mirror like so. If you were sitting at the table next to him, you would have seen everything, no? So that's the seat all CD was sitting in, in on that day. When the poisoning happened, the old man was sitting at the table next to the victim. Why does it seem kind of odd? After the terrible incident occurred, I moved the mirror so it was not in the way. Did you move the mirror while Mr. Kudo was off calling the police? Oui, exactement. I carried it out for the, of the restaurant Zen. You moved a huge mirror like that all by yourself. What can I say? I know how to pick things up. And some. Alright, can you demonstrate? Hehe. <laughs> Kudo actually laughed at something. Well, given the witness's physique, I suppose it is possible, but we're not going to ask him to prove it. Did you move anything else from the crime scene, Mr. Armstrong? I look like the obliging type, no? But naturally, I did not touch anything else. Well, I know you touched two other things. You touched the the, the, the lottery ticket and the, the ear cream. Are you sure about that? I touched nothing except the mirror. Mirror? Mr. Wright, is there something the witness has said that doesn't match the crime scene? Yeah, there is. I just can't put my finger on a, on what exactly. Ah, suffering from a case of heartburn, right? Oh, I have just a thing for that. An oil with golden myrrh and frankincense. Add a few drops to your coffee and voila. Enjoy. Focus to your next breathe. I need to ignore those two and just find some evidence. It is pretty strange though, isn't it? I mean, nobody mentioned anything about a really large mirror. You think someone would have? Yeah, but Maggie didn't and neither did old CD. Then the only logical explanation is that there was no mirror inside Trebian that day. Now I've just got to prove it, somehow. I, I, 
I'm sorry, is the conclusion going to be that he made up, that he put a giant fucking mirror in the middle of the room, and the judging the dough were like, hmm, yes, very reasonable, and then we're gonna prove there was no mirror, and they're gonna be like, whoa, oh my god, there was no mirror. <laughs> he came into the courtroom and fucking rolled a, a fucking natural D20 on the fucking charisma bluff check? No, your honor, I put a giant mirror in the room, and then after the murder, I moved it, and none of you called me on it. <laughs> Alright, is it the lottery ticket? Winning ticket, that's the winning ticket. Alright, so, um, I guess it's gonna be this, right? Your honor, what do you think about this witness's statement? I'm not sure I follow you, it clearly contradicts- Oh, no? Okay, that does though, doesn't it? Song of Shimmer's right, objection denied. Oh. I guess because there's no fingerprints on it, but then how did it get into the kitchen? Okay, all in for my, uh, uh, it, it just gave us like the, um, the perfume thing, right? The perfume, I thought that was a hint. Victims of medicine found in the prints, Truman found lying in tender lender, million dollar bill, uh, lunchbox. Experience most. Why is this still in our inventory? Experience the most thrilling 10 minutes of your life every Monday at 1 30 p.m. Computer virus made by Glenelg. Okay, that was missing too. Empty bag, maybe? Hold on. Empty bag? No, okay, let me let me save scum. Let me save scum. Okay. So I'm a little annoyed that that doesn't work, because I really feel like that should work. Like that that is a valid contradiction. This was missing from the crime scene. It's the victim's ear medicine. It should have been there. That should work. So what does it want instead? Maybe it doesn't want this. I didn't touch anything else. On third day, there's no meet the tiger. The victim got this one in a straight bun. Deadly powder, worn by Megan, tell me instantly it's some kind of big stains. A winning tactic for vice search from her. Copy stains. This was missing too, right? It was stuffed behind the thing? Is it that? No. Okay, um, do I have to press them again? Is that one of these press ones again? Okay, but naturally I did not touch anything. Okay, but let me let me rev let me see it again. All right, so it's not that left by the victim. Doodle is in the victim's handwriting. Uh, an article from December fifth says it's from. Okay, picked up. When I broke the vase at my seat, I'm sorry. And like it wasn't wasn't allowed to be fixed or anything like that. I can't remember what they said about the about the vase last time. Blueprints of the crime scene. Died of potassium cyanide, time is death between 1.30 and 1.30 p.m. Photo of the scene taken near the kitchen. Coffee contained potassium cyanide covering the victim and, and Maggie's fingerprints. A winning ticket for half a million dollars, 200 in the white social Did we do this one? Because he stole a ticket, right? No, he didn't. Okay, I didn't think so, but it's good to check. Worn by Maggie at the time of the incident, has a small pocket with big stains. A deadly powdery poison, bears Maggie fingerprints, found in her apron pocket. The victim got this from the doctor. Okay, that, that, we did, we, that wasn't it. On December 3rd, the day of the incident, says not meet with the tiger. Found a tender lender, made a cardboard and painted look authentic. Computer virus made by Glenn Elk, potentially worth millions of dollars. Okay, the CD was missing, so like possibly that. 
Experience the most thrilling 10 minutes of your life every Monday at 1.30 p.m. Where did we find this? I can't remember where we found that. A tenderly handmade lunchbox fills the stomach with love and plenty of weenies. One million dollar surgery payment was due last year. Matches used for advertising found in lying and tender lender. The victim's ear medicine found cut. Okay, so that's, that's not it. Um... The CD? Nope. Nope. We did this one already, right? So it's not that one. Sorry if it's something else, I just want to 100% exhaust this, you know, like, just make sure. Incident occurred, I broke the vase at my seat. I'm sorry. These are the floor plans. Yeah, I don't know, sorry. I remember I remember there being something about the vase that he broke the vase and the and the vase was still in the picture from last time, right? There was something weird about that. Let's try those and if it's not that then we will uh Oh, it's that. Your honor, Mr. Kudo's words yesterday strongly contradict Mr. Armstrong's testimony. This is the letter of the apology was written by Mr. Kudo, is it not? Isn't Mr. Kudo's like whole entire testimony is completely bunk? I realize it looks useless, Your Honor, but this is still testimony. Ha. Huh. I guess useless people are only really good at identifying useless things. What relevance does this scrap paper have to do with the trial, Mr. Wright? Mr. Kudo's testimony is actually rele very relevant to the question at hand, Your Honor. Because it's very clear it contradicts w with this piece of evidence. Okay, didn't we do this already? That... He... This piece of evidence contradicts with the testimony you've heard, Your Honor. The crime photo. Yes, this photo clearly shows something that theoretically should not exist. What on earth do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? Should not exist. Ha. Sounds like you're describing yourself, Trite. Now then, if the defense would please clarify its statement. What does some of this thing exist? Okay, I thought we did this already. There's one thing that was clearly demonstrated by yesterday's testimony. Mr. Kudo broke the vase that was on the table where he was sitting. Was that confirmed by Mr. Kudo though? Or, or by anyone other than Mr. Kudo? Maybe he just made that shit up. And yet, as the court can see, there's an unbroken vase on the table next to the victim. Why? Because Mr. Kudo was not in fact sitting at the table next to the victim at all. Don't be an idiot, Trite. That's impossible. That seems the only one Kudo could have seen the victim's reflection from. Okay, I guess that... I guess I'm hung up on the fact that, that Kudo's testimony should be thrown out and was complete nonsense. But, to be fair to the game, like, Godo is still pushing it as legitimate and the judge is going along with it. So, like, this is kind of like cornering them into their own bullshit. Like, if, if you're going along with Kudo's testimony as, as, like, real, well then, here's another problem with it. So you can't have it both ways. You can't dismiss his testimony as bullshit, but then also use his testimony as evidence. I guess? I don't know. I, I think that... Saying that he stole a bottle or, or the lottery ticket should have also worked there and kind of, like, segued into this, maybe? I don't know. That was kind of weird. Exactly. There's only one conclusion we can draw from this contradiction. There was no mirror in trade band that day. Your testimony, Mr. Armstrong, is an elaborate lie. Mon dieu! 
Don't try to confuse the court, right? Obviously, the witness cleaned up the vase. Well, the police were taking their, their time getting to the crime scene. Unfortunately, Mr. Godot, that doesn't quite work for me. Mr. Armstrong already testified to the contrary in his own words. I did not touch anything else except the mirror. Oh, I, I also cleaned up the vase. Sorry, I forgot to mention it. Update update your testimony, witness. Uh, urg. Gug. Well, witness, what do you have to say for yourself? Sniffle, I forgot. I also cleaned up the vase. Sorry, I'm a neat freak. It was automatic. I just did it. I was right. There was no mirror in the restaurant that day. In light of this revelation, we return back to the original problem. Why did the victim have an earpiece in an ear which he couldn't hear? You only get one shot in life. There's no turning back. If you want to claim that the mirror wasn't there, Trey, then this problem is all yours. How do you explain what the old man saw? If I can answer this, then I'll be that much closer to the truth. I can feel it. Are you going to be okay? Can you really solve this contradiction? Do, do we have to? I'm sorry, what? There's more than just one, this one contradiction, Maya. What do you mean? Why is this on us? Remember what Maggie told us. There was another man at the victim's table. And there was a sample CD on the victim's table. It all flies in the face of Mr. Kudo's testimony. And I think I know the reason why nothing in this case is adding up. He was invisible. Well, Mr. Wright, let's hear your answer. Yes, Your Honor. The reason behind all the contradictions is in Mr. Kudo's testimony is very simple. He's crazy. The ear doctor made a mistake. Mr. Kudo made a mistake. The victim was a phony. The ear doctor made a mistake. Okay, I mean, that's possible. He did have ear medication. The victim was a phony. Also possible. Mr. Kudo... All of these are possible. Okay, so what? what is the evidence that is... That is telling us that what's the victim got this from the doctor before going to Trebian. The bag is empty. That's true. Did did we find um, ear medication in his ear? Left eardrum was ruptured. No, that is that is ruptured. It was ruptured. Okay, so that's not it. So he was pretending. So he was a phony. That has to be it, right? The ca this case is riddled with contradictions, yet there is one very simple answer that clears them all up. And what is that? The incident Mr. Kudo witnessed and the incident the victim experienced were two completely different events. Okay. What? He's still alive! Come in, Glenelg! Welcome! Welcome! This is a test! The next test in the League of Lawyers! Yeah, yeah, you must always figure out! It's a phony case! There was a phony phoenix in a phony case for the real... <laughs> Good job! Here's Chadworth! Kiss him, phoenix! Kiss him! It's now a wedding! Oh, yes, I, I, can, I can marry you both right now! <laughs> yes, the victim that Mr. Kudo saw wasn't Mr. Glenelg at all! It was an imp... Is it even the judge? <laughs> Maya, who <laughs> the fuck are you? <laughs> Obviously, unlike the victim, there was nothing wrong with the imposter's left eardrum. That's how he ended up wearing the earpiece in, in his left ear by mistake. Pooh. Order, order in the court. Settle down and or I'll clear the courtroom. Quiet, Gramps. Why don't you clear out of here, huh? Whoa! What did you say? Try it. Are you saying that what Mr. Kudo saw was a setup? Yes. Do you have any proof of that? No. Someone pretended to be Glenn Elgin acted out the whole coffee poisoning. All for the express purpose of creating a witness out of the one Mr. Victor Kudo. <laughs> Get real, Try it. Why would anyone want to do that? Isn't it obvious? <laughs> No, the thing Mr. Kudo was most insistent about in his testimony was. 
The serving girl brought him a jabuccino, but she put something in it. That's the serving girl right there in the finished chair. I remember her well. The, the victim was like, yes, let's, let, let, let us fucking frame this serving girl for my real murder that's gonna happen. I will go along with this. Yes, let's do a fake murder to frame her and then another real murder. Okay, that now a fun one. Here we go. Rehearsal murder. All right, so he wasn't expecting to be murdered, I guess. I don't know, it's this game. It's, it's so hard to believe, but... There was one and only one reason to show Mr. Kudo this fake poisoning. To show Maggie Bird in the act of poisoning the coffee. Are you insinuating that the waitress in the old man's story was a fake as well? It's true that there were no other customers in the restaurant at, that, at the time, but... It's also true that the chef was there. He would have noticed what was happening. He, he's not even a real chef! His food's terrible! <laughs> My god, am I even a real judge? <laughs> That's right, well, when, if your restaurant really was a scene of such theatric, you would have known about it, correct? Oh la la, this is most difficult for me. <laughs> no, it's quite simple. All you have to do is testify. You were under oath after all. Was there, in fact, a phony at Trebian that day? The defense demands that Mr. Armstrong tell the whole truth about what happened. <laughs> the defense request for additional testimony is accepted. You will accurately explain in detail the events in the restaurant that day. Oh, oh no, you finally asked. Now I have to. I'm under oath. In the restaurant. La victime, Monsieur Elg, he came to my restaurant alone. I remember the old man arrived not long after him. There were no other customers. Then he got word he had won the lottery, man. Elg became very excited. Okay, so, like, was there a plan? And then he won the lottery. Like, he legitimately won the lottery, right? Like, you can't plan for that. Is it a fake lottery? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you can't plan for. And then was the plan off? Like,. <laughs> It was approximately five minutes later that, that the poisoning incident occurred. No one, there was no time for a phony to do the acting. Just so we're clear, there was no mirror in the restaurant after all. Je vous demande pardon, forgive me, your honor. I lied because I wanted this mess to be cleared up quickly. Hmm, okay, I'll accept it. What you have just done is commit, is commit perjury, Mr. Armstrong. I will decide how to punish you later. Ooh -wee. Oh, damn, judge bringing it down. For now, we will hear your cross-examination, Mr. Wright, if you please. Hmm, he took that perjury charge a bit too well. But I'm guessing he'll be in more serious trouble after the cross-examination. Hmm, you just committed serious perjury. Please continue your testimony. Everything else after this is going to be accurate. The victim wants your L. You can not alone. Was he alone at his table as well? Min, we. Oui, I saw him from the kitchen. Yet the defendant, Miss Bird, remembers it differently. She swears there was another man at the victim's table. Ha, huh, unfortunately for you, Trite. Wait, so that means this picture is completely fucked up then, right? Where's... Is, 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 is the grand twist gonna be that there was a mirror after all and even the chef didn't know about it? Like, this is fucked up now, isn't it? And this picture over here, was he at a different table? Wait, I don't understand what the fuck is going on. Ah, uh, unfortunately for you, Trite. Yesterday's witness also testified that the victim was alone. You know, seeing you squirm like that reminds me of a certain coffee's bittersweet bite. What kind of coffee has, been, has he been drinking? It's not coffee, it's love. It's love that's bittersweet. We put love in our coffee on rainy day Wednesday. Hearing my say that makes her seem wise all of a sudden. I remember the old man arrived not long after Ian. Oh shit! see him? No, I was in the kitchen, but I heard him. I remember him shouting, yes, half a million bucks. Damn. Damn. Who's the last person I said thank you to? Was it Rabbit Clone? I think it was Rabbit Clone. Thank you, Sea Snack, or Sea Snake. It's Sea Snack for 17 month resub. Thank you, Violet Impetus for the 5 month resub. Thank you, Wilfin, for the 3 month resub. Thank you, Pucker Star Ocean, for 
like 4,000 fucking bits, 4,249 bits. Thank you so much, Star fucking Star Ocean. And like a shit ton of gifted subs too. 20 gifted subs and a shit ton of bits? Um, thank you, fucking Star Ocean, for gifting out subs to Jiggly Girls, Kutufu, Miesis, Fresh190, Safil, Safli, Kevin, that's a lot of E's, X, a Bamboo, Sherlock93, Rich SC21, Oslius, RG9S, Bard Zaku, Leonidas Nero, interesting name, uh, a name I can't pronounce, welcome name I can't pronounce, Sola Sola, he, Hyen, Hyena De, Deus, Hyena Deus, that's gotta be it, History's Plushiest, what? <laughs> Og, Ogurd 99 Ogurd and No Tail 3. Thank you so much, Parker Starshin. That's fucking generous as hell of you for all the bits and, and, and the gifted subs. I'm not your first rodeo either. Holy shit. Thank you, Solid Sora, for the new sub. Welcome. And thank you, Grum and Watch, not to be confused with Game and Watch, uh, for the 15 monthly sub. I remember him shouting, yes, half a million bucks. Presumably the defendant heard that too then, correct? Maggie? Who's Maggie? She looked like a poor little frightened dove. And what about Mr. Kudo? The old man choked on some bird seeds that got stuck in his throat. Hmm, it seems we now have yet another incident on our hands. It was approximately five minutes later that the poisoning incident occurred. And what... And what were you doing at that point? Without any customers, you must have had time to kill. I am a multi-talented woman, Monsieur. Sorry, what do you mean? There is la... There is la, round che... la renowned chef, Jean Armstrong, and the tragic poet, Clarice Armstrong. C -c Clarice? Correct you. Oui, I was writing a poem, an angry tale of a chef in an af... In half a million dollars of debt, cooking for a man who won half a million dollars on the lottery. He didn't deserve it. It's called Pourquoi. It means why. Perhaps I could recite it for La Court? Please don't. And then he did. You mean you contacted the police as soon as the incident occurred? I asked the old man to call from the payphone by your own argument, Trite. The purpose of this phony victim's performance was the old was the old man would see it. I am, I am legitimately half expecting Glenel to walk into the courtroom at some point during this trial, and for the judge still not to throw it out. Hmm, Glenel will go. All right, explain what happened, and if and if Phoenix doesn't find a contradiction in his testimony, Maggie is gonna be found guilty of fucking killing you. <laughs> guilty. <laughs> In, 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 other, in other words, once the incident occurred, this opportunity would completely disappear. Indeed. Bien, it seems the shadow of doubt has been lifted. N'est-ce pas? I guess Mr. Armstrong is connected to this case, huh? Absolutely. Someone was impersonating a Markiplier, and I refuse to believe he was obvious. He was there the whole time, after all. But if you're right, wouldn't Maggie have noticed too? She fell unconscious when the incident occurred, remember? Convenient! Ah, you mean that's when the phony stages act? We'll know for sure once I find a hole in this testimony. How did they know she was gonna pass out? Alright, so what's the hole? I have no idea. Like, I'm, I'm just along for the ride at this point. I have no fucking clue. Look at the bunch of L came to the restaurant alone. Uh, okay, that, that seems, I don't think we can disprove that. Uh, I remember the old man arrived not long after him. There was no other customers. When he got word he had won the lottery, when I became very excited. It was approximately five minutes later that the poisoning incident occurred. Uh, none, there was no time for a phony to do the acting. Okay, but. You, there's all that unaccounted time for, right? When he left? Experience most certainly. Okay, Monday at 1 30 p.m., that's when it happens. And he was poisoned. When was he poisoned? Where's the autopsy report? Time that's between 1 30 and 2 30 p.m. Alright, that, that's a big window. That's a suspiciously big, big window. It's 
approximately five minutes later that the poisoning incident occurred. Nuns, there was no time for fun to do the How do we, how do we, um, present the missing time? Call the police by payphone. That, maybe? I don't know if that's what we even need. Granddaughter. Okay, what does, what does Maya say? I guess Mr. Armstrong is going to take this case out. Absolutely. Someone was impersonating Mr. Elegant. I refuse to believe he was oblivious. He was there the whole time after all. But if you're right, wouldn't Maggie notice it too? She fell unconscious when the incident occurred, remember? Uh, you mean that's when the phony stage is at? We'll know for sure once I find a hole in, in this testimony. That's when the phony stage is at? Is after Maggie, Maggie fell unconscious? But wasn't it before that? Because, because, um... Kudo saw that, and then he had to leave, right? And then Kudo was gone. So I feel like it's it's when Kudo was gone. All right, is there anything else that says when Kudo was gone, or is it just his um his profile? Dungeon Master poisoning, uh, photo. I don't think it's gonna work. One more Maggie's small pocket book stains. Okay, 10 minutes of your life. So 130, so it was 140 when he found out that he had won. And he was put, and he was poisoned five minutes later, according to him. Is there, any, is there a hole there? A tenderly handy lunchbox, million, million surgery. Okay, before we go searching for that, let's let's just save it and make sure that it's not. No, he was gone. He had plenty of opportunity. Of course, it could also be I just have to press everything again. No, that's not it. Okay. Maggie saw another customer, but we're just not, we're just not, I don't think we're ready to address that yet. When we got word we won the lottery, Mon Elg became very excited. It was approximately five minutes later that the poisoning incident occurred. No one's, there was no time for funny to I think. Okay, I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Maybe this is one of the things where you have to, you have to press it all again. Oh, maybe Victor Kudo. We, he comes in a special coffee. I drink your coffee once, Mr. Armstrong. It's special. I'll give you that. It's worth a sip just for the experience. Oh, you make me so happy, Monsieur. You are most welcome anytime. I don't remember this happening. Did I miss one? I said it was worth one sip and nothing more. So, old man Kudo arrived at the restaurant around the same time as the victim. Maybe I should ask about his arrival more. Do you yeah, I'm, I missed this. My bad. All right, how many minutes after? What time was it? I have curiosity about what time was it when Mr. Kudo arrived. Oh, no. Uh, I cannot remember, Monsieur. Hmm, I believe we were told by a witness yesterday. The crime was reported at 2.25 p.m. by a kind, scary old man, sir. Oh, that's it, you're done. You're done, slam dunk. Does that perhaps jog your memory, witness? That incident happened about 20 minutes after he arrived, so the victim must have arrived between 2 p.m. and 2.10 p.m., no? Hmm, just after 2, huh? Thank you for your help in jogging my memory, monsieur. You are wonderful. Ah, ha, ha, I can't sit here all the time and do nothing now, can I? The time of day will be added to the witness's testimony. We want to judge anything, everything I do. I do it for you. Damn, you know it's true. Merci bien. That's French, isn't it? Ha 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 ha. I bet at least one person is in a good mood. He's even humming a song to himself. You know it's true. Everything I do. I'm a real manager. Okay, so um. Okay, do I press that with this? Gotta be, right? 1.30. Gotta be, yeah, that's it. I'm afraid I finally got you, Mr. Armstrong. Qua? What do you mean? At the time in question, the victim was listening to the radio with his earpiece. The show he was listening to was Millionaire Radio. Each week they announced the winning numbers of the half million dollar, dollar lottery ticket. Oui, that must be the show Mon Elg was listening to. I can't see any problem with this testimony, Mr. Wright. 
I wonder. You say the victim arrived at your restaurant after 2 p.m., correct? Oui, oui. I am sure of it. I remember it perfectly now. I know it was that time because I had just finished serving the la, la lunch, la lunch menu. Get to the point, Trite, if you have one. That show is broadcast live at 1.30 p.m. And it claims to be the most thrilling 10 minutes of your life. It's all in the air at 1.30. Better buy a ticket. Now supposedly the victim made some noise when it was announced that he had won. And yet, I don't believe his cry of joy could have occurred after 2 p.m. Because the show had already finished more than 30 minutes earlier by the point in time. So, did Kudo take an hour to find a phone? No. Noon? Now you're changing it to noon? This victim had been we've been told about has done nothing but, but the impossible. Listen to the radio with a ruptured eardrum, catching a show that was already over. There's only one conclusion you can draw from these facts. This victim was an imposter acting out the poisoning 30 minutes after the real murder. Oh, wait. Yes, there were two Glenellos in Trade Band that. Glen Elk now dead, having been poisoned by the real killer, and the phony Glen Elk acting out the events for Mr. Kudo to witness. It certainly seems that way. <laughs> I mean, if that wasn't the case, how could you explain the time discrepancy? Yeah, there's no other way. Quite a performance, Trey. You were almost on a roll. But sadly, you lack the rock hard foundation of rhythm to build your song. What is this, Music Theory 101? Let's recap. According to your imaginative theory, it's now just after 2 p.m. The phony Elg is performing a play for the benefit of Mr. Kudo. How do you explain then where the real Glen Elg is? He was in a, another part of the restaurant behind a big gigantic mirror that's gonna come back now. I don't believe I have to spell this out for the court. However, at that time the real Glen Elg was already dead. That's certainly the obvious conclusion. Objection. Thank you, Trite. That's exactly what I was hoping you would say. What? Now, I presume you can prove this theory of yours? Can you explain where the missing corpse went to? The missing corpse? According to the old man's testimony, there was only one other customer in there. If that customer was the phony Glen Elg, then where did the killer hide the body of the re real victim? In the kitchen! Narg! The prosecution has a valid point, Mr. Wright. If your theory is is to stand up to examination by the court. You must provide us with proof by answering the prosecution's question. Where did the killer hide the body? Y yes, your honor. No conjecture, Trite. Let's hear some facts from it. Please be under the table. Please be under the table. Please be under the table. Please, please. Oh my God, please be under the table. Show the court a piece of evidence that proves where the body was hidden. Evidence? What's with the intense pressure in here all of a sudden? I thought I had him with that contradiction but he's turned it all around and backed me into a corner instead. Well, was right. The court will now hear the defense's theory and evidence. Under the table. First, where was the body of the real Mr. L concealed? I mean, he, he really did have a mirror, right? He ordered it. Yeah, uh, it has to be inside. It was in Chadworth's trunk! It, be, it would have been dangerous, too dangerous to take the body outside. Obviously, the body must have been hidden somewhere inside Trebian. Hmm, interesting. But where could a body have been hidden inside a restaurant? Perhaps you would care to show the court on these plans, Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. The exact location where the body was concealed inside Trebian is... Okay, it could be the kitchen. Right? They could have moved the body into the kitchen and then staged it and then moved it back afterwards, right? I mean, that's possible. But it could also be under the table. The body was sitting here. Hmm, I see. Nice supposition. But the real question is, can you back it up? Where's the evidence that proves the body was hidden in that location? Shit! Shit! No, it's not under the table. It's not. I don't have any evidence for that, right? I 
I'm a lawyer. That's my evidence. That's all you should need. Too bad. I don't think you'll ever grasp the real heart of rock and roll. What are you talking about? He means that your evidence is irrelevant, Mr. Wright. You're not a lawyer. Come on, Nick. You've got to think it through. Feel the beat and then hit him with some heavy metal. Okay, I need to calm down when I fact straight. Pick another location. There's nothing wrong with my logic so far, I'm sure of it. I'll have another go at proving where the body was hidden. It would have been, it would have had to have been too dangerous to take the body outside. Obviously the body must have been hidden inside. Okay, so it's in the kitchen. It's in the kitchen. It's, if it's not in the kitchen, I don't know. I mean, it could... It could be over here. All right, it wants evidence for where it could be. So it's in the kitchen because that's where his um his ear medication ended up being, I guess. It's in the kitchen. The body was hidden here. Hmm, I see. Nice supposition, but the real question is, can you back it up? Where's the evidence that proves the body was hidden in that location? Left by victim. An arc woman summer fist is real, okay. He says half a million dollars the owner's lender. Now nah, that's really vague. Like the matches ended up at Tender Lender, they moved it to Tender Lender and then brought it back. I mean, possible. The victim's ear medicine found covered in unidentified fingerprints in the kitchen. All right, I'm gonna go with that. Mr. Armstrong, do you recognize this bottle? No, no, no. I have never seen that ugly bottle before in my life. I only use- Oh, it is in the kitchen! Okay, I only use the very best bottles, Monsieur. Is the, is the IS quality only for me? Where is that bottle found, Mr. Wright? Interestingly enough, Your Honor. It was found in the kitchen of Très Bien. Eh? Quoi? But I only ever use these bottles for my aromatherapy oils. Can you prove that you found it in the kitchen, right? Did you follow evidence procedure? If that ever comes up! But this bottle doesn't contain aromatherapy oil, Mr. Armstrong. No, it contains a medication. What kind of medication? I'm sure everyone remembers, don't, don't they? That Mr. Elk visited a word I can't say clinic and was given medication that day. You can't be serious. The defense had the co contents of the bottle analyzed and I have the lab results here. The contents of the bottle matched the prescription that was given to Mr. Elk. Whoa! Glen Elk's murderer hid the body in the restaurant kitchen, at which time this bottle fell out of the victim's pocket. Mr. Armstrong, when the incident occurred, didn't you say you were in the kitchen? Mon dieu! Yes, you know what I'm about to say. It was you who hid the victim's body. You did a fine job pretending to defend my client, Maggie Bird. However, you are setting her up to take the fall behind the poor girl's back. Order! Order! This is an extraordinary development! Witness! Did you... Did you murder Mr. Glenel? One second chat. Uh, thank you, Pumpkin... Pumpkin Swift. 33 for the freedom of three sub and 100 bits. Thank you so much. Hope you're enjoying the stream. Witness, did you did you murder Mr. Glenelg? Never. I could not do such a horrible thing. No. All oh, Von Karma's regularly scheduled earthquake powers. Mr. Godot. Wow. The bitterness. Every time I get lied to, I always down a mug of coffee. That's one of my rules. Do you have the slightest idea how many cups you've had by now? Then I like to do the same to the person who lied to me. Someone lies to me like a hoe, I down a cup of joe. 
That's the third rule of the Godot Club. I like to take them down with my empty cup. Listen up, chef. How about a brand new flavor in your ear, my H-deficient friend? Je vous demande pardon. Please, you must hear me out. It is a trap. Listen to me. Por favor. Yo hablo espanol. Mr. Armstrong and por favor is Spanish. Fake French. I'm only going to ask you once. Did you do it? No. No, no. Absolutely no. I simply... I... Let's hear it. You've got one shot. Right, Gramps? Witness! The court will permit you the chance to make one final statement. If you lie under oath again, Mr. Godot's coffee mug awaits you. As does my gavel. Oui, it is clear. What do they always say in the movies? I've got a bad feeling about this. Very well, begin your final testimony, Mr. Armstrong. No matter what, you're going to prison, dude. The confession. It is true, I id la body in la kitchen, behind my gigantic mirror, and under the table. A man forced me to do it, I had no choice. I had to go along with him because there was a reason why I could not refuse. But I did not kill him, I swear it, you must believe me. Alright, what was this reason? I can't tell you! Hmm, okay, we'll accept it for now. You were forced by who? I, I cannot say, or I will be erased. Let's try a different question, then. When Mr. L died, was he the really the only person at this table? There was... There was another man. I knew it. Maggie was telling the truth. You must cross-examine the witness now, Mr. Wright. There's just one more thing I need to do. I gotta break this guy and get him to tell us the name of the real killer. The Confession. It's true, I hit the body in the kitchen. I mean, this this feels pretty much over. I guess there's gonna be a recess and then uh, Fake Phoenix or um, uh, Wednesday Adams is gonna go on, on the stand, but that kind of feels unnecessary at this point, or maybe it'll, it'll, it'll be a good part of it. I don't know. Uh, did you carry the body yourself? Oui, I carried him and I carried Maggie too. Maggie too? When she saw the victim collapse, she fainted. Oh, it was actually a legit fainting. I could not leave her, her there. But why did you hide the bodies? A man forced me to do it. I had no choice. Well, this was a real impromptu fucking recovery. An hour later, how did you get an actor to come in and do it? What man? Who was he? No, no, I cannot say. I fear for my life. Was it also... Was it also him that came in and pretended to be Glen Elg? Is this just fucking Master of Disguise over here? And he just never looked like... He's really scared. You'll just have to put the words in his mouth, Nick. Yeah, you're right. If you won't tell me, I'll tell him. But why would you go along with this man? I had to go along with him because there was a reason I could not refuse. And what reason would that be, Mr. Armstrong? You know, Monsieur, yes? Surely you cannot expect a young maiden to talk about such an embarrassment. A maiden? You're a bit old to get away with that. And a bit too male. I can't finish the cross-examination without establishing his reason, so I'll just have to prove it. WITH EVIDENCE! But I did not kill him, I swear you must believe me. So you were claiming that all you did was hide the bodies, is that correct? Oui, that's right. If we were to believe you, Mr. Armstrong, you must tell the court everything. You must make clear the identity of the man who ordered you to do this. He's already confessed this much, he might as well stop dancing around the real issue. Yeah, but he really doesn't want to tell us who the killer is. Then sock it to him, Nick. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. It's true. Okay, man forced me to do it. I do the reason I could not refuse. Okay, and that reason is is that he's like really in debt, right? You have a half a million dollar debt, don't you? Half a million dollars? Is this true, Mr. Armstrong? We oui. je suis désolé. I was weak and I borrowed la money. This is Mr. Armstrong's Achilles heel. And that's why you couldn't refuse anything asked of you by this man. Larry Butts! Where is he? Larry Butts! I'm gonna sneeze. <sighs> Sorry about that. 
for Canadian. Joe sure's no, sure knows no French. I'm not from Canada, that's why. I consider myself Canadian, but I'm not from here. I mean, I've lived here for over 20 years, so you would think I would have picked more up. But it wasn't... Has it been 20 consecutive years? Oh, yeah, it has been for sure. More than 20 years than 20, 25? Yeah. 25 years. Not 25 consecutively, though. You, you'd think I would um, I would have picked more up, but no. Uh, half a million dollar loan from a bank, uh, a black market loan shark. And you had no way of paying it back, did you? That's why you were forced to do anything this man told you. We, oui, it is as you say. Mr. Armstrong. The tiger. He told me he was going to do use my restaurant for a business rendezvous. On the day in question, he was meeting the victim to demand that he repay his loan. I don't know why it happened like that. I just did what he told me to do. I had no choice. I carried the body and the inconscient Maggie out of the dining area and into the kitchen. After that, I just tried to forget what I had seen. I think we can now safely say that the man who forced your hand was Mr. Furio Tiger. Okay, well, I think we've proven Ma Maggie's innocence without a shadow of doubt now. Slam dunk, we're done, right? Who am I doing one question for the question for you, Mr. Armstrong? The poison and lottery ticket that were found in the defendant's apron pocket. Was that your doing as well? No, I knew nothing about that. Making it look like it was Maggie who had done it, I was, I was not. It is despicable. Mr. Godot. You will summon the Furio Tiger as a witness. I doubt that can be arranged today, so we will adjourn for now. What? Proceedings will continue tomorrow. No! No, no, no. He's outside. Please. Please, not another investigation. 30 minutes. What? The trial will go on. I'll see it to him myself. I need half an hour to get that guy on the stand. Not a minute more. That's very precise. How the... Don't sit back and relax yet, right? No one knows if that chef is really telling the truth or not. This trial could still go either way. Sure. Very well. Your request is granted, Mr. Godot. We will resume once Mr. Tiger is already is ready to take the stand. Until then, the court is adjourned for a 30-minute recess. Time for the Godot Racing minigame. Apprehending time. Do, 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 do. January 8, 1.21 p.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. Uh, someone in chat a little while ago asked if I got a review copy of Cyberpunk 2077. I did not. Um, I didn't ask for one either. I don't take review copies of anything. So even if it had been offered to, offered to me, which it wasn't, uh, I would have turned it down. I don't take review copies of anything. Um, like I, If I took a review copy of something, I would feel uh, biased in some way. And it wouldn't necessarily be biased to be, to be favorable to something. Uh, it might even be the other way. It might be biased that I have to be really hard on it to justify that I wasn't biased because I got a review copy. Uh, the only key I've ever accepted was um, was for, for Factorio's Steam release, and I, had or, I already had the game. It was just a... Um, just a, they offered me a key for the Steam release, um, and I wish I hadn't taken it, actually, because it, it wasn't early access of anything, really. It was just, I just didn't know that at the time, but I wish I hadn't taken it. And I, I disclosed that in the video that I made on Factorio. Um, to be clear, though, I, I want to clarify this every time I bring this up. I do think it's possible for someone to take a review key and be unbiased. I do, I do think that's possible. I just don't think I could do it. That's why. That's why I don't do it. But, like, for sure, it's possible. So we're finally going to see the tiger on the stand. We've almost got this case one now, Nick. I wish I could agree. Huh? When I cross-examined Mr. Armstrong just now, he said he was just doing what the tiger told him to do. But Godot picked up on it, remember? He pointed out that without proof, we don't know what if what he testified is the truth. I don't know if, is Godot evil or not? Like, I don't know, is Godot like Chadworth in that, Chadworth was going down like kind of a dark path for a little bit. I don't know if, if Chadworth was was like becoming a bit evil or not before Phoenix kind of intervened. Like, um, Von Karma, like Daddy Von Karma, definitely evil. Um, uh, uh, hot Von Karma, now that I have to be more specific, don't I? Um, 
you know, Francesca maybe a little evil? Not really? I don't know. Like, is Godot evil? I'm not sure. You mean you think Mr. Armstrong is lying? I don't know, but if that's the line the prosecution... Well, if that's the line the prosecution takes, we could be in trouble. I get the feeling that we don't have the case-making evidence we're going to need. Hey pal, here's some last minute evidence, Detective Gumshoe. What are you so jumpy about, Detective? Your hair's standing on end. Hey, that's the pot calling the kettle black, little Miss Top Knot. It's not a Top Knot. Damn. Jackie's pout so much better. Never mind about the hair, just calm down, alright? Calm down, I can't stand still when I don't have a job to do. I, I kinda get wound up. Arr, no kidding. You gotta have something you need me to do, pal. Anything. Well, um. Hey, I'm gonna take a job back down to the precinct. I could get some prints analysts for you if you've got an hour. An hour? The trial will have reconvened by then. But Nick, we still don't have a really decisive piece of evidence, right? True. Without some kind of trump card to pull out of the bag, we're really stuck. You said you could get some fingerprint analysis done in, a, in an hour? You bet. In that case, would you mind checking the prints on this for me? Alright, well we don't... The prints on this, right? Unidentified prints? Take that. Going back to the station anyway. Could you find out whose prints are on this? Oh, hey, that's the small bottle I gave back to you this morning, right? Yeah, I think it's time we solved the last mystery of who the prints are on it belong to. Sure thing, pal. Actually, that's been gnawing at me, too. I can do this in an hour, even though we couldn't do it overnight while the precinct's in chaos with that big hack that's going on. Small bottle given to Detective Gumshoe. Okay, I'll get this off to the lab right away. Just make sure you don't lose the case before I get back. This is pretty much the final showdown, I guess. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. It's time to separate the phonies from the real guys. January 8th, 1.56 p.m., District Court, courtroom number four. I hope so much that a, a line of, of, of questioning becomes, how the fuck did the old man mistake um, Tiger for, for Miss Glenelg? And then you flash the, fight, the fake fucking cardboard badge and say, well, he fooled all of you into thinking he was me. And be like, hmm, that's a good point. Yeah, he could have done that. Court will now reconvene. Mr. Godot, did you find this Furio Tiger? I even tamed him for you. It was a three cup job, no problem. Tamed him? The guy's name may be Furio Tiger, but come on. He's pretty lively. Be careful, he still bites. And very well, please show Mr. Tiger to the stand. Um, witness? Please state your name and occupation for the grog. Ah. Don't hide it under the table, my- Oh, under the table! Oh man, unless there's room for me down there too. Nick, there's a dead body under here. It's the real Glen Elg. We found him. What you say to me? Mm, nothing. I didn't say nothing. Honest. Who could have guessed that fear would induce a bad Brooklyn accent in the judge? <laughs> I got a business to take care of, you hear me? So who will call me into this hole? Was it you, Spikey? Ah, no, of course not. It was the judge. Your Honor, oh my god, there's a dead body down here! Oh dear, I, um, I seem to have dropped my pen. Where on earth is it? Don't mind me, just carry on with the proceedings as normal. That's it. We're doomed. Maybe you just didn't hear me. I said, who the hell was it that called me in here? There's no need to shout. We can all hear you. What you say? There's no point in struggling. You're caught in a snare. The relentless snare of the law. Damn, Chado over here. Holy shit. What the fuck? And I'm the one that hauled you in. Grr. Too, too cool. Don't let him get the better of you, Nick. Let's start with the basics. You know about the incident in question, correct? Incident? I don't know nothing about no stinking in this incident, mask boy. Oh, the ma everyone else sees the mask too? Okay. You mean you didn't attend the previous trial of Maggie Bird? Maggie who? I've got more important things to do than watch courtroom dramas. Of course. Well, perhaps you could give us your testimony then. <laughs> he pounds the gavel, but just kind of like reaching up and like hoping that he gets it. <laughs> a couple, couple of fake taps on, on the bar before he finally gets to it. Please tell us about what you did on the day of the murder. Oh, Phoenix, all right. You's the one who did, who set this up, didn't you? You's gonna regret the day you ruffled the tiger's fur. You hear what I'm saying? Gulp. Maybe I should have brought a diaper with me today. Whoa, get a grip, Nick. The tiger's alibi. 
I don't know nothing about no murder. I was tied up with business in December last year. Spent all of my time in the off in my office. I got whales lined up to borrow cash from tender lender every single day. You just want to check my alibi? Just ask Violetta. Yeah, just ask Violetta. Who the fuck's Violetta? Uh, at last, I found my pen. Very well then, Mr. Wright. Your cross-examination. Uh, what is it? Please, witness, if you could refrain from shouting out like that. I know I, I know the kind of games that that guy in the blue plays. That low life ain't no lawyer. He just punches away at stupid details till he wins. Low life? Me? Listen up, smarty. Every time you ask me some something that doesn't relate to this case, I'm gonna bill you $50,000 and you're just gonna borrow the cash from me. Uh, that's one loan contract I refuse to sign. And don't think it ain't gonna hurt when you tangle with the tiger. Love a good spectator sport. Just a minute. That's really not. This witness is. How can I put it? A hungry tiger roaming the urban jungle. Get on his bad side and he'll bite everyone's heads off. Yours too. Very well. I have no choice but to impose a penalty system here. Whoa. You better be listening. I said I got business to take care of. Big business. If I don't split now, I ain't gonna catch my bus. Will you take a bus? Hey, bus driver, you're ten minutes late. I got, I got, my kneecaps to break. I'm on a schedule. The court will impose a penalty for any relevant pressing of the witness testimony. Keep that in mind as you begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. You can do it, Nick. Come out from under there already, would you, Maya? The tiger's alibi. I don't know nothing about no murder. I was tied up with business in December last year. Spent all of my time in, in the office. Okay, so uh, the matchbook, right? Matches advertisement from a tender lender. Okay, but Vi like a customer might have brought those in, right? What else did we find? I got whales lined up to borrow cash from a tender lender every single day. You just want to check my alibi, just ask Violetta. Okay, so I want to know. I'm guessing we have to actually press something here. I don't know nothing about no murder. That's that's important. All right. I don't buy that you haven't even heard of the incident that occur, occur, occurred at Trey Man. Heh <laughs> heh. He's got a big mouth, right? He's trying to say I was in some in on some mob hit. Is that what you're trying to say? Where's your proof then? Um, evidence. Yes. Well, for an attorney to make an accusation in court, he must have evidence. That's from loan shark to lawyer, beginner's guide, eh? <laughs> ah, I see you're the studi studious type of striker, very good. Uh, why don't you ask him to represent you sometimes, right? Grr, what should I do? Uh, press harder. Alright, can we... Do we have any evidence to present that he didn't know about the murder? Do, do. I mean, like, we knew he was in the... We could say that, well, we saw him in Trey Ban yesterday. You know, you have, like, he's in debt, incident. Meet with the tiger, there you go. Alright, so, um, is it this one I press? Let's press it and find out. Mr. Tiger, what do you want? Or, if you wouldn't mind going into a bit more detail. This is a dead end, right? And you know it. Remember the rules. Pressing the witness with evidence to back up your attack is prohibited. As I said earlier, the court will impose a penalty for such behavior. Thank you so much, Judge. Ouch, the pain. Now then, Mr. Tiger, would you mind re repeating your testimony for the beginning, please? There's a bus someone's gonna pay. Alright, so can I, can I press anything as long as I don't press harder? Are you sure about that? We're talking about one month ago, you know. You see these teeth? That's how sharp my secretary is. Sharp? Is he talking about Vi Viola Cadaverini? Cadaverini? She writes everything in my scheduler. December. Mainly in the office. Mainly means that you could have gone out of the office. That's what it says. So that's where I was. That seems like a rather er, sketchy schedule. Grrr. Ah. There he goes again. Hmm. What the tiger did all December isn't the issue. What's important is what he was doing on the day of the murder. So, now what? Yeah, press harder. We have the calendar. Mr. Tiger, what do you want? 
or if you wouldn't mind going in a bit more detail. What? Oh, so I can't, I can't press? Oh, for fuck's sake. All right. Oh shit, the victim was killed on December 3rd. Were you in the office that day too? Maybe you used ain't listening. Of course I was. I never set foot outside. I had meetings all day with a bunch of cats wanting to do business with me. I ain't never seen that young kid before. I do believe the witness's last statement was important. Um, Mr. Godot, if you could please. Mr. Tiger, the court asked you to add that last statement to your testimony. Huh. Don't let an animal beat you. Be a man, your honor, and ask him yourself. Did you use someone who's office to another solid kid before? Okay, so I think that contradicts it, right? For sure? Yeah. Mr. Tiger, you claim you didn't know Mr. Glen Elg. But it appears that Mr. Elg knew you. What? Mr. Elg left this little note on his calendar. Meet with the tiger. And the date? December 3rd. There could be anyone named the tiger. Maybe he's going to the zoo with December 3rd. That's the day of the... What? What the fuck just happened? Alright. Discord just just minimized my game. Thank you, Discord. I don't know why the fuck you did that, but okay. That's the day of the murder. So, Mr. Tiger, I submit that you did indeed know, did indeed know one Mr. Glen Elk. Because on the very day of the Institute, Institute, you met with him. Gra ha 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 ha! Not bad. You's actually not bad. Sorry. I was just messing with you to see how good you were. Did you hear that, Nick? He said you're not bad. Yeah, thanks, Tiger. That's one compliment I can do without. Plus, he's lying through his teeth. Um, witness, please remember that you're under oath. Lies will not be tolerated. He's calling me a liar. Is that what you're doing? R R R Reggie? So you're saying that you're claiming to have never seen that kid before is the truth? I said I'm dead serious. He's better. He's better believe that's the truth. I showed up. You wasn't there. Ha! Then I say that gives me time to enjoy another cup of pure black magic. That is, while you testify for the court again, Mr. Tiger. Oh, Godot subtly signaling that, that the tiger just lied. Whenever someone lies, he drinks a cup. Ah, oh yes, Um, would you mind indulging the court witness? He never actually met the victim. That's got to be a lie right there. It's time I nailed this guy. I ain't a liar. I never met Glen Elk. There was some lame guy with that name, though, wanted to borrow cash from me. I set up a meeting with the guy at my office, Tender Lender. I waited around for him, but he ain't never showed. I ain't never even been to that trade band joint you here. Okay, well, the matches, but like a, a customer, or, or like a, a client, not a customer. I see, that all seems perfectly logical. You had arranged to meet with the victim, but he didn't show up. I've heard it's pretty hard to keep appointments when you're dead. Very well. You may begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. I don't need to, actually. He was in, he was in fucking trade band yesterday. I saw him. So did Gumshoe. There we go. Done. So did Maya. Done. Three people. Gumshoe, come back from the fucking, uh, from the fingerprint. Done. Didn't I tell you I, got you I got a big deal going down today? I ain't gonna make my bus now. I'm gonna have to take the express train. That bill's going straight to you, right? Grrr. The victim gone elk. Okay, is the, um, can't press anything bullshit still in effect? And yet, your name is written on the victim's calendar. Get that horse calendar out of my face. I'm the tiger, not a lame horse, you porcupine. Tigers like me eat horses like that for breakfast. No, 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 witnesses aren't permitted to eat evidence. Not that they ever would. Meanwhile, Phoenix is like... Yeah, no, no witness has ever eaten any evidence. Glass eaters. Well, there was a case once where a young lad ate. A anyway, if you had never met the victim before, how do you explain this note? He <laughs> there was only uh, one to our capture. That's very strange. According to the manager of the firm where the victim worked, December third was the date he had to repay his loan. He wasn't due to discuss borrowing money, but repaying what he owed. Oh, yeah, maybe he's right. Whatever it was, it was going down at the beginning of December. So you did meet Mr. Elg then. Hey, right. You might want to cool your jets a sec. I set up a meeting with the guy at my office, Tender Lender. So your meeting wasn't supposed to be at Trebian then. 
Why would I want to go to a dump like that? Hmm, how do you know it's a dump? You've never been in there. I want to talk to my clients that got an office stacked out for the job. I got the best punching bag you ever saw in there. Not exactly a professional office you've got there, you know. So you were in your office on the day in question. I waited around for him, but he ain't never showed. He didn't show up? Ha. Ah, what do you think, Trey? Let's see. How does a dead man get from a French restaurant to a loan shark's office? And you yourself didn't go to Trebian? What are you trying to pin on me here? Um, why don't you come down to my office? We can chat about this thing my way, yeah? I got the best punching bag you ever saw in there. No, no, no need. I'm good, thanks. Already been there. Listen up. I ain't got nothing more to say except this. I ain't never been in a train manager right here. Okay. Never? Not even once? Not even yesterday? Not even once. I was in my office that day, the day that went down. I didn't put no poison in no kid's coffee. Capiche? 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 Hmm. Do you think he really didn't meet Glen Elk? Not likely. Because I'm convinced this guy's behind the whole thing. So you mean that whole testimony he just gave was a lie? Of course. So we can't afford to give him time to think of ways to plug the leaks in it. I've got to nail him while I still can. Okay, where did we find this? Okay, has to be that. Mr. Tiger, is there something you'd like to tell the court about these matches? Matches? What are you talking about? We found them in your office at Tender Lender. They're from that restaurant. Ooh. If you've really never been to Trey Ben before, what was the book of the restaurant's matches doing on your desk? You've been snooping around in my stuff now too, wise guy. What are you, my ball and chain? Ain't no broad control of me. Order, order. Well, witness. I think it's time you started telling us the truth, don't you? Grrrr. So sorry, I'm terribly sorry, forgive me. I ain't no pussycat, I don't go back on what I said. But okay, I was at that joint that day. This is such an easy, like, a, a client must have brought them. Oh, it's so easy. How do they think of, no, there was a giant mirror that we just so happened to order a couple days and we put it in the middle of the restaurant and that explains what the old guy said. But they can't think of, well, I guess someone else brought them. Fuck. What? But listen good, all right? I might have been there, but I still never met that kid. Well, well. Looks like an order just came in for another testimony. And I'm this close to proving it was him. He did meet Glen Elg that day, and he did put poison in his coffee. He must have the poison for Glen Elg, Glen Elg's poison, at Trey Bien. I was supposed to meet with the kid at the restaurant that afternoon. When I opened the door to the joint, I saw one ugly scene. The guy was laid out over the table, stiff as concrete. I figured if the place wasn't hot already, it was gonna be, so I split. I heard the cop sirens on my way out, and I went straight back to my office. Uh, while I was there, I grabbed the fucking, just a, a box of matches. I see, you didn't actually meet with him in the end then. Well, Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. There was a book of matches on the thing. I just grabbed it as I left. Why not? Free matches while I was there. Made the trip worth it. Yes, Your Honor. Hold it. If I wait around here any longer, I ain't gonna... I ain't even gonna make the normal express. No more stupid questions. Ha. Huh. No problem. Anytime Trek pres presses you on something irrelevant, I see... I'll see he pays a penalty. Mr. Godot, that's my job. Your job is to slam that little hammer of yours and call it a guilty verdict. Godot, can you even see the tiger? Like, isn't, can't you not see red? So, so do it. Yes, sir. I guess he's more orange. The Special Express ain't cheap, right? So, just so you know, since you's paying. Oh man, doesn't the rule of law mean anything around here? Cross-examination, a trade ban. supposed to meet with the kid in the restaurant in the afternoon. When I opened the door, just the joint, saw one of the scene. The guy was laid out over the table, stiff as concrete. I figured if the place wasn't hot already, it was going to be split. Okay. 
Well, Nick, what do you think? He's running out of ways to avoid the truth. I need to press him fast before he has time to think things through. I'm about to come by your contribution. Be careful when you press him. I'm nowhere else you get penalized, okay? All right, so open the door to join us all one of the scene. How can you even see it from the door? Isn't it busted? I mean, that's really fucking like technical, right? Like, when I went open the door, I meant I opened the door, I went in, and I was like, I came over here, and I was like, fucking Grandpa S S Simpson going, nope. Like, but I guess so, maybe? An ugly scene, what do you mean? The witness has already told us, Trite, which makes that question irrelevant. But, but... I mean, I think it is relevant. I limit myself to 17 cups of coffee during a trial. That's the rule. You better limit the number of times you take a penalty, Trite. Or your guts will look like the inside of a chimney. Ashen. Don't want to burn you again. Mr. Wright. Yep, just, you know, the law's on our side for sure here. I guess I should impress him on that. I guess I'm going to make that special express after all. So to recap, this ugly scene you saw was the guy was laid out of the table, stiff as concrete. Okay, so how did you see that from the door? Like, I wanted the door here. Okay, I don't think we can contradict that. When I open the door of this room, so I'm going to go and it over the table, stiff as concrete. Yeah, but how did you see that from from the door? Is it that? You mean you saw Glen Oak's dead body? I guess I did, but I only saw him from behind. He was wearing some raggy bit of cloth called a hat. And what time was this? I don't know. Huh? You know what winds me up more than anything else in the world? Watches, round watches. I ain't gonna pollute my paws with some ticking henpecker. Out of interest, Mr. Tiger, what winds you up the second most? What? Huh? What do you think? Square watches. Damn, hates watches. Hates newspapers. Is this guy for real? Look, all I need to know is that something bad was going down in that place. I don't... I don't know what to do. I, uh, I feel like... I feel like this should be really easy, but they're just making it difficult by limiting what you can press and shit. Uh... Like, I, I really feel like the line of questioning here is... How did you see him from the door without coming in? But, like, I mean, again, he could just say, Well, when I said I opened the door, I just, you know, walked in and left. Like... Uh... Right, let's try it. Objection! You're something of a loan collecting pro, aren't you, Mr. Tiger? No one escapes the tiger's clutches while I'm something of a lie detecting pro. And no one escapes the phoenix's clutches. I think it's time we got something straight. What's this tray? A, a new line of irrelevant questioning? These are the floor plans of the crime scene. You say you were standing at the entrance, Mr. Tiger. From there, your field of vision would have covered an area something like this. Indeed, the witness would have had a clear view of the victim's seat. Isn't that what I just said? I saw the back of the kid's head. Okay. So now he's dug his grave by saying that. You could have just said, I just walked in a little bit. All right. So the answer is, is, the, is the witness is dumb. All right, unfortunately for you, that is not possible. If the court would think back, you'll remember that between each of the tables is a tall partition. Why, that's true. Now look at the plans again. The truth is painfully obvious. From the entrance, the field of vision of any customer walking in ends here. So from the entrance of Trebian, you couldn't have seen the victim's seat. But you did see the victim that day because you met with him. Objection. Wrong. Have you forgotten the old man's testimony yesterday? The victim was alone at his table. Objection. We've already established it was fake, but the defense just proved that point to be moved. 
The victim witnessed by Mr. Kudo was not Glen L, but a fake. What? In order to have been in order for to have Mr. Kudo falsely testify, the real killer posed as the victim he had just killed and acted out a charade. Definitely an orange suit. That will do! This trial has gone on long enough without the obvious question being answered. Who exactly was this real killer who impersonated the victim? You say the killer murdered one elk, and then impersonated his victim in a performance for the victor Kudo. In that case, Mr. Wright, reveal the identity of this criminal to the court. It was him. Obviously, the killer is Furio Tiger. No one could have done it. No, no one else could have done it. What? Well, witness. No, Gar, haha. -ha. Now that's cute. You think you can pin this on the tiger? Maybe you don't understand. The tiger is king of the jungle. Yeah. So I dare you to say it again. Come on, you got the guts? You can't threaten me, Mr. Tiger. I'm a judge. It's the defense. Go ahead and tell the witness, Mr. Wright. Aw, oh, Mr. Wright, Mr. Wright. Sounds, sounds to me like it must be you, old man. You've got guts. I'll give you that. Mr. Wright, do not leave me to handle this alone. Ha, huh, perhaps I can end this embarrassment. Mr. Godot! Let's just go back over Mr. Kudo's testimony one more time. You know who wouldn't hide under the table? Fucking Chadworth. The old man didn't just see the victim. Oh no no. The serving girl brought him a javachino, but she put something in it. There's no question about it. She's She very conspicuously put some white powder in there. Was the victim he saw the real victim or not? That doesn't matter. The fact remains, he saw the accused, the accused put the poison into the coffee. Yes, it was the waitress who poisoned the coffee. Very impressive, Mr. Godot. Waiting for my absence to launch your attack. <laughs> ha. Found your pen at last, Trite? Right? It was in my pocket. Ahem, but anyway. Mr. Kudo witnessed two people that day. He saw the victim, the supposed Mr. Glen Elg, and the waitress from behind. Yes, your point, Mr. Wright. I think the conclusion is obvious. If this Glen Elg was really the killer in disguise, then surely it's possible the waitress was also part of the show. What? You mean the waitress was an imposter as well? Yes. The defendant, Mr. Miss, Miss Bird, fell unconscious immediately after the incident. And someone used her fainting to hatch an elaborate plan to pin the murder on her. Who, who on earth was it? Who was this waitress that Mr. Kudo witnessed? It was Lisa Basil! Who is this woman? She looks pretty fucking sus. Her name is Viola Cadavereni. She's an employee of Tender Lender. He's making a big mistake. Do you know who Violetta's grandfather is? You better be going home in an armored truck tonight if you know what I mean. Stop shaking, Nick. Where was I? Yes, the defendant, Miss Bird, has stated the following. Well, when I took the coffee over to the victim's table, it's true there was another customer in the restaurant. Um, she was sort of creepy, and she had a kind of cackling laugh. There's just too many contradictions in this case. The second man at the victim's table who nobody but Miss Bird seems to have seen. The earpiece worn by the victim in his left ear when that eardrum was ruptured. And the radio show he was supposedly listening to half an hour after it was over. There is only one logical explanation that clears up all of these contradictions. The whole incident took place twice, once for real, and once for show. And Mr. Ferio Tiger, the only person who could have committed the crime, is you. <laughs> Witness, what have you got to say? That's cute. So sorry. You's alright. I could do with a guy like you around. What do you mean? Okay, I'm in on this game. I'm gonna have to charter a jet to get me to my meeting now, but... I'm gonna give you one more thing to think about before I go. Something to think about. You've got it all wrapped up nice, huh, right? But you've missed out on one real important thing. But that can't be. I was in the joint that day, and I met that kid too. But I couldn't have poisoned him, you see? What? Do you really expect us to believe you now, Mr. Tiger? Ha. What a troublemaker. Troublemaker? Looks like we're going to need another one for the road.
One more steaming cup of hot testimony. Indeed. Witness, you will explain yourself to the court. I will give you one more chance to testify. What happened? <laughs> what happened that day at Trebian between yourself and the victim? Ties to the victim. I think it's almost time for a break, but let's see how far we can get. Yeah, I loaned El Cash about $100,000. That day, we was due to have a little chat. The kid had hit his payback date, see? So anyway, he tells me he's got no way to pay up. I'm about to flatten the guy when he starts screaming. Yes, I won. Half a million bucks. He got lucky, you know? Real lucky. If that waitress hadn't done what she she done, everything would have been over. Now, I see that the principal amount you loaned to Mr. Elg was $50,000. Yeah, well, you've got the... You've got the... Vig to take into account? Vig? I don't know what that means. Take into account interest builds up fast, you know? That's faster than fast. $100,000 is twice as principal. And the repayment deadline was December 3rd, the day of the incident in question. Yeah, he was one lucky kid. He got that half a million just in time. So I ain't have no reason to kill the kid. And if I ain't got no motive, you ain't got no case. His motive? Hmm, he has to have one, but what is it? The CD ties to the victim. Now now you're not getting it. Yeah, I loaned El Cash about $100,000 that they used to have a little check. Okay, can I press everything now? Chad is explaining what Vegas. Thank you. Did he have any way of paying the loan back? The fool. The fool was a gambler. He said he couldn't give it up until he landed a big win. Yeah, there we go. Time for a break. Okay. Please enjoy uh, Fake Phoenix on the screen. I'll be back in five, ten minutes. If you've been sitting the whole time, I highly suggest you go up and walk around too. Go walk for five minutes.
All right, we're back. Thank you, Annie Storm Sonic, for the four month resub. Thank you so much. Thank you, the only GJ, for the three month resub. Thank you, Amon3, for the three month re uh, resub. Your name makes me think of the Mam Mammon Machine from Chrono Trigger. Thank you, one Wanye Quest, for the 21 month resub. And thank you, FangSup7, for gifting subs out to Mate Math, Rex Corvus, and Jack Mac Windows. Thanks so much. And apologies for the uh, the baby crying. She just woke up when I closed the door. I think. Whoops. Thank you, Bouncy Bob, for the hundred bits. Thank you. All right, here we go. So agreed to help him. Help him, you. I kept hitting him with ideas for ways he get he could get a big win, but the guy kept losing. So you were helping him for his for his sake or yours? Win through compromise. You help me, I help you. So what's the difference, huh? I don't believe this. Nick, would anyone really loan money to someone they thought was unreliable? Like, for example, if it were you, I'd only loan you five bucks max. Thanks a lot, Maya. That day, there he was due to have a little chat. All right, let's keep pressing and see if we can get more information. So how much were you expecting him to pay you back on that day? What do you think? The whole package, 100000 including interest. That's a real heavyweight punch. Once a client misses a repayment, you call the whole loan in. You want to make it in my world. That's all you've got to know. And how many times had Mr. L been late with his repayments? Once. And how much was he supposed to pay back everyone? 50 bucks. Well, 50 bucks forever? What? Sounds like Mr. Elg was in a real sticky spot. Yeah, $50 a month. He never paid that huge loan off. $50 forever for the rest of your life. So anyway, he tells me he's got no way to pay up. How much did he have left on his debts? You want it in round figures? About 100,000 bucks. That's the whole amount. We're talking about a guy who had 58 cents in his wallet. What? You telling me he wasn't even going to pay for the coffee? Coffee? He certainly seems to have been a brave man, this Mr. Alec. That guy was smooth, I tell you. He's real smooth. You'll have your money in less than five minutes. That's what he says to me. The guy then calls me the Tender Tiger. He was skating on thin ice with me. I'm about to flatten the Tender Tiger. Was that because he... The guy won the lottery. It was his last chance at a big win. And you can confirm that. This is the ticket in question. That's it. The Millionaire Radio Show starts at 1.30 p.m. and runs for 10 minutes. That fixes the time you two meet with, met with some accuracy. And the whole scene was acted out again 30 minutes later. Also that Mr. Kudo would see it. I can still see the kid's face now. I ain't never gonna forget it. Yes, I won half a million bucks. He got lucky, you know, real lucky. Was there anyone else in the restaurant at the time? I don't remember. If there is no one there, I'll wear that ridiculous tiger shirt for a month. Mr. Armstrong, Maggie, and if I'm right, Viola Cadavereni were all there at that time. So the victim had intended to repay you from his lottery winnings from the beginning. Seems that way to me. But you wouldn't normally expect to win the lottery, would you? Ha. The undying belief that your next roll will end the worst losing streak you ever had, and you'll finally get your Deluke. That's what defines a true gambler. It makes it sound so cool. Don't be tempted, Nick. You haven't got the willpower for it. All I know is the kid took a shot and he got lucky in the end. If that waitress hadn't done what she had done, everything would have been over. The waitress, you mean? The girl with the glasses in the defendant's chair. Who else could I mean? If she hadn't gotten away, things would have been bada bing, bada boom, over and done with. Maybe I should push a little on this. Ask about what Maggie did. What exactly are you implying the defendant did? How about you go ask Four Eyes about that half a million dollar ticket? She wanted it so bad. She poisoned Alex's coffee. I like the theory. Your word hasn't held water lately, Mr. Tiger. 
Let's not forget this witness was actually at the scene, Trite. The law don't exactly agree with, with some of the deals I send down. I couldn't be there when the cops showed up, so I split. Uh, I see. Your Honor. The witness's last two statements are worth a good two cups of coffee. I concur, Mr. Godot. You will amend your testimony accordingly, witness. Ha ha ha, so that's what you use after, Phoenix, right? All right. Thanks to what she did, my business with that kid was over. The tiger's trying to pin the crime on Maggie. If I ask him about what he saw, it's only going to damage our case. What do you mean things would would have been over and done with? Are you all there or what? I'm talking about the cash. I was there to get my hundred thousand bucks back. That's all. I'm a businessman. I was. It was all coming together before that waitress got in the way. Hmm. As far as I can tell from the witness's testimony. Other than recouping his loan, Mr. Tiger had no motive for killing the victim. Well, Mr. Wright, are you happy with the testimony, or would you like it amended? Uh, have it amended. I'm not going to get anywhere with the testimony as it stands, Your Honor. The defense would like the testimony amended. Very well. Witness, you will amend your testimony to reflect your recent statements, please. I was after 100,000 and I had no reason to kill the guy. Alright, um... I mean, I kind of want to jump to the CD, but... I, I, I don't feel like we're there yet. Right? Ah, fuck it. Oh, that is it. Okay. Alright. So you just intended to get back the $100,000 Markiplier owed you, correct? I loaned the guy the cash, so that's my right. Unfortunately for Mr. Elk, I don't believe the $100,000 is what you were really after. What are you getting at, Trite? What else would a money lender be after other than money? Oh, the money lender was after money, but money in a totally different league. The kind of money that a single disc like this would fetch. Er, what is that? Some weird kind of circular mirror. A computer virus, Your Honor. A virus called MC Bomber. A computer virus? What does one do with those? A computer virus is a program that wreaks havoc on the insides of a computer. A computer? What does one of those do? I guess the beard isn't the only part of his honor that is from the Stone Age. Whoa, hey, don't hate on the beard. I'll explain it to you later, Your Honor. Right now, this is the important point. A virus like MC Bomber would be worth several million dollars on the black market. S several million dollars? Mm, give me that mirror. Lending money with no hope of ever seeing repayment would normally be bad for business, but in this case, the very fact that Glen Elg had no way to repay the money is crucial. What? Glen Elg was a programmer, a highly skilled programmer. That skill was the collateral Mr. Elk put on, put up in order to borrow the money. Objection. You're trying to suggest the witness's motive was to get hold of that program? Exactly. The witness may have poor fashion sense, but he is by no means an idiot, Trite. Okay, I have a feeling there's like an hour left on this trial, everybody. I feel like we're gonna have to go through the song and dance of why did he need it? Well, like, like, and like, oh, because Viola, and then, then maybe Viola's gonna take the stand, and it's like, look, and then, and then, and then he came in and did this shit. Oh, man. Oh! The witness may have poor fashion sense, but he is by no means an idiot, Trite. A man like him could get his hands on one million dollars without resorting to murder. Of course he could, provided that he had time, but what if he had needed the money right then? When the pressure's on, the luxury of choice tends to disappear. It seems you have a logical conclusion for this theory, Mr. Wright. Would you care to share it with us? Why did Mr. Tiger need money to tune to one million dollars? Uh, okay, because of him? Or because of... Okay, wait, there was a car accident report, wasn't there? In December of last year, you found yourself in need of a huge amount of money. About six months ago, you were involved in a traffic accident, weren't you? An accident involving a car and a scooter, in which a young woman was injured, and now you have to take the bus, even though the scooter works. She was taken to the hospital where she underwent surgery. How much of this do you use now? These medis medicinal papers, these medical papers document the treatment of the young woman in question. According to these, her operation cost one million dollars, and yet when the payment was due last month, you somehow managed to pay it in full. One million dollars, a preposterous sum, someone should sue those HMOs. 
these HMOs. Ha, no one would pay a bill like that. If the medical association got wind of it, the hospital would end up as dead as a morgue. But Mr. Tiger had no choice but to pay, because his very life depended on it. Grrrr! Order, order, order! You say his life depended on it, Mr. Wright? Indeed it did, simply because the injured woman was none other than Viola Cadavereni. Did you say Cadavereni? Bruto Cadavereni, mob boss in charge of, of all underworld activities in the city, and... That's my dad, doting grandfather to his precious Violetta, and also known as Viola Cadavereni. Bro, Your life was in danger unless you paid compensation to the boss, correct? It makes sense. You were desperate to acquire the, mil the one million dollars Bruto Cadavereni demanded of you. So desperate, in fact, that you decided to sacrifice Glen Elg's life to pay your debt. On the day of the murder, Mr. Tiger's sole intention was to get his hands on this CD. Glen Elg had no way of paying back the $100,000, and Mr. Tiger knew it. But, that a miracle happened. The kind that Mr. Tiger would prefer to say never happened, but he can't, and neither can I. The lottery win? Exactly, at the 11th hour, Mr. Elg won half a million dollars on the lottery, which left Mr. Tiger with no way of getting his hands on the all-important CD. At least, no legitimate way. So he whipped out the trusty vial of potassium cyanide that he always carries around in his pocket, just in case, and then poisoned his coffee, so he resorted to legitimate means. Illegitimate means. That's crazy. He murdered Glen Elg and then made his next move to frame Maggie Bird for the crime. Mr. Tiger poses Glen Elg, while Viola Cad Cadavereni played the role of Miss Bird. And then they reenacted the whole thing in order to establish a witness. The witness being the one we all heard testify yesterday, Mr. Victor Kudo. Like I said, Trite, that's crazy. No one could pull off a stunt like that. For starters, there's no way the chef could have been kept in the dark about it. He wasn't. But Mr. Armstrong was on it from the very beginning. Have you forgotten already, Mr. Godot? Mr. Armstrong owed the witness money too, half a million dollars in fact. He had no choice but to go along with Mr. Tiger's plan. Order, order! Silence or I will clear the- <laughs> You've put on a good show, Spikey. But no one would believe I was him. There's no way. Aha, but you fooled the court. If you just want to stay alive in the loan shark business, you got to be careful. You saying I dressed up like that kid, create a witness, and frame someone, and that I just always carry around a bottle of potassium cyanide just in case? Search me right now. See if I have one. Actually, don't. Don't. Don't search me. It was It was rhetorical. Don't. If, if I did something crazy like that, I'd leave a trail as bright as my shirt. I ain't dumb enough to do something sloppy like that. I agree. You do? Despite your appearance, you are very careful. That's why you took one more precaution. One more trick to make sure Miss Bird had no way out. What? Another one, Mr. Wright? Interesting. Why don't you fill us all in, Miss... Fill, fill us all in, Trite. What was this trick you say Mr. Tiger performed to frame the accused? Oh, please. Please, I'm a lawyer. Please, I'm a fake. When did we last save it? When did we last save it? No. No, 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 no. It's gotta be that. I'm going for it. I'm a lawyer. What on earth is that? What an insult to think anyone could be fooled by such a childish imitation. I'm a lawyer. Consider yourself insulted, Your Honor. Mr. Tiger, you didn't just pose as the victim on the day in question. A month ago, in this very court, you posed as me. What? That's... that's... the truth. But... the witness looks nothing like you, Mr. Wright. Although, now that I think about it, it was you, wasn't it? No doubt it was you, standing in here, this very court, a mere month ago. The Phoenix Wright who put up the most dis disreputable, shabby defense I'd ever seen. Even worse than usual. Objection. Can you prove that, Gramps? Prove the attorney who represented the accused here a month ago was this man? Are you prepared to take the stand and testify that it was him? Gulp. I am. Judge on the stand. They're gonna find out that I'm not wearing pants. Oh shit. Mm. Hey. Forget about it, yeah? 
I wouldn't do something like that. Not me. You. You made a mistake, right? It was someone else, huh? Have you no pride, sir? What's your end game, Godot? This is a matter of pride. In case you didn't know, Trite, here in court, we deal with people's lives. Nerg. Mr. Grudo's right. Your Honor, speaking for myself, I am absolutely convinced. The attorney in question was the witness standing before me now. However, I preside over this court as a judge, with the vested power to hand down a verdict. Someone in my position cannot be swayed by a memory without evidence to support it. What? Woo! You woo woo woo! If the defense had no further evidence, the court will now excuse the witness. Okay, I think that this might be the dumbest thing that's ever happened in the series. It's entertaining, it's good. I think this is the dumbest thing that's ever happened in the series in terms of just fucking kangaroo court horse shit. The circumstances surrounding Mr. Tiger are dubious for sure, but not conclusive. But we've come so far. You say he impersonated Glenel, you say he impersonated you. But none of that adds up to a murder charge. You don't have a shred of evidence that the witness poisoned the victim's coffee. Ah. Hey pal, here's some fingerprints. Ah. Sucks to be you, right? Don't mess with the tiger, or you're gonna get mauled. You's got that? All we managed to do here was chase him around a bit, but I was so close to getting him to admit his own guilt. Ah. My first court win. Feels good. Looks like I won't be needing a refill. I just had one more piece of evidence. One more piece of evidence, and maybe I could get Maggie off the hook. I mean, like, at this point, it's pretty fair to say that she's not guilty, right? Just just because you can't find him guilty doesn't mean that she's guilty. This witness cross-examination is over. You are free to go, Mr. Tiger. Go get your jet. Your Honor, sir. Wait. The detective, what's in there? It's a Snickers! <laughs> this has to go sh Sorry, it took so long, pal. I, I, I staked everything on this, my badge, the water. So here it is, my heart's counting on this too. What is it, Detective? Is it obvious, pal? It's the final decisive piece of evidence. Super, super, super final decisive. What? Hmm, are you the real gumshoe? January 8, 2048 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number One. Sorry it took so long, pal, but I finally got the results from the lab. The results? About the prints, pal, for this medicine bottle. Oh, so, do you know who the prints belong to now? No. Do you think you're... <laughs> do you think I'm some kind of detective? Of course I know. <laughs> I just, I just legitimately snorted. So tell us, they're the tigers, right? I knew it. <laughs> you bet. Clear as crystal all over the bottle. They're Furio Tiger's paw prints, all right. That's great, we got him now, Nick. What's wrong with you? Your heart, you've hardly said a word since Detective Gumshoe got here. He's laid everything on the line for this, Nick. I know. Look, I'm sorry. This is kind of hard to say, but it really doesn't make any difference whose prints are on that bottle now. Huh? What? What we need to produce at this stage in the trial is irrefutable evidence that the tiger put poison in Glen Elk's coffee. He's already admitted that the, that he met the victim. The fact that his prints are on this bottle, that really doesn't make any difference now. That's true. I knew it. Great. No matter how hard I try, I'm never of any use. Poor gumshoe. Hey, don't be so hard on yourself. This is our last chance to help Maggie. And I've been working on some useless piece of evidence the whole time. It's alright. I'm a real loser. It's not breaking news to me, pal. Um, Detective Gumshoe, Maggie, you've been working on something for me? Aww. Sorry I let you down, Maggie. I know you didn't do it. And I'm a detective. We're supposed to be able to prove stuff like that. I'm really sorry. I'll get out of your hair now. Detective Gumshoe, wait. He's gone. 
Isn't there anything we can do now, Nick? I wish there was. Gum she worked so hard to get that evidence. If only there was some way I could use it. Small bottle put into pocket, covered in Furio Tiger's fingerprints. Hmm. How are we gonna use that? Because it could have just been on the table and he just absently picked it up, right? Hmm. So unless we back him into a corner and, and make him say, I've never seen that before, and then we say, well, your fingerprints are on it, and they'd be like, whoa, what the fuck? I, I think that's the only way. January 8, 304. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. I granted you a recess so you could prepare this decisive evidence you've discovered. Um, yes. Wait, you're over limit. Or is that a new session? So you're allowed another 17? Hmm. Don't keep us all in suspense, try it. show us. Naturally, we can assume it's evidence that will actually stand up in court, can't we? I'm not gonna drink this, by the way, I'm just gonna smell it. Think, Phoenix. Don't let Gumshoe's hard work go to waste. How much more of my time are you gonna waste? I ain't been to no court before, but you lawyers sure know how to blow things out of proportion. Yeah, it's only a murder trial or anything. No doubt, given the nature of the evidence, it'll speak for itself. Nevertheless, you will talk, talk us through it, Mr. Wright. Well, I know I can't prove anything new with this evidence, I'm really backed into a corner here, but maybe if he thinks he's got me beat. Phoenix, think crazy. He'll let us let his guard down a bit. Don't keep us waiting any longer, Mr. Wright. Present this final decisive piece of evidence to the court. I mean... Okay, what haven't we presented? We haven't presented the weenies. Um, we haven't presented... Mm, I think we just go for it and see what happens. When did we last save it? Shit. This is the defense's final piece of evidence. Isn't that the victim's... Your Honor. Naturally, the court is already aware of the contents of this bottle. However, interesting new information has come to light. We have clearly identified some fingerprints on it. Fingerprints belonging to you, Mr. Tiger. What? Doesn't prove anything, right? Oh, you're letting it go, huh? But well, Mr. Wright, what conclusion are you hoping to draw from this new information? Everyone in here knows what this bottle contains, except one man. One person in this courtroom should theoretically be in the dark. My prints are on that pansy looking bottle? Is that what you're saying? Well, what the hell's in it anyway? A phony trial, a phony lawyer, and phony clue. <laughs> a phony gumshoe. A phony courtroom. A phony murder. Phony deadly deadly. Everything about this case has been phony. Seems like the perfect excuse for some phony evidence. Yeah, let's just, let's just, yeah, sure. Let's just break all protocol. Fuck it. All right. This is where Phoenix goes to the dark side. Fuck it. They can play all their games. Fuck it. Mr. Tiger, this is a decisive piece of evidence that will prove your guilt. Why? Because it contains potassium cyanide. This bottle contains potassium cyanide. P potassium cyanide? The poison used to murder Mr. Elg, your honor. The victim's killer used this very bottle. No, I used some other bottle. <gasps> ah, caught you in a lie. Oh, fell for it. Take him away. Guilty. And let's follow Mr. Tiger. We found your fingerprints. Well, how do you explain that? Ha <laughs> ha You'd make a good clown, you know that? What? Yous ain't never gonna get this to stick. Yous just making me laugh now. You think a cheap bluff like that's gonna fool the tiger? A bluff? I can see straight through you, Phoenix Wright. That ain't the bottle with the cyanide in it. No, no. This is the bottle we found traces of the poison in. Don't mess with the tiger, or yous gonna get ripped to shreds. The cyanide bottle was brown, and it <laughs> made a gl- That cheap piece of trash don't look nothing like it. <laughs> you mean this bottle? 
Yeah, that bottle. Let me see it. Okay, give it back. Oh, give what back? Oh, I'm bleeding. Got him at last. He writes like a man after my own heart. What? Why has everyone gone quiet? I said that bottle. Is this the bottle you're referring to? Yeah, that's it. That's the bottle that the sign I was in. But you ain't gonna find my prints on that bottle. Don't let that cozy looking suit fool you people. That lawyer's just playing games. Tell him, Mr. Prosecutor. Tell that guy where to go. Oh shit, wrong, wrong voice. You still haven't figured it out? Don't you realize what you just said? What I said? What did I just say? You were summoned to this court for the first time earlier today. If you really had nothing to do with the murder, you shouldn't have known all the little details. For instance, you shouldn't have known what kind of bottle the potassium cyanide was in. Er, uh, grr. But just now, you slipped up in front of every single person in this courtroom. You described the exact bottle used by the killer to hold the poison. Er, uh, um, you just don't know who who you was messing with. This is this this is like the time when I was the imposter in Among Us. And someone accused me of venting, and I said, This is my second time being the imposter, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I said it ever so slightly more subtle than that, it wasn't that damning. <laughs> but, like, it, like, it was pretty, it was that bad. <laughs> I didn't get voted, they didn't call me on it. <laughs> oh man, you used to know who he's messing with. I'm the tiger, I control millions of dollars on the black market. You think I'm gonna let some jumped up suit get the better of me? Sure, the last piece of evidence is phony. But that's just what you deserve, the phony trial with a phony lawyer. It was all played up by you, the biggest phony of all. Grrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
January 8th, 4 10 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number One. Mr. Wright, aye, aye, aye. I'm lost for words. Thank you, sir. Congratulations, Maggie. I was so mad when Mr. Wright landed me in all that trouble a month ago, but now I feel like I can forgive him. Hey, that wasn't me, Maggie. That was the tiger. Look, Nick, in the doorway. Detective Gumshoe. Oh, guess I'll be heading off then. See you around, pal. Alright, time to present the weenies. The weenies have to be for something. Wait. Detective Gumshoe. Uh, oh yeah. Congratulations, Maggie. Thanks. I knew you were innocent all along. Why didn't you say that in your testimony then? Huh? Oh. Well, I was... Well, guess I'll be heading off then. See you around. <laughs> Wait up, detective. He just ran off. Maggie, why are you being so hard on him? He busted his butt for you. It's thanks to him that we got the me medication bottle. That wasn't e even of any use. But it's only because Mr. Wright used it so cleverly. Detective Gumshoe was just running around in circles. Poor guy. Looks like she still isn't ready to forgive him. Can't you put in a good word for him, Nick? Yeah, Maya is right. I should help Gumshoe out. It's clear he needs it. Uh, Maggie, you know, Detective Gumshoe's been really worried about you through all of this. I wanted to believe that, sir. Let's save it, just in case it isn't the weenies. Because you don't get another chance for this, right? But on that, on that first day of the trial, he practically gave the judge a free pass to lock me up. He didn't have any choice, Maggie. He's a detective. He has to report the facts. He doubted me, that's why. He thought I might have done it. I've got to prove to her that Gumshoe really cares about her. I know. I'll give her a little present to celebrate her freedom. Here's the lunch special. Oh, the the winning ticket! Here's the winning ticket. Okay, it's got it's got to be the weenies, right? It's got to be. Here you are, a present to celebrate your freedom. That's a present from Detective Gumshoe, made with a ton of love. He said you lost weight, and he was worried about you. Detective Gumshoe? I... I actually really like weenies. You know? Did you guys hear that? I'm pretty hungry myself, you know. Yeah, the trial dragged on a bit today, didn't it? Um... Is it okay if I eat this now? So, how is it, Maggie? It's it's really good. Damn, Gumshoe makes a good good weenie. He steams a good weem. Weem? Ween. The false allegations surrounding Maggie have all been cleared up. Sorry I didn't read the first one. And who knows? Maybe a whole new chapter of her life is about to start. Episode 3, Recipe for Turnabout, the end. Aww. <gasps> Look at that brown ass hair, huh? Look at that brown ass hair. Uh, thank you to Bellac51 for the six month resub. Thank you for It's Me, George Lucas, for the 8 by 3 sub. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Mute Aki Akihiko. Mute Akihiko, I think. Not sure. Thank you very much. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Thank you for the resub. And thank you, Care Manag, for the 34 month resub. Or Care Minaj. One of those two. Thank you very much. Damn. What's going on here? Some some guy abducted a girl and held held her at knife point while Jill Valentine pointed a gun at him and was like, "No, you you can't." And then this looks like undercourt. What's going on here? A brand new episode has been added. All right, here we go. Here we go. Girl, let her go. Shh. 
shut up, come closer, and I kill her. What's with the film effect? Sorry, but you're not going to get the chance. Merry Christmas. Wait, who fell? I'm reading through the file of an old court case. It was the first case of my longtime mentor, Mia Fey. Is he in a hospital? Fugitive data. Terry Falls? <laughs> After escaping Falls met with and then murdered Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne, recaptured on Eagle Mountain about eight hours after his escape. Alright, totally Jill Valentine. His, her very first client was a death row inmate who had recently broken out of prison. That was a whole year before Mia and I ever met. Six years earlier, Mia Fey, first trial. February 16, 9.24 9, a.m., District Court Defendant Lobby, number four. He looks like he's next to an IV drip. What's going on with Phoenix? Ugh, I'm so nervous. I feel like I'm going to die. I never should have accepted this case. Eek. One, one, zero, three. Dello. Uh, good, good morning. Don't be so jumpy, Mia. I didn't do nothing. I swear, I didn't kill nobody. Terry Falls. <laughs> My first client. Sentenced to death five years ago, and now a prison escapee. Okay, so if I remember correctly, this didn't go well for Mia, her first case. Just relax, Mia. Make small talk and try to relax him. Er, uh, um, so why did you escape anyway? Uh, 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 eek, uh, eek, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What the fuck? Ugh. I didn't do nothing. I didn't kill nobody. I never, I never lie. I didn't escape from nowhere. Uh, but Miss, Mr. Falls, the police just recaptured you two days ago. Ugh. Sorry, I told a little lie. Oh boy. But anyway, I didn't do it. I never killed nobody. Um, sorry for asking, but you're on death row, right? Uh, uh, Ugga, eek, I'm really, really sorry. They sentenced me to die five years ago, but I was tricked, I tell you. That woman, she lied in her testimony. That's why I got the death penalty. I swear it, I didn't kill her. I could never do that. Two days ago, he escaped from the police wagon when it crashed. Then about eight hours later, a policewoman was murdered before the police could recapture him. Huh. The police believe that Terry Falls did it. Um, after you escaped, did you meet a policewoman? Yeah, I did. She's the reason I escaped. So that much is true. He did meet with the victim. But I didn't kill her. No, he meant that she's the reason I escaped because she orchestrated it. Not that's that's why he escaped. But he's not going to say it because we didn't ask. She was alive when I left. She was alive. It's true. I can trust him, right? I mean, I should. Ha. <gasps> no. No. Does he already drink coffee? You're going. You're not going to figure out the truth by staring at this at the guy. You're. Why are you here? I came to see how our little kitten was doing all alone in the big scary lion's den. I thought maybe you'd like someone to play with. Er, where's Mr. Grossberg? Ha! Huh, the old man is probably still in bed. I bet he's clutching an empty bottle and mumbling in his sleep. Aren't I good enough? Armando, aren't I good enough? After all, it's me, Diego Armando. You thought you thought it was Godot, but no, it's me, Diego. Go do go do I guess. Go Go die <gasps> Armando okay. I didn't say so Diego Armando, the finest attorney at Grossberg Law Offices, is here for me. No, 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 you got it all wrong. Today, you're the finest. After all, it took an amazing amount of guts to take this case. Imagine. 
An escaped death row convict for a first client. Yeah, er, thanks. I'm sh I sure wish I could get it get out of it though. Ha, relax. I just heard some good news. The prosecutor for today is fresh out of his diapers as well. Really? However, unlike a certain somebody who I won't mention, <gasps> is it Shardworth? He's earned the reputation as a genius since beginning since beginning his law career. Genius? Well, it's about time to head in, kitten. Sharpen those claws of yours. It's go time. A solitary confinement cell for the condemned must be the world's loneliest place. And that's why my client ran away. And that's what my client ran away from. Every other lawyer gave up on him, but not me. When I saw those overflowing eyes and heard that simple childlike voice, I just had the feeling that he was telling the truth. Damn. It's got nothing to do with you channeling spirits or some shit to confirm it. No, you're just going off on your intuition. All right. February 16, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number four. <gasps> He's here. Court is now in session, eh? For the trial of Terry Falls. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecutor. Oh, damn. Damn. Slightly younger Chadworth. Oh, man. His hair hasn't gone gray yet. Looking pretty good. Damn. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. Oh, I understand lawyers for both sides are newcomers, eh? Yeah, Your Honor. I'm Mia Fey. Miles Chadworth, Your Honor. Oh, so you're the new hosers everyone's talking about, eh? They say you joined the prosecutor's office at quite an early age. Only had your first Timbit last week at, tw at 20, Your Honor. I guess our little kitten hasn't earned herself much of a reputation yet, huh? God damn, he's fucking hot. Come on, Mia. You can't lose. Not to someone younger than you. Humph. Young people running a trial. I'm not too sure how I feel about that. Now then, the defendant in this case is currently a felon on death row. Two days ago, he escaped from a police wagon, is that correct? Precisely. But the defendant is not on trial for escaping prison. On the day that the defendant escaped, a policewoman was murdered. So we're here to determine if Miss Mr. Falls was responsible for her death. You got it, kitten. Well then, Mr. Shadowworth, let's hear your opening statement then. Yes, Your Honor. It was five years ago. The defendant, Terry Falls, was sentenced to death in this very court. I can't wait for Canadian voice and Yusuke voice and, and smooth cowboy coffee drinker voice to merge into one fuck, fucked up amalgamation throughout this whole fucking trial. His, his crimes were kidnapping, extortion, and murder. The girl he threw off the bridge was only 14 years old. Ooh, he was angry. A truly horrible crime. I remember it well. There was no decisive evidence, so the trial was long and protracted. Like whenever the Blue Jays play. Co correct, in the end, what finally decided the case was... A Ooh, a certain witness's testimony. Isn't that the Von Karma pose? Oh, back when he was impressionable from Von Karma. Nice symbolism, I like it. A witness's testimony. The testimony of Detective Valerie Hawthorne, the person who confronted this criminal. She arrested Mr. Falls at the scene and later testified against him. She said she witnessed Mr. Falls throw his young victim into the river. Oh shit, I thought she shot him and he fell. What you don't understand is that he was actually the ab ab abductee there. She had the knife to- <laughs> I'll kill him! I'll kill him! For those who are not aware, Eagle River is well known for its powerful current. Most bodies that fall in fall in are never recovered. So Miss Hawthorne's testimony was the only was the one that put him away. That policewoman you just mentioned, that wouldn't be Exactly, the victim, the same woman that was killed two days ago. Police Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne. Aha, uh -huh, I see. I'm fucking cogger as I am. The man who was sentenced to death based on her testimony escaped two days ago, he did. With only one thing on his mind, to take revenge against the woman who convicted him and who's gonna get through the playoffs. Huh. Ah, the truth is becoming clear to me now. Huh? Yes, yes. It's quite obvious that the defendant is guilty. Well, wait a minute, that's not right. At least hear the case before you decide on the outcome, Your Honor. No, I don't have to, I do. This is, this is a slam dunk. 
Watch yourself, Miss Faye. I'm not sure I care for your word choice or your tone of voice. Young people these days simply don't know how to respect the our elders. Oh, it's it's one comrade fucking like scowl too. God damn. Why you? You're even younger than me, you hypocrite. Now then, Mr. Chadworth, please call your first witness. I called the detective who was in charge of the initial investigation of this case. Young Gumshoe. Ah, oh, Young Gumshoe. He's not pickled yet. Witness, state your name and occupation. Uh, Gumshoe. Oh, now there's another voice. Now we just need fucking young lot of heart to show. Yep, I was walking around. That was just back when I was a nature photographer. I was walking through the park when I snapped some photos of them on the on the fucking uh, bridge. Snap a snap. Here I am. Lot of heart. Witness. G Gumshoe, Dick Gumshoe, I'm the homicide detective in charge of the case, sir. I finally got promoted to the detective division a half a year ago. I don't believe anyone asked you about that. Hey, ma'am, you got any idea how much work it takes? W what is it? You. You're really gorgeous. Excuse me? No, not you. The guy next to you. No, seriously. My heart, it's aching for you. W Detective, pull yourself together and try to be professional. Otherwise, I'll write you up on contempt so quick that something other than your heart will ache. Erk, okay, I got it. Uh, now, Detective, tell us about the incident. That's just I mean, the old voice judge. I don't know if I can keep up Canadian judge. Tell us about the incident, eh? Uh, yes, sir, right away. The victim was Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne, a veteran of the police force. She was stabbed in the back with a knife and died from excessive blood loss. Not much is already stated in the autopsy report. The court would like to hear more details about the incident itself. Uh, yes, sir, I gotcha. Okay, let's take a look at this aerial map of the area here. Five yards. This is a sketch of Dusky Bridge, an old suspension bridge. I'm fucking really old. And the river that runs under there is Eagle River. The victim and the defendant met there, on top of the bridge. After stabbing her in the back, the killer carried the victim back to his car. He was recapped. Oh, this is- th they met at the same bridge that this went down. Okay, huh. They still haven't fixed the bridge? He was recaptured at a police checkpoint as he was trying to make his getaway, sir. Hmm. Oh, I see. Dusky bridge map added to the court record. Bridge located 40 feet above the river. Was the victim's blood found on the bridge? The victim, Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne, was wearing a thick coat, sir. Unfortunately, no traces of blood were found on the bridge. Hmm. Mr. Chadworth, I warn you that I absolutely despise conjecture. If there was no blood on the bridge, then you have no proof that they even met there. Your Honor. <laughs> If you would listen to the testimony we have prepared, I'm sure you'll be convinced. The two of them most certainly did meet on the bridge that day. Did his hands get bigger after this? Why, Mr. Chadworth? I'm not sure I like you wagging your finger at me as though I were some hoser. <laughs> Keep it up and I'm gonna make you roll up the rim. Out of here I am. Detective, proceed with your testimony. Uh, yes, sir. Here you go, Mia. Hang on. Okay, now. Listen carefully, kitten. One little mistake, and this guy will drink you for morning for morning, for morning tea. Sorry, trust me, and get ready. Summary of the incident. On the day of the incident, an unknown person phoned the sergeant and asked to meet. Sergeant Hawthorne went to Dusky Bridge at the designated time and met with Mr. Falls. And that's where she was brutally murdered, sir. The criminal stuffed her body into his car trunk and tried to make a getaway. Mr. Falls was arrested at a police checkpoint we set up at the base of the mountain. Huh. Well, you certainly have established the importance of the bridge, eh? That's about it. Naturally. Now, would the defense please hurry up and proceed with the cross-examination? Yes, Your Honor. Cross-examination. Coming right up. Hey, hey, settle down there, kitten. If you keep trembling like that, you're gonna make me spill my coffee. I'm not trembling. It's just cold in here. 
The courtroom can be a cold battlefield, all right, especially for a beginner. I don't need you to worry about me. I mean... I mean the defendant, the witness, everyone's a beginner in here. Ha, huh. you got me there. But maybe you should keep your claws out and show them what you've got, kitten. Damn. It's okay, Mia, stay calm. Just remember those court procedure videos you stayed up all night <laughs> last night watching. <laughs> Summary of the Institute. This unknown person, you have no idea who it might be, right? Sorry, but I'm afraid I do. What? The one who called Sergeant Hawthorne was the defendant, Terry Falls. What, what? The defendant? The defendant called her? Sergeant Hawthorne was a very thorough person, sir. She left a note about her phone call with Mr. Falls. A note? Yeah, a top secret memo that she left in her desk. Victim's note added to the court record. Confidential police materials written by the victim. Hmm. According to this note, it seems the one who called her to the bridge was indeed the defendant, Terry Falls. Ugh, whose bright idea was to keep that note for me? for identification. Talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time the whole truth must come out. Dahlia? Was there a Dahlia before? I kind of feel like there was a Dahlia before. Wasn't there a Dahlia before? Or... I might think of somebody else. Maybe that, maybe that uh, 14 year old girl finally crawled out of the river just as they did this meeting and then came up and stabbed her in the back. Uh, whose bright idea was it to keep that note for me? Ha, huh, looks like the judge is even more sure of his verdict now. Listen up, never ask a question if you don't already know the answer. It's the detective's fault, he's the one that said unknown person. Hey now, don't make that face at me. I just said it that way because the prosecutor told me to. Was that a trap? With that cute face, I didn't expect him to be so sneaky. It's fucking just the cutest face. Humph. Sergeant Hawthorne went to do- Okay, um, what- I want to check one more thing. Does it actually say, written by the victim? This- this looks typewritten to me, but I guess that could just be, like, how it shows. Okay. A bridge up in the mountains, but why meet there? Because it is a very important place to the defendant, that's why. What do you mean by that? If you remember, five years ago, the defendant kidnapped a young girl. He was chased onto a bridge, and it was there that he killed his hostage. And the place where all of this occurred is, of course, Dusky Bridge. Dusky Bridge! The very place where Sergeant Hawthorne arrested and handcuffed Mr. Falls. Ha, returning to the scene of the crime. How nostalgic. Who's hotter, chat? Ormando or Chadworth? Aw, oh, man, that's gonna be a tough one for chat. Oh man, I feel like I feel like people are are really thirsty for Armando. Oh, Armando's taking it. Armando's taking it. Wow. Holy shit. Wow. And that's where she was brutally murdered, sir. I feel like we pull hotness of guys way more than girls. <laughs> the body of the victim discovered right away. Yeah, we were really on the ball. We found the criminal within one hour of the murder. It was great, we even got to say, don't move, we've got you surrounded. Wait a second, isn't there something weird about that? The location was a suspension bridge up in the mountains. So how did they how did they find out about the crime so quickly? Sergeant Hawthorne must have mentioned the phone call to someone else, right? <sighs> if that's what ha had happened, then she wouldn't have been killed. She never mentioned the phone call from Mr. Falls, but she left a note on her desk about it. If only I had noticed it earlier, maybe she'd still be alive. I wonder why she didn't mention the phone call to anyone. Alright, we'll pull it. We'll pull it. We'll pull it. Give me a second. We'll pull it. We have to have the official answer of who's hotter. It won't take very long. Manage pull. Is it Doug or Dog? That was the last one. Who is hotter? Armando Chadworth. Alright, there you go. 
You only have three minutes to vote, so make your choice choice uh, quickly. Armando by a landslide. Wow. Easy pull, easy life for Armando. GG. The criminal stuffed her body into his car trunk and tried to make it get away. <laughs> Mr. Falls had a car then? Well, that bridge is way up in the mountains, man. The defendant and the victim both went up there by car. I mean, how else, right? If, if we could do an even poll, I mean, we can't because we're playing this game. Uh, so, so so it's going to be like bias. Like Kiru versus Armando. I wonder who would win that. The defendant and the victim both went up there by car. I mean, how else, right? What? You mean the defendant drove his own car? No, no, of course not. It was stolen. He stole it from a young couple that had been waiting at a red light. Hmm. Car thieves. I'm not sure how I feel about car thieves. Like, maybe they're alright. Is this guy sure? A good guy, though, right? Is this guy sure about how he feels about anything? Nah, he's Canadian. We're very indecisive. This is a photo of the stolen car's trunk. The only thing we're decisive about is, is how much deli meat you can order when you're at the deli aisle. Naturally, that's that's the body of Valerie Hawthorne in there. Whoa, that... That doesn't look too comfortable. I wouldn't get in there. Crime photo added to the court record. Photo of the trunk of a false car. The victim, she was stabbed in the back, correct? Yeah. Huh. For some reason, men always seem to get stabbed in the back. We're talking about a woman here. You can't tell from this photo, but the knife was stuck in her back, nice and firm. Alright, was the knife already in the trunk? Was it pointed upwards? Did he just throw her in the trunk quickly so no one would, would see her when they were driving? And when they opened it, I was like, Oh shit, there was a knife in there. We didn't know. Oh man. The condition of the body when it was discovered is very important information. Detective, was there anything strange or noteworthy in the trunk of the car? <laughs> it's coming like a little Irish. I'm sorry. Here's a photo of the trunk. I don't see anything strange to you. <laughs> what did the defendant have to say about this photo? What he always says, ma'am. I didn't do it. I didn't do nothing. That's all he says. Nothing. I wouldn't say he did nothing. At the very least, we know he stole the car. He didn't nut anywhere. It's just what he always says, Your Honor. And then he always says... Uh... Sorry, I told a little lie. Or something like that. Well, in any case, it seems he was caught and arrested. Slam dunk. Precisely. Mr. Falls was arrested at a police checkpoint. We set up at the base of the mountain. Alright, here we go. Armando won by 73%. There we go. Armando officially hotter than Chadworth. Damn. That's certainly some impressive police work. Well, no, actually, it was way too close for comfort. We set up that checkpoint just after 5 p.m. We figured that Mr. Falls might try to just try to run. What do you mean it was too close for comfort? The two of them arranged to meet at 4.30 p.m., and it takes approximately 30 minutes to go from the bridge to the checkpoint. Hmm, that was kind of close. Any later, Mr. Falls could have slipped right by. Listen up, kitten. There's a big trap waiting for you in that testimony. Uh, a, tra a trap? Walk into it carelessly, and it'll leave more than just a flesh wound. Fun, huh? No, it's not. Well, if you want to have any chance at all, you'd better get some more information. And if you're going to get caught in the trap, it's best to get caught early. You can always look for contradictions afterwards. The ever famous contradictions. I'm sure I can find some of those. Okay, so is the trap the one that we already that we already triggered about about the letter? Um. So I guess we already we already shit we already did that. So. Where is the contradiction? On the day this unknown person phoned the sergeant and asked to meet, uh, Sergeant Hawthorne went to Dusky Bridge and didn't have time to meet with Mr. Falls, uh, and that's where she was brutally murdered, sir. The criminal stuffed her body into his car trunk and tried to make a getaway. Here's a photo of the trunk, but I don't see anything strange. Do you? I mean... Stabbed in the back. There's no blood, but... Eh. Mr. Falls was arrested at a police checkpoint instead of released the mountain. Okay, let's review the evidence, because... Um, Huh, I'm surprised that this is, like, actually a trial. Uh, police officer and the victim, the key witness in the crime against false five years ago, hotshot lawyer, my senior and rival of the office, a bit smug. 
dubbed a genius as soon as he started as a prosecutor. Today is his court debut. Homicide detective in charge of the initial investigation still new his position. Uh, Armando's only one year older than uh, Dick Gumshoe. Family Cawthorn. Okay, Terry Falls, my client since he escaped from custody two days ago. Okay, so what's the other evidence? Proof of my profession is brand new and sparkles in the light. Stabbed with a knife in the back, died from blood loss between 4 and 5 p.m. Okay. Bridge located 40 feet above Eagle River. Confidential police materials written by the victim. Photo of the trunk of a false car. And here it is. Okay, I, I kind of feel like, where's the blood? Or no. fuck is that? On the day of the incident, an unknown person phoned to Sergeant S to meet. Sergeant Hawthorne went to Dusky Bridge and designated the time met with Fusta Falls, and that's where she was brutally murdered, sir. The criminal stuffed her body into his char trunk and tried to make his getaway. Here's a photo of the trunk. I don't see anything strange. Do you? Anyway. Mr. Falls was arrested at the, at the police checkpoint we set up at the base of, of the mountain. Okay, I'm gonna try... Blood? Did I press? I pressed this, right? What did the defendant have to say about this photo? What well, he always says, man. Okay, I didn't do that. Okay. Okay, do I... Do I press the photo on the photo? This evidence established that your defendant is lying, right? Don't don't ask me to confirm your facts. Sorry, this is just my first time handling a case. Well, let's make it a memorable occasion with a penalty. Your first your first penalty. Oh man, I'm I'm back to the other judge now. And here I thought he would go easy because I'm new. Okay, is it is it the the blood loss? Addiction. Your Honor, what do you think of the witness's statement? I don't think anything of it. How about you? I guess I don't think anything of it either. Then we don't have a problem, but we do have a penalty! Oh shit. Fucking power play. Okay, um, I don't know. What the fuck is that? It looks like like the, the trunk was like forced open or some shit? Like, what the fuck's that? Okay, so I can't press this photograph. Okay, there must be something about the time then. Falls, 4.30 p.m., that bridge, wear white scarf for identification, talk to Dahlia. Oh, she's not wearing a white scarf? I mean, like, she could have lost it though. That seems kind of dumb. Let's try it. Witness. Oh, that is it. Okay. Um, all right. Maybe this is one of those who gives a shit. Oh, what is it? Do you have something to say, Miss Faye? I'm sorry. I totally forgot what I was going to say. This is, this is the first time I've ever had to actually address someone like that. Girl, you should have practiced before coming to court. Honestly, Miss Faye, I'm not sure I like this. Humph. Say there, little kitten. Want a piece of my coffee candy? Candy? Well, you're still too young to be drinking real coffee. Grr. Come on, Mia. Shake it off. You're a lawyer. Shake it off. Shake it. Detective! Yes, ma'am. This photo. You said that there was nothing peculiar about it. Is that correct? Yeah, that's what I said. Well then, I suggest you take another look at the note written by the victim. The, the note? It very clearly says, wear white scarf for identification. The caller must have forgotten what the victim looked like, thus this special request. Uh, I, um, I have one very simple question for you, detective. Where is the white scarf? I can't seem to find it in this photo. Um, well, to be honest, we didn't find it in the trunk, ma'am. Fucking stuck up the tailpipe and you, and you stopped there, you should have looked for it. Arrgh. The caller told her to wear it to identify herself, so I'd expect she did just that. Well, Mr. Chadworth, what do you have to say about this? Sorry, I must have just blown off or something. I see the defense is a little lacking. The scarf you were searching so desperately for... Is it this one, perchance? Ah. 
Where did you find that, sir? In my ass, on Dusky Bridge. I was there first and decided to conduct my own investigation. Why? Why didn't you tell me? I made a decision to keep all pieces of evidence in my personal satchel. It's the safest place I know. Yes, your personal satchel. All right, sure. Humph, that hotshot sure has a flair for the dramatic. It's not, it's not exactly white as the caller requested. But as you can see, it's close enough for what it was intended for. Here's your updated scarf report. Hmm, it looks like it spent some time in the mud. Not surprising, it was drizzling on the mountain that day. Prosecutor Chadworth. He was intentionally hiding that scarf the whole time. The court will accept the scarf into evidence, we will. Scarf added to the court record, worn by the victim at the time of the institute found on Dusky Bridge. Now, if the attorney for the defense has finished embarrassing herself, I mean, you still have to whip it out, Chadworth. I'd like to move on with the testimony. That is all right with you, isn't it, Miss Faye? <laughs> Boy, I would like to wrap this scarf around his smarmy little neck. Very good. Now, if we're done with this mud-covered scarf business, the prosecution moves to establish conclusively and with hard evidence that Miss Hawthorne and Miss Falls did indeed meet on that bridge that day. Further, we will show exactly what occurred there. That... That, that sounds that sounds quite promising. I can't wait to hear all about it. Arg, everything is moving at his whim. Don't forget it, kitten. There's a reason why everyone considers this kid a genius. It is really hard to keep switching all the voices. Oh my god. A, a genius, huh? Fucking hell. Events on Dusky Bridge. Alright, Pickle Nagito voice. Here we go. Actually, there's an eyewitness who was there when the incident took place. This photo was accidentally taken by the... I swear to God! I swear to God! This this photo was actually taken by the witness. It shows the Vic was wearing a scarf, sir. It was drizzling that day. Unfortunately, it's a little hard to see what's going on. Anyway, the criminal shoved the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the back. That must have been when the scarf fell off. I swear to God! Look at this photo! You really get the sense that this bridge is very high up. It's a fake bridge. He still has the, the stripes on and everything and... Huh. It really makes you feel like you're high up. It's about a 40 foot drop from that from the bridge to the Eagle River down below. Mr. Chadworth, who took this photo anyway? Let's just say that it was a well-intentioned third party. Aha, a potential witness. So why isn't this person in the courtroom? Well, they said they absolutely did not want to testify. The person in question is very delicate, Your Honor. Besides, as long as we have this photo, we can s we see no reason to compel them to testify. I'm not sure how I feel about that. It's true, yeah. <laughs> you really is Canadian. Remember what I said, like lo like during the Eternal streams. Whenever, whenever, like I I I feel like I want to criticize something, I'm gonna say I'm not sure how I feel about that. <laughs> Seems to have been taken by the witness. So as you can see, Terry Falls had both the motive and the opportunity. I think it's quite clear at this point what happened on that bridge. Hmm. Aha! The truth is becoming clear to me now. Huh? Yes, it's quite obvious. He's clearly guilty. Not again. That's not fair. I haven't even done my cross-examination yet. Hmm. The eyes, man. He's a little fucking lizard person. What do you mean? Hmm. Events on Dusky Bridge. Actually, there's an eyewitness who's there with an incident place. Doo -doo. Who is this eyewitness? She's a college student. Oh my god, she's a college student. A female college student. That's right, meaning she's female and a college student, ma'am. She doesn't do well in front of other people, so I came to testify for her. Maybe so, but as the attorney for the defense, I have the right to cross-examine her. For the time being, we're not relying on the witness's statements. That is all. What is that supposed to mean? The prosecution has other, more decisive evidence. Our case doesn't rest on the vague testimony of a female college student. A female college student, eh? It means she's female and a college student, sir. If you absolutely must hear her testimony, you'll have to give us a good reason why. This is pretty fucking sus, girl. Please tell us about the more decisive evidence in question. This photo was accidentally taken by the witness. It shows the Vic wearing the scarf, sir. Where's the 
Where's her hat? It certainly looks like the same coat. Four buttons. Four button. It looks like the same coat. It's good. like it's not perfect at all. Where'd the hat go? Man's not hot. The victim is wearing a scarf in that photo, all right. So about the witness who took this photo, what was this person doing all the way in the mountains? She was taking photos of wild flowers, apparently. There are many unusual types of flora on that mountain, Miss Faye. People in the area say it's because of the spirits that live there. Why do you keep asking about the witness? Just just enjoy the photograph. What the fuck are you keep pressing us to, to bring the witness on the stand for? Fuck it. It's just the spirits, now that you mention it. This photo. This cloudy fog-like thing. Is, is it a ghost? I don't believe it. No, Your Honor. No, I don't think that, that I don't think it's a ghost. It was drizzling that day. Unfortunately, it's a little hard to see what's going on. Drizzling, huh? That's right. There was a light rain coming down. The whole place was dreary, but not as dreary as the mood that's in this courtroom right now. Something. Looks like a cold front just moved in. Looks like I'm in a pickle again. In any case. The point is that the area was quite damp. There was even some fog. I even slipped and fell while I was on the bridge. It was really something. Maybe she just fell. He didn't knock her down. Anyway, the criminal shoved the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the back. Is that part of the witness's testimony as well? Of course it is. Well, we need to press that. He pushed the victim hard in the back and she fell down right on her stomach. Hmm. Huh. I remember that happening once myself. It was really brutal. <laughs> Are you talking about seeing someone get pushed, or were you the one getting pushed? <laughs> or does it mean that you pushed someone down like that once? They're building a new stadium downtown, by the way. It's gonna really bring in some new jobs for the city. Probably some new court cases, too. Can't wait. With his mind-boggling tales and the way he said brutal, I wonder if he's Canadian. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Save your nasty look for the right person, huh? Take a look. Poor baby. The court record seems to have wet itself. Hey, watch where you spill your coffee. The court record, huh? That must have been where the scar when the scarf fell off. So in other words, there was a struggle between the criminal and the victim, huh? That's what the witness said. Well, it looks like she didn't remember about the scarf, but from what she said, it sounded like a pretty violent fight, ma'am. The area was wet from the- oh shit, the area's wet from the rain, the bridge's probably wet too, which would explain why the scarf was covered in mud, but... There's something about the testimony that's still bothering me. Heh, <laughs> talk about a surprise. I had no idea there was a photo. So what do I do? You really still believe him? Mr. Crybaby, I mean? Of course I do. Humph. <laughs> so a little kitten believes in fairy tales, huh? In that case... The answer is obvious. If what you believe is the truth, then that means that somewhere hidden in that testimony is a contradiction. One huge contradiction waiting to be discovered. That's your chance. Okay, so there's no mud on the bridge, right? I well, I guess there could be with people walking over it, but isn't it broken though? Actually, there's an eyewitness who was there taking the place. The photo was accidentally taken by the witness and shows the victim wearing a scarf, sir. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, where's the knife? Are, are his hands still bound? How the fuck was he driving? It was drizzling that day. Unfortunately, it's a little hard to see what's going on. Anyway, the criminal shoved the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the back. That must have been when the scarf fell off. Oh, shit. So that looks like she went on the bridge first, right? He's still in chains. How the fuck did he do this? Stand there from the back, there from below, from the floor, beyond bridge located 40 feet above me. Okay, so yeah, he they're here. So totally not goofy was here. I guess it has to be. There's no, there was no mud on the bridge. Addiction. This evidence establishes it. No, it's not. Oh, shit. Uh, I don't know. 
Is this one of those ones I have to I have to question everything again or press everything again? I'm assuming the scarf fell off. Actually, there's an eyewitness who was there when the incident took place. Okay, I don't think we can refute that. This photo was accidentally taken by the witness. It shows the Vic wearing the scarf, sir. Okay, I don't think we can refute that either, unless there's something else in, in this photo that we're gonna refute. Um, it was drizzling that day. Unfortunately, it's a little hard to see what's going on. Anyway, the criminal shoved the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the back. All right, I kind of, maybe it's that he's in chains. How did he do that in chains? I mean, you can shove someone without, like just by barging into them. That must have been when the scarf fell off. Can I talk about the surprise I know I did those photos? So what do I do? You really do not know what I do. Humph. So look at this straight tell something that's been based on the truth and the window is when he's going to join you discover this for chance. Okay, I don't I don't know, sorry. I think I'm gonna go with he was in chains. Objection! This haven't established the defendant's lying, right? No, nope, it's not that either. Like, there's not that much evidence. Stab with a knife in the back, died from blood loss between 4 and 5 p.m. Bridge located 40 feet above Eagle River. Confidential. Okay, so it's f found on Dusky Bridge. He found the scarf on the bridge. Okay, so it's not like it fell down or anything like that. He actually found it on the bridge. Okay, seems to have been taken by, by the witness. The photo of the trunk of the car. Like, is it that it should have fell? It should have fell off? It should have fell down on the bridge? No, it could have got wrapped around something pretty easily. For the trunk of the car. It's like the like the hat is missing too, but I don't think it's anything to do with the hat. It could be that it's it's hard to see that it's her. Like maybe like this doesn't prove that it was her. I mean it's the same kind of thing with the scarf. I don't think that's it either. You know the criminal showed the victim on the side in the back. It was dead. And unfortunately, it's a little hard to see what's going on. Is is that? It's just like yeah, it's very hard to see what's going on. We can't really see who it is. Nope. Okay, so the only thing I'm thinking of are where did the hat go, and this should have fell into the water when 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 the struggle happened instead of it uh, being on the bridge. But like, I don't think those are right. It just those are the only things I can think of right now. Objection. Nope, it's not that either. So it's not that it fell down. Photograph? Nope. All right, let me press everything again and see. Maybe there's a clue that I missed. Sorry, I don't know what it is. Who is this eyewitness? Uh, she's a college student, female college student. Uh, that's right, meaning she's female and a college student. Ma'am, she doesn't do well in front of other people, so I care to testify for her. Maybe so, but as the attorney for the defense, I have the right to cross-examine her. For the time being, we're not relying on the witness statements, that is all. What's that supposed to mean? Uh, the prosecution has other more decisive evidence. Our case doesn't rest on the vague testimony of a female college student. Female college student A. Okay, that seems like a bust. Please tell us about the more decisive evidence in question. Alright, uh, this photo is accidentally taken by the witness. It shows the Vic wearing the scarf, sir. 
The victim is wearing a scarf in that photo, all right. So, about the witness who took this photo, what was this person doing all the way in the mountains? She was taking photos of wildflowers, apparently. There was many unusual types of flora on the mountain, Miss Faye. People in the area say it's because of the spirits that live there. The spirits, don't you mention it in this photo? This cloudy fog thing, is it a ghost? I don't believe it. No, Your Honor, I don't think it's a ghost. Okay, that was kind of weird. Is it, why was she pointing at, why was she pointing at the bridge? Like, like she must have been here, right? Like, or here? Mm. It's drizzling that day, unfortunately, it's a little hard to see what's going, what's going on. Uh, drizzling, huh? That's right, there was a light rain coming down, the whole place was dreary. The nose dreary is the mood that's in this court right now. Looks like a cold front just moved in. In any case, uh, the point is that the area is quite damp. There's even some fog. I even saw some fellows on the bridge. It was really something. Anyway, the criminal should be Okay, is it, is it like... The water would have washed the mud away? I don't think that, but... Is that part of the witness's testimony as well? Of course it is. He pushed the victim down hard uh, in the back and she fell down right on her stomach. Hmm. I remembered that happening once myself. It was really brutal. Are you talking about that? Okay. Haha. Serious. Okay. Take a clipping. Okay. Watch for you. Cough in the court record, huh? Okay. So was that was that a, him helping that we're supposed to press that? Okay, I hope that it's not that how did he shove her from behind when they were facing each other because like she easily could have turned around after the photo was taken. Like that doesn't mean shit. Addiction. No, it's not that. Report? No, I'm just guessing right now, chat. I'm sorry this is frustrating. I really don't know. I don't know what it wants for me. I hope it makes sense. I hope I can say, oh man, I'm dumb. Alright, so this this is it, right? That's the clue. Okay, so we're, pre we're pushing on this, I think. All right, so we push that. The bridge? Nope. I mean, that doesn't look very white, does it? Nah. So at the time of the crime, there was a light drizzle coming down, correct? All right. Yeah, and fog too, just a generally soggy atmosphere. Well, I have evidence that doesn't go with the, so the soggy atmosphere. But this is a photo of the victim's body that was found in the car trunk. Considering the conditions of the scene of the crime, something isn't right. Well, by all means, please enlighten us as to what isn't right. What isn't right if it doesn't, doesn't fit the conditions that day? That there's no, there's no mud on her coat? Mm -hmm. I guess that's all right. I'm not sure the answer is right here. The victim's coat. As far as I can see, there is nothing strange about it. About it. That's exactly what's strange. Recall the testimony. What were the conditions on the bridge that day? 
It was drizzling and foggy. Dusky bridge was all wet. If the victim really had fallen down on her stomach on top of the bridge, then the front of her coat should have been covered in mud. Urk. That's... That's exactly right! The other day I fell on a muddy street and my gorgeous playoff beard was before... <laughs> it's just... It's just doing the jokes for me now! <laughs> I do admit that the crime scene was quite wet that day. However, that doesn't mean that the top of the bridge itself was muddy. If your honor had fallen in the shower instead of on a muddy street, your glorious hockey beard, pride of the legal league, <laughs> would be wet but not muddy. Fortunately, I have yet to test that. Still, your point is well taken. Can you prove that the surface of the bridge was muddy that day? The surface of the bridge, huh? Ha, ah, a real man wouldn't stand for a taunt like this. Neither would a real woman. Well, I mean, the scarf is muddy. It's not that muddy, though, and it was out- it was, like, out there for a while. Of course I can. Here's the evidence that proves the surface of the bridge was muddy. Mm, okay, I guess this is alright. I don't really like this, but okay, let's just move on. The evidence is... the scarf. Ah, uh, it should be obvious. If the scarf fell onto the bridge and got this muddy, it means that the bridge is obviously covered in mud. No, I can't be outwitted by this novice bimbo. Whoa! Hey, same to you, buddy. Himbo to bimbo. Miss Faye's assertion makes perfect sense to me. I do admit that there appears to be a contradiction between the condition of the victim's coat and her scarf. However, the real question is, why is there a contradiction? Huh? For every contradiction, there exists an explanation. Let's look at what the explanation in this case may be, shall we? Alright, it's not like he's really giving me a choice here. Ha, <sighs> you're doing pretty well for a little kitten. Alright, that's fucking weird, dude. Stop calling your kitten, Mr. Armando. No matter what he says, a contradiction always comes down to a lie. It's either the victim discovered in the trunk. The witness's photos showing the defendant and the victim or the witness's testimony that stated that she saw the moment of the murder. Just relax and think it over. It's pretty simple, isn't it? The false evidence. It's one of those three. The photo in the trunk is from before the meeting on the bridge. Huh. What you just said just now, I'm not sure I like that. I'm not sure about that. That wasn't me, Your Honor. It was the coffee aficionado over here that said it. This court is not in the habit of accepting false evidence, you know. Don't you know? Blame it on him, Your Honor. He's the one trying to slip false evidence into court. But we won't let him. We'll expose his evidence. This flimsy, uh, the flimsy scam it really is. Yes. The false evidence in this case is the witness's testimony, body in the trunk. I'm going to say the witness's testimony. It is a no-brainer. Obviously, it's the witness, it's the witness that is, that's suspicious. During his earlier testimony, the detective pointed out a crucial fact. The criminal shoved the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the back. Now, is that testimony exactly what the witness claims to have seen? Yeah, that's what the witness told us. Huh. That testimony is filled with holes. After all, the victim's coat isn't dirty at all. Huh, that's true. Ah, it's not just true, it's the truth. Alright, if there was a truly decisive witness in this case, I'm certain that boy wonder over there would have called him in the first place. Your Honor, the defense requests to cross-examine the eyewitness. The testimony presented so far is not only vague, but contradictory as well. Well, Mr. Chadworth, it appears that we'll need to hear from your mystery witness after all. Sigh. You should brace yourself for the brutal truth. Your Honor, the prosecutor, prosecution has no intention of hiding the witness from the court. We are prepared to present our witness at any time. Very well, then. Please bring forth your witness at this time. What Mr. Chadworth said kind of worries me. What does he mean by the brutal truth? Is it the girl? Now let's proceed with the testimony. Mr. Chadworth, please go right ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. The prosecution summons the woman who saw the events that day with her very own eyes. 
This is it, Mia. The battle begins here. Witness, what is your name and occupation? Oh, fuck! That's the name! Everyone's so silent that I can hear their hearts going pitter-patter. Huh, oh! When I look at you, how can I put it? It makes me think. It makes me makes me think the Maple Laughs can finally win the Stanley Cup. You look as, <laughs> you look as scrumptious as a double double. <laughs> yes. You look as scrumptious as a double-double and a dozen donut holes. I feel like I want to hurry up and hand down a verdict just to have a bite. Oh, Hey, hey, not so fast. Sigh. As I said before, this witness is very sensitive and delicate. I would ask the court to please exercise care when addressing her. I really thought it was going to be goofy. God damn. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Mr. Chadworth. You are a true gentleman. Miss Faye, you could learn a lot from this man. He's such a gentleman, he sure doesn't act like one to me. Um, sir? Hmm. Eh? Eh? Yes, my dear. This is my first time, so I'm not sure I'll, so I'm sure I'll make a lot of mistakes. Anyway, I just wanted to say I'm sorry for all the trouble I might cause. Hmm. Not at all, it's no trouble at all. Now then, will you please have your name and occupation? My name is, uh, Melissa Foster. I'm a college student, a freshman in the li literature department. You were on the scene when the unfortunate event occurred, correct? And you were the one who took this photo? Is that accurate? Well, how, how can you be so mean? Now see, now see here, what are you doing shoving that in her face? Shoving that in her face like that, huh? But it's not just a photograph, it's... Sorry, but it's just a photograph, it's not like it's something dangerous. Next time I'll be forced to penalize you! Uh oh, I don't like the turn this is taken into the penalty box. Is she staring at me? Um, and you would be, huh? I'm the defense attorney, my name is Mia Faye. I see, so you are. Now then, young lady, could you please give us your testimony? Yes, yes, your honor, I'll do my best. The witness is photographed. All right, where is this going? Like, if she's coming back now, does that mean she comes back again later? Like, this feels like setup for something else. I like this, this is good. I was using my camera to take some pictures of the wildflowers. Then I noticed there were two people standing up on the suspension bridge. Suddenly they just, they just started fighting. That's when I hurried and took the photo that shows the crucial moment. And right after that, I called the police. Hmm. By the way, where were you standing when the incident occurred? I believe the map would be of help here. On the map, on the map, on the map. Um, I was standing right over here. I was standing in a beautiful field surrounded by tall cliffs. So you took the photo from that location, eh? I brought the camera I was using at the time, just like Mr. Chadworth asked me to. Ho ho ho, what a cute camera. It's just like its owner. Melissa Foster took the witness's photo with this small, powerful model. Okay, so that's a fake name, right? Or is that the real name and Dahlia is the fake name? Her name was Dahlia from the first case, right? I think so. All right then, Miss Faye, time for your cross-examination, eh? But I warn you, make the witness cry again and you'll feel the wrath of my gavel. The witness's photograph. I was using my camera to take some pictures of wildflowers. Did you say wildflowers? Yes, the mountain is famous for its beautiful spring flowers. Um, but it's only February. How old was the girl that fell into the river? It was five years ago, wasn't it? She was 14, so her age matches that. There's no way, right? 
Hmm. Well, I, I couldn't wait for spring to come. Oh, oh, I just, I just, I know just how you feel. Just like when I first started growing this glorious beard of mine. I just couldn't wait, so I wore a dyed blonde Santa beard until mine grew improperly. <laughs> Would you mind if we got back to the facts of the case, Your Honor? I do. Then I noticed there were two people standing up on the suspension bridge. Was there anything strange about the two of them? I, I'm a bad girl, I know I am. It looked like they were having a real, really serious conversation up there, so I decided to watch them, like some kind of peeping Tom. No, not all. Everyone is like that. I love watching other people fight, too. In fact, I can't get enough of it. That's why I watch hockey. Actually, that's why I took this job in the first place. Too much info, Your Honor. In any case, it's perfectly natural for you to have kept watching them, especially dressed as they were. Well, anyway, I was watching them very closely. Suddenly, they just started fighting. Do you have any idea what they were fighting about? about? Eh? No, I have no idea. Why do you ask that? Oh, I just thought that maybe you overheard what they said. I would never, I would never eavesdrop. Peep, I would peep, but not eavesdrop. I'll watch people have sex, but I won't listen to it. I've got more class than that. That's right, Miss Faye. Don't drag the witness down to your level. Grr. Wow. That's when I hurried and took the photo that shows the crucial moment. Why did you take a photo? Well, the two of them were really going at it. Damn, ever since I was a little girl, I always wanted to be a news reporter. I guess that part of me just kind of took over. So I took a photo. <laughs> smells like a lie to me. Actually, I took more photos, but Chadworth only wanted one. But I'm not going to tell you that until you ask. Yes, I understand completely. Even now, I can't completely abandon my boyhood dreams. I still use my grandson to test my comedy routines on. <laughs> so you want to be a comedian, huh? Now this is the bearing on this. Hey, Canada sends all its best comedians down the States. All I could do was use my camera. So I took the photo of the crucial moment and gave it to the police. And right after that, I called the police. You called the police? Yes, because it looked to me like the murder w murderer was going to try to escape. We were already moving before the call even came in. Thanks to the victim's note, we had already started our operation. Hmm. That was certainly tough luck for the criminal, eh? If Terry Falls isn't the criminal, then there must be something strange in that girl's testimony. Be careful, kid. That girl has the judge wrapped around, wrapped right around her little finger. You're going to have a tough time poking holes in that testimony of hers, even donut holes. You're going to have to come up with something really good, Mia. Okay, so it's been almost four hours, and I really need to pee. So let's just take a five-minute break now, and then we'll continue. And I think we can we can finish this. I'm getting the impression that this is the whole case. It's like a prelude case, the case five, I'm guessing. I don't know. Unless this goes on longer than I thought. So yeah, let's just take five minutes, and we'll be back soon.
all right so um we should be good to go until the end of this chapter and then we'll start uh chapter five tomorrow and then i'm hoping we can split chapter five into two streams and i think we should be set up okay for that we shall see Ooh, uh, thank you, Iceland Spaceman, for the 100 bits. Thank you so much, Iceland Spaceman. Sorry I didn't see that. I think that came in right at the end uh, when I said thank you last time. And it's been saying that the whole time. Using my camera to take some pictures of wildflowers. Uh, did we even shoot that already? Then I noticed there were two people standing in suspension for something to start fighting. That's when I hurried and took the photo. This shows a crucial moment, and right after that, I called the police. How did you call them? And what was the clue? Terry Flaws isn't a criminal, then there must be something strange in that girl's testimony. Be careful, kitten. That goes to judge for. Okay, so. And what evidence do we have? Small but powerful model. Seems to have been taken by the witness. Worn by the witness. So she said she was standing here. So she she took the picture past the cliff. So they were here. All right. So they were all the way over here. Why would they meet all the way over there? So fighting. That's what I heard. Okay. Your your picture doesn't show them fighting though. That's the thing, right? So they just start fighting. So that's wrong, right? The, the photograph doesn't show them fighting. But do, does it want that one or the one before it? Objection. Cool. Witness. When you said you took a photo of the crucial moment, is this what you meant? Or all I can see in this photo are two people facing each other. You testified that you saw the two of them st starting to fight. Normally that's the kind of thing we would refer to as a crucial moment. Why haven't you presented a photo like that? Well, you see, the photo we presented was the only one there was. But if you really wanted to capture the crucial moment, then what happened next? You must have taken a photo of it. Mmm, mmm. Doe! Canadians don't say doe. Or, um, my apologies, young lady. I'm becoming the other judge now. But as Miss Faye is a certain. But Miss Faye's assertion is not without a certain amount of merit. He could certainly downplay a situation, can't he? I, I'm sorry, I'm a very bad girl. I, um, I used it all up. The film, I mean. Oh, you ran out of film? Or this photo was the last one. What? <laughs> Unfortunately, that is the truth. I personally examined all the photographs she took that day. All the other photos are of the witness herself playing among the wildflowers. <laughs> the witness herself then who took the photos well you see my camera has a timer feature built into it so you took photos of yourself oh is this what's called a selfie i remember taking some photos of myself once too please no details damn it seems that miss Faye's assertion was not so decisive after all oh, wait just a minute what well if she had no film left she couldn't very well take more pictures eh she said she started taking pictures after the fighting, though. Miss Foster, perhaps then you could tell us, ab tell us about a different sort of photo. Photos of the incident you took with your very own eyes. Damn. Poetry, Chadworth. Mr. Chadworth, you're quite the po- <laughs> I made this. I made this. I made this. Very well then, let's get back to the cross-examination. Let's hear your thoughts on the fight that you witnessed. Yes, Mr. Judge. Ooh, Mr. Judge. Boy, this guy is really a sucker for sweet talk. 
It looks like the other kitten in the room is the one that's getting all the attention. Yeah, it's sickening how you call all women kittens. I was using my camera to take some pictures of wildflowers. Did you say wildflowers? How, how not to be creepy. Step one, be hot. Get away with anything, Diego. What the fuck? Actually, it's still a little creepy. Yes, the mountain is famous for its beautiful spring wallflowers. Um, but it's only February. Oh, wait, we did this already. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, you can't get 10 yards away because they were at the end of the bridge, right? It's gotta be. But you're saying Sergeant Hawthorne wasn't able to get away from him? Well, it's an hour bridge, but it was swaying back and forth. If you ask me, both of them were in danger of falling off. I only wish I could have done something to help her. Hmm, that seems to make sense. I wonder about that. Something seems kind of off. Ha, does it now? You have a good sixth sense. When you feel that something's off, that's when you need to figure out why. If Terry Falls isn't the criminal, then there must be some strange girl sesame. Be careful, kitten. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so, um, what does it want? Does it want the photograph? Does it want her position? Does it want the camera to show where, where she was? Does it want this? I think it wants the photograph, right? So my line, my line of thinking right now is that because, because she was here, that means that because she was watching it, that they were here, which means she they didn't have ten yards to work with. So, but what is it that they want? It could be the camera, the photo, or the bridge map. I'm gonna go with the map. Addiction. Witness, your testimony is a joke. Huh? What? But I just... Miss Faye, I, I thought I warned you not to make the witness cry. I'm losing this accent. One short testimony and two bad contradictions. There's no possible excuse. You say there were two contradictions. It's simple. Just take a look at the diagram of the area. Look at this grass. Oh, it even has five yards on it. Oh yeah, no way. Is that, does that match five yards? Really? Hmm. According to their testimony, the two of them were in the middle of the bridge. But if they were, but if they were, and the victim would turn around and try to run, well then, she, she would, she would have hit a dead end. You said ten yards, but she couldn't have ran even five because Dusky Bridge is, a, is collapsed on that side. Wow. What does all this mean? It's very simple, Your Honor. This charming little witness told a charming little lie. That's all there is to it. This beautiful young lady has been lying to the court. She's another Trudeau. Just. <laughs> <laughs> I quite like Trudeau, actually, but, um, you know, it, it, it was a shot and I took it. Uh, Your Honor, allow me to personally apologize for the confusion. I mean, he's not perfect, but, like, no one is. Ooh. What do you mean, eh? There's one major mistake in this diagram. What did you say? Oh, what are you referring to? It's all because this diagram was made after the incident occurred. It's a very old bridge. We couldn't find any official blueprints of it. So what you're saying is that this diagram is out of date. I'm saying that even though the bridge is currently in disrepair, there's no evidence that can prove that the bridge was broken during the incident. Whoa! You actually can't- But you went there, Chadworth! You can't actually tell the condition of the bridge from this photo. I apologize to the court for not being more clear when I presented the evidence. You went there! You went on- Gumshoe went on, You went to the bridge! 
Ha, <laughs> that guy is good. Huh, what do you mean? He planned it from the beginning. He's a genius, all right. This is a genius! This is a... He, he, he's, he's a genius, all right. That diagram of the bridge was his insurance policy. What? That coward. Well, 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 Miss Faye, it seems like you once again made a reckless accusation. I mean, I could ask two people in the courtroom right now. Hey, what was the condition of the bridge? Maybe even the witness herself if we wanted to get crazy. But, you know, no, we're not gonna. I'm so sorry. I should have been more careful myself. No, 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 it wasn't your fault at, all, fault at all. Now then, shall we go on with the trial? I'd like to establish once and for all what, what, what it was that the witness actually saw. Indeed. All right, young lady. May I ask you to please proceed with your testimony? But I... It's so hard to go on. We're all on your side, Miss Foster. There's no need to worry. Just tell us what you saw. Yes, sir. Running from the crime. After he stabbed her in the back, he quickly picked her up in his arms, then he carried her over to the car. I suppose that was the only way he could make sure the body stayed hidden. He couldn't just leave the body on top of the bridge. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm only supposed to talk about what I saw. Huh. Huh. Witnessing such, a, such violence must have been difficult. Yes, sir, I'm still shaken up. He, if he accepts this testimony as it is, we're finished. Don't say that- well, we do lose, don't we? Like, if I remember, Mia said that her first her first trial, um, she lost, right? Don't say that. Oh, well. Maybe I'll stop off at my favorite cafe on the way home. They make a really great mocha latte. Nice. Nice. This trial isn't over yet. Ha. Huh. That's what I like to hear. All right, Miss Faye. Your cross-examination, if you please. This contra The contradiction is staring you right in the face, Mia. Go on the attack. Running from the crime. After he stabbed her in the back, he quickly picked her up in his arms. Are you saying that the victim didn't fall down on the bridge? Or, um, actually, maybe she did fall. Of course she didn't fall down on the bridge. If she had fallen down, this photo wouldn't make any sense. If that was the case, her coat would have been all muddy. Leading the witness! Leading the witness! Yo, yo, she almost contradicted. Leading the witness. If you don't mind, I was asking. Yeah, yeah, tell him, Mia. Tell him, Mia. Tell him. No need to be so rude. No, you're breaking fucking court protocol. Judge, judge, judge. What the fuck? Well, well, young lady. Of course she didn't fall down. The man in the prison uniform grabbed her before she could. I would love to see an actual, like, real life lawyer stream this game. That would be really fun for me. Do, do, do. As long as he, as long as he or she got like absolutely fucking angry at everything that they got wrong, that would be very entertaining. <sighs> they have to be in invested. Ha! Uh, or one step too slow. And then, what did the defendant do after that? Then he carried her over to the car. <laughs> you personally witnessed that? Y yes. Did anything strange happen when he did that? Um, what? You can see the car from where you are. Well, I don't know if you call it strange or not, but that's when the victim's scarf fell off. Hmm, you mean this scarf? Her words match what we found at the scene. I don't see any problem. Oh, wait, what? I suppose that was the only way we could make sure the body stayed hidden. You mean the defendant carried the body all by himself? Yes. Considering the size of the defendant, I don't think it would be difficult. Yes, but let's remember they were on a narrow bridge that was ready to collapse. Is it even possible for him to have carried a dead body on a bridge like that? Well, the fact of the matter is that he did. No, that's what we're questioning, Chadworth. Whoa. Fucking young Chadworth can go fuck off with young Sheldon. Seriously, that kind of talk is just silly. Wow, why did you get so emotional all of a sudden? Miss Faye, if you think there's some other possibility, please share it with the rest of us. You couldn't just leave the body on top of the bridge. Why do you say that? It's already a broken down bridge hidden away in the mountains. Doing anything more to hide the corpse would be going overboard, wouldn't it? 
Yes, but that mountain is famous among hikers. A surprising number of people go up there and then don't cross the bridge. But it's February, right? And it was raining that day, correct? Why don't we go ask them if the bridge was broken? There is also a small temple in a channeling dojo there. You know those monks. They just love cold, isolated places. I think the witness is trying to say that the corpse could have been found at any time. Besides, the witness is merely reporting that she witnessed with her own eyes. Yes, it's such an isolated place that it's popular. It's popular for its isolation. Lots of people there go there to enjoy the isolation. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm only supposed to talk about what I saw. And you're absolutely certain that it was my client who was carrying the body. Well, he was wearing a prisoner's uniform, but as for his face... So you're saying you didn't get a clear look at his face? Well, they were far away and it was raining as well. I thought I was only supposed to say exactly what I saw. Excellent, you're a remarkably honest young woman. Apart from every single testimony before this, something about this testimony is bothering me, but what? Hey, kitten, have you ever put salt in your coffee? No, why would I? Why not? Huh? It may actually go better with coffee than sugar, right? Listen, my point is that if you're not sure, you might as well add a ton of salt to it. It might bring out the rust in something, like a piece of evidence. He's right, Mia. Go present something. You've got nothing to lose. Well, I mean, we'll get, we'll get fucking penalties. By the way, I wouldn't put salt in my coffee. The two don't go well after all. After he stepped to the back, he quickly picked her up in his arms and he carried her over to the car. I suppose it was a minute. Okay, so, uh, Chowworth got, like, oddly emotional when we did this, and that usually means that he doesn't, like, he has no real evidence, so he's going for the emotional route, and he's just, like, pressing you off and making it seem ridiculous that anyone would question that. So that makes me think that that's, that's the weak point, but, like, I mean, I don't know how. Like, why doesn't he have blood on him after he, after he stabbed her in the back and carried- I guess, I guess the, the knife could be, like, stopping it. No, but she died of blood loss. Do do. Which is okay for if you book the river. Confidential police matter. Materials written by the victim. I suppose there's a movie really spicy and you couldn't leave the body on top of the first show. Okay, I don't I don't she said that she saw this, I don't see how she could have. How how could she see that from there, right? Unless she's just saying carried over to the car. I saw basically she should say I saw him carry the body off the bridge, but that can't be it. That's too. That's too easy, isn't it? Okay, let's try that, and if it's not, we'll go fishing for something else. No, it's not that. Okay, I kind of feel like that should work, but okay, let's see. What else is there? Save scum. Do do do. Save scum. Okay, let's see. So, stand in the back of the knife. No, that didn't work. Confidential. Like, the scarf is like, it looks blue to me, but it's fine. Talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time the whole truth must come out. Okay. Photo of the car. the I think that would be difficult. Let's try that one. Either for, like, I don't think that he could carry her, or, like, you can't see the car, like, right? Let's try that. This evidence is out. No, it's not that either. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm only supposed to talk about what I saw. Maybe it's maybe it's that bridge located. You didn't you didn't see it because you couldn't see it. Maybe it's that. Hold on. Nope. Where's the knife? How did he stab her with chains? No. 
Alright, I feel like this case is very particular about what it wants, and in kind of a bad way. I'm not enjoying the, um, the, the, the uh, deductions in this one all that much, but maybe I'm just tired and, and dumb. After he stabbed her in the back, he quickly picked her up in his arms, then he carried her over to the car. I suppose that was the only way he could make his survival safe, and he couldn't just leave the body on top of the bridge. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm only supposed to talk about what I saw. Oh, isn't there something about, like, why didn't he just, why didn't he just throw the body off the bridge? Like, why take it to the car? Why why not just dump it off the bridge? That would that would be way easier, right? How do I say that? This one? This such the defendant is lying, right? Nope. That was the only way to make the buy sit. Okay, maybe this is that one? Okay, killer not wanting the victim to be found, I can understand that. However, the idea of moving the body for that purpose is clearly odd. There was a much easier way to make sure the body wasn't found. Well, what is it? Take another look at the map of the area and you'll see how. There's a river right below the bridge. Earlier, Mr. Chaworth pointed out something interesting about the river. I think sometimes I'm too hard on these games for, for um, them not accepting multiple paths for, for getting there. I guess, like, if they had more text-based options right at the end, like, uh, right after you make you present evidence that they could, like, use those to segue into the answer that they have, like, the artwork ready for. But, like, it's a lot of work to, to present multiple things that you can, that you can, um, you can present. Like, I think if they, like, the text isn't as interesting, though. I think maybe with some clever writing you can make it work, but it would be tough. For those who are not aware, Eco River is well known for its powerful current. Most bodies that fall in are never recovered. Uh, in the kidnapping case five years ago, the victim's body was carried away and never found. No, I was found. Aha! Guilty. If ten murders were to occur in that same spot above the Eco River, you can bet your boots that every other killer would have tossed the body in the water. Order, order, order. I'm not sure if I care for the way you put that, Mia Faye, Miss Faye. But I must admit, it does seem odd not to have thrown the body into the river. Oh. Well, Mr. Chadworth. Sigh. How sad. Perhaps Miss Faye would like, would do well to try taking a dip in the river herself. After all, you claim to be such an expert in the ways of nature. What are you talking about? My point is that no matter how odd you may find the killer's method of body disposal, the fact is that this kill this is what the killer did. And just because there's water in the diagram now doesn't mean there was water at the time that it took place. Maybe the river was dry that day. You don't know. You weren't there. It hasn't been updated. None of your arguments have anything to do with what the witness saw. Hmm. Quite, quite true. Miss Faye, it seems that your assertion is without merit after all. But what the witness claims to have seen is totally ridiculous. Surely you can't deny that the body was found in the trunk of the car. That's certainly consistent with what the witness has told us. Ugh. Please, witness, go on with your testimony. I'll try. All you have to do is tell us only what you saw. Otherwise, the mean lady might yell at you again. Whoa, who's he talking about? Alright, I'll do my best. Poor Mia had a much rougher first trial than fucking Phoenix did. After he stabbed her in the back, he could get her in his arms, and he carried her to the car, the killer, and then he's doing it to the bridge. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm supposed to. Wait, what? Hey, kitten. Have you ever put salt in your coffee? After he sat in the back, he quickly picked her up in his arms and he carried her over to the car. The killer broke into the trunk of the stolen car and then... Oh! What? Why is there suddenly something new? Did I miss the line of dialogue that explained that? What did the man do then? Well, naturally, he got in the car and was about to flee. How did you see that? That's, that's what I came... That's when I came to my senses. I said to myself, you have to call the police. 
And so that's when you called the police. You're sure that you saw that with your own eyes? Yes, I'm 100% certain. Okay, now is it- how did you see that? From here? Like, how? It's gotta be that. Well, Miss Foster, it looks like you've done it this time. Done what? You made a crucial mistake. A crucial mistake? Like what, Miss Faye? The killer broke into the trunk of the stolen car and hid the body in there. You're saying you saw that, right, with your very own eyes? Yes, and? It's simple, Miss Foster. Take a look at the diagram. The place you claim to have taken the photo from that day is here. Yeah, but we don't know if this cliff was here on the time that this took place. Like, maybe there was an earthquake here after, like, since then, and these there's a tectonic plate right here, a fault line, and that kind of lifted up more of this cliff, and she could have seen it at the day. Like, we don't know, you know, like, it could be. Like, you have no idea. The place you claim is... Von Karmas do have the power of earthquakes, right? Do you see what I mean? Even if you try to see the car, this outcropping of rock is directly in the way. Ah, that's right, Miss Foster. From where you were standing, you could not possibly see the killer's car. Ah. Uh... I admit that the diagram shows a large outcropping of rock. However, it isn't so tall that it would stop you from seeing the car. That's right. It's not high at all. I was able to see his car just fine. I'm so sorry, but that just doesn't wash. I believe it was the witness who presented this as evidence to the court, yes? This is the location that the photo was taken from. Your own photo tells the whole story. You can clearly see the left side of the bridge, but the outcropping that is being referred to is really more like a cliff. Ah! Your view should have been completely cut off by this cliff. And you still claim to have been able to see the killer's car. Maybe it just dips down really suddenly. No. Oh, order, order in the court. What is the meaning of this ballyhoo? <laughs> ballyhoo? What's <laughs> ballyhoo? Your honor, don't jump to any hasty conclusions. The fact that the escapee fled in a stolen car was reported on the news. After witnessing a murder, I'm sure you can appreciate that the witness was very upset. She must have heard about the stolen car and convinced herself that she saw it. Yeah, okay. But she was repeatedly warned before started starting her testimony. She was told to testify only about what she saw with her own eyes. Hmm. Oh. Er. Uh, Mr. Judge? What is it? I think... I think I must have remembered things wrong. No. Hey, wait a minute. You can't just say that. Of course she can. Why not? Miss Faye, no one on the face of the planet is perfect. Except for me. Yes, indeed. Quite true. Oh, you know what they say. Tear is human to forgive divine. And a triple-triple is too far. You stop a double-double. I'm inclined to give the benefit of the doubt to our witness here. What? That's not fair. It's kind of BS. Kind of par for the course, though. Ha. Save the tears for later, kitten. M Mr. Armando... Don't look back until the trial is over. Now is the time to go forward. But that was but that wasn't fair. Okay, kitten. You need to relax. Then you need to remember, life isn't fair. Life is unfair. The other kitten's testimony. The killer broke into the trunk of the stolen car and hid the body in there. So tell me, how did she know that? How did she know that he broke into the trunk? Aha! Well, Miss Foster, and so you can explain how you knew that. You're going to have a lot of very suspicious people on this side of the courtroom. Oh, they could hear that! Oh, okay. Oh, oh, well, witness. Well, I'm certain that he broke into the trunk because because there were marks left on the trunk lid. I'm certain they were scratch marks from when he broke into it. What? Let me see that photo. It's true, eh? These certainly look like scratch marks around the keyhole. Hmm. It's obvious that this trunk has been broken open. Looks like he used a hockey stick. Well, Miss Faye, are you satisfied? The judge is on her side. I can't make any mistakes here. What she just said. Is there a contradiction in there somewhere? I'll buy it. It doesn't... Uh... I mean... Okay, I don't know. I, I want to say how did she see it again. Like, how did she see that? Uh, it doesn't work. 
Melissa Foster, it looks like you finally betrayed yourself. What? You said you were in a field taking photos of wildflowers, but even so, you knew about the scratches. The question is when. When did you get a chance to see those scratches? Finally, I finally got her. Ah, I'm getting pretty tired of waiting over here. Then perhaps it would be faster if Miss Faye explained herself. Your Honor, there's only one possible explanation. The reason the witness had seen the scratches was... She happened to be passing by. She put the corpse in herself. She is the owner of the car. There is no way that she put the corpse in herself. She happened to be passing by is just bullshit. She's the owner of the car. Okay. It's, it's gotta be that, right? We know more information than we're letting on because it's tell her, Dahlia, tell her this time the whole truth must come out. Right? It's her car and she knew about it before. <sighs> None of these are good. Oh, none of these are good. There's no way she put the corpse in. Try it. There's only one way that Linus had the chance to see the scratches. Yes, what is it? Naturally, when she opened the trunk and stuffed the corpse in herself. The person who really hid the body of the trunk in that car was Melissa Foster. It was you that did it, wasn't it? I really don't see how she could do that. Like, how. Like, m m quite a bit bigger than her, right? Unless we're leading to she had help. That's ridiculous. I could never. It was the man in the prison garb. He's the one that... I don't think so, Miss Foster. If Miss, Mr. Falls had been the one that put the corpse in the trunk, he would have simply used the car key. There was no need to break it open. But, but he stole the car. He stole it from a young couple that had been waiting at a red light. Which means that the key would have still been in the, in the ignition. Oh, I, I see. Thank you for telling us about the scratches, Miss Foster. Without that, we never would have uncovered the truth. That it couldn't have been Mr. Falls that put the body in the trunk. No! Preposterous. Do you even suggest that the witness put the body in there? Can you bring up the fact that she's like, what, like... 90 pounds like, like there's, there's no way if that were true then how do you explain the photo that she took the power of anime the corpse she's her umbrella as leverage Ugh, the corpse could only have been put in the trunk when the incident occurred and we already know that the time she was taking photographs the camera has a timer has a timer there's a chance mia timer finish this thing on the contrary i'm not so certain about that anymore mr shadworth there's no need to think too deeply about it. What I'm saying is that the shutter for this may have not been pushed by Mr. Foster herself. As a timer. Let's take another look at this camera and see what features it has, shall we? It has a timer built into it, even a mini tripod. Hmm. Oh. Why, it's almost as if she had brought this camera just to take this picture. Objection. What are you trying to say then, Miss Faye? That when the crime occurred, Miss Foster wasn't in the field as she claimed. Well, if she really did use the camera's auto timer, then the answer is yes, she was somewhere else. Exactly, she was not in the field. Hmm. Would the defense please explain further? So, did he, when he was driving away, did he even know the body was in the trunk? Listen, this is a crucial point. Where was Miss Foster when the incident occurred? And answering that question will also make it clear Miss Foster's Miss Foster's true identity. Well then, please answer the question. this question. Where was Melissa Foster when the incident on the bridge occurred? I mean, she she could have been disguised herself as as um, as the victim, right? She could have been right here. I'm guessing she was over here. If it's not that, was she already dead in the trunk? 
No, he drove here. He drove here with the car, right? He stole the car. He came here. And then... Valerie... Assuming this is Dahlia. I mean, I, I can't remember the name. So, Valerie and Dahlia knew he was coming. And... So they were all, they were both here. Dahlia has time to set up this, sets this up, and I don't know, fucking just Breath of the Wild climbs over here, down here, and like waits while they have their meeting? Or does she, it, has she already killed Valerie and is staging it? And then when he leaves, she's like, wahaha, and takes the stuff off, runs over, drags the body into the, like with, becomes the Hulk and pulls the body. Where, where is she? I don't know. Let's try the crazy theory first. Naturally, the witness is right here. But that's that's where the victim, Miss Hawthorne, was standing. Oh, it's crazy, right? Order, order, order. Miss Faye, what on earth? Your Honor, if I may. After parting with the victim on the bridge, the defendant fled by car. It was so funny, he just went boom. But this would mean that there was no time to put the victim in the trunk. In other words, if someone put the body in the trunk, it could only have been before the defendant met the victim. How asinine. Of course Miss Fall Mr. Falls met with the victim. The only person with the opportunity to put the victim in the trunk is the same man that killed her, Terry Falls. You still don't understand, do you, Mr. Shadworth? By the time the witness's photo was taken, the victim was already dead. The person in the photo was not Valerie Hawthorne. What? I've never heard anything more, more ridiculous in my entire life. Then who exactly is the victim in this photo? It's obvious, isn't it? It's your own witness. What? what, what? It's the only possible explanation. The woman that Mr. Falls met on the bridge that day was not Valerie Hawthorne. It was you, Melissa Foster. Mimi... Let's remember that it was raining and foggy on the mountain that day. Mr. Falls himself believed that the woman in front of him was Valerie Hawthorne. But the defendant knew Valerie Hawthorne very well. After all, she was the woman whose testimony helped get him convicted. My client is an idiot, but since then my client has spent five hard years in a federal penitentiary. He couldn't remember exactly what she looked like anymore. You were just making this up as you go along. Where's your proof? I've got it all right here. This piece of evidence will blow this case wide, wide open. Will it? Well, I hope you know what it is, Mia, because I don't. At the time of the incident, Miss Wallace has forgotten what Valerie Hawthorne looked like. Oh, yeah, it's, um, uh, white, white, white scarf for identification. Mr. Falls has forgotten the victim. So, I'm sorry. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. So there's no way that Valerie could have been in the trunk when he stole the car. So he drives up with the car, backs it up, beep, 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 beep. And then he's like, oh, okay, time to go meet on the bridge and walks along on the bridge, right? And she just set this timer miraculously at the perfect time to get them together. I guess she could have waited, right? So he da 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 And then she's like, he 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 went. All right, drag the body. Uh, 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 uh. And then she like puts it in the trunk that she breaks open as he's like, dum ba dum And then she's like, all right, job well done. All right, time to put her clothes on. Unless she brought like another coat, the same one. And then walks down here and is like, bum ba dum bum bum Oh, excuse me, I need to be on the other side of you. Let me go, bum ba dum ba dum ba dum bum Turns around and then is like, camera slash. Then they have a talk and she's like, okay, I'm glad we had this meeting. And then he's like, bum ba dum ba dum bum And then he leaves, like, what happened here? Mr. Falls had forgotten the victim's face. That's why he needed some piece of identification, namely this muddy scarf. Ah, uh, it was Mr. Falls who requested that she wear the scarf to identify herself. That's already been proven by the note the victim left. In other words, as long as you were wearing a scarf like he asked, anyone could have pretended to be Valerie Hawthorne. Well, what do you have to say to that, Melissa Foster? Uh, uh, no. Oh no! 
Oh, the delightful college girl witness just fainted. Well, I guess that's that's the end of it. Uh, I find I find the guy guilty. Fuck off. <laughs> the end. Uh, uh, where's Miss Foster? She's collecting herself in the lobby. Damn, this judge blacks out too. Huh. It's obvious that Miss Lisa Foster did it. She hid the body in the trunk and disguised herself as the victim. She set up the camera to snap a fake photo of them together. The only, the only question is, why did she do it? Well, isn't that obvious? She's the real culprit. Ha. Ah. Well, we'll have to wait for Miss Foster to compose herself before we start again. Until then, this court is in recess. The defense and the prosecution are both to wait in their respective lobbies. Oh no, she's fucking gone. Yes, your honor. Understood. Very well. I will go along with this. This court is in recess. Thank you, Dick Cheney, Ace Attorney, wonderful name for the 413 sub. Thank you very much. Save your progress, let's go. Dick Cheney, Ace Attorney. February 16, 1.14 p.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 4. Mr. Falls, I, uh, e, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I want to say thanks, you're real good, you really hooked me up. Thanks, we're almost there, once I prove that she committed the crime. Yeah, but there's one more big obstacle we've got to get past. Obstacle? Yeah, motive. Why would Melissa Foster kill that police woman anyway? Motive, huh? Anyway, we're still badly in need of information. Information? Right. What we need the most is info about this Melissa Foster herself. All we know is that she's a student studying literature. And one more thing, what is it? Well, the incident that happened five years ago, of course. The kidnapping murder case that Zebra Boy is on death row for. I didn't do nothing, I didn't kill nobody, I never lie. Mr. Falls, in that case, tell us more about it. About what happened five years ago. Okay, I trust you. Gonta tell you everything. That day, five years ago, I dream of it, every day. This picture reminds me everything. Bridge looked the same just like then, five years ago. Oh, uh, does it? So, um, so it was broken. Okay, cool. Like it could fall apart, fall apart any minute, but it didn't for five years. So it's been broken like that for at least five years. Ha, huh. sorry, bud, but you sound like the one that could fall apart any minute. It's true, I did. I did kidnap her five years ago. I kidnapped my girlfriend. Dahlia Hawthorne. Okay. Hey, hold on there. Did you say Hawthorne? The victim's last name. Dahlia Hawthorne. Valerie's little sister. What? Are you serious? Um, the girl let her go. Wait, how old is he? Shut up, come closer, and I kill her. Sorry, but you're not going to get the chance. I'm gonna kill her. <laughs> The detective back then was Valley Hawthorne. Merry Christmas. At first I thought shooting someone for a kidnapping was crossing the line, but... 25? A 20 year old and a 14 year old? Okay, fuck, guilty! Gu guilty! If it was to protect her little sister, I can understand why she did it. Wrong, no protect sister. Valerie betray me, betray us. What do you mean she betrayed you? Everything, all lies, all make-believe, kidnapping too. A make-believe kidnapping? Dahlia, my girlfriend, my love, my teenage... Oh. 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 Did he actually say my teenage angel? He's seen one to me so proper. I do anything she says, anything Dahlia says. Anything Dahlia says. Hold on a minute. Oh, okay. All right. So if she's just like master manipulator and he's just a fucking idiot, 
Like, he does seem like kind of an idiot. That makes it a teensy little bit better. Not really a fan of the game going there, but it makes it a teensy little bit better. What you're saying is that the kidnapping five years ago was planned by, yeah, me and Dahlia. And Valerie, too. Valerie was, was in on it? Dahlia's family rich jewelry business. We get one jewel, that's what we thought. Me and Dahlia wrote kidnap note. We send it to her dad. Ask for two million dollar diamond. Tell him to make exchange on Dusky Bridge. We tell him Valerie make transfer because she knew detective. Having a police detective in your pocket is a useful thing, all right. In the end, you were planning on splitting the two million three ways, huh? Yeah, but that woman. That woman, Valerie, she do it for real. She shoot at me for real, me and Dahlia. Bang. I was shot in the arm. Dahlia, she jump in river. Expert swimmer, very good, very strong. That's how she able to carry body. Jump, you don't mean she jumped on purpose, do you? I couldn't do it. All right, so is this a, like, a, like, did Dahlia and Valerie both do this to get the money? Like, was, was fuck was the Dal Dahlia you had just like a fucking like big doll and you didn't even realize it f fucking falls? Like how dumb are you? I couldn't do it. I could never push her. Anyway, I blacked out. Wake up with police all over. And that's when they decided to give you the death sentence. I couldn't believe it. That woman, she betrayed me. That man, Terry Falls, he killed her. He threw her off the bridge. He threw my beloved sister into the Roaring River 40 feet below. These five years, all I wonder is why, 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 why? Why did she lie? That's all I want to know. So that's why you called her. You wanted to hear the truth from Valerie herself. Yes, but I forget what she looked like, so I tell her to wear a scarf. Did you also forget what Dahlia looked like? I don't want to hurt her, just ask why. Why did you lie? Why did you betray me? I just want to hear answer come from her mouth, that's all. So that's why, that's why you made a crazy escape like that. Just one thing, zebra boy. My senses are tingling all over. Tell me, Mr. Falls, where is it? Huh? Where's what? Come on now, kitten. The ransom. The two million dollar diamond. Kitten? Remember that now? Did you give it back to Pops? Did the police take it? I don't know. Huh? You don't know. No, really, I don't know. It go it's gone with Dahlia. With Dahlia? Hmm. That day, on the bridge. Dahlia put it in backpack. Now gone with Dahlia. Gone forever. Into Eagle River. It disappeared with Dahlia, huh? Wait a minute. You can come back in now, we're about ready to go. Mr. Falls, just one more question. When you said, with Dahlia, do you mean the diamond is still missing? Along with the body of Dahlia Hawthorne? Never found her. My sweet Dahlia. They never found her. Swallowed by river, gone. Dahlia, my teen angel. Your teen angel. How old was she anyway? Just 14. 14? I guess you were robbing cradles before diamonds. She plans a fake kidnapping and disappears into the river with a rock worth two million. Man, oh man, angels these days. I mean, okay, look, I I don't I don't have a problem with with media like exploring like 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 yikes like yikes shit. You know what I mean? Like there are horrible people in the world like that that exist, but like it's Ace Attorney, man, and it already had the fucking problem before with pearls. Like, come on, man, oh man, angels these days. Falls takes the fall and gets a one <laughs> ticket to death row. Is Dahlia Hawthorne an angel or is she really a... It's time, kitten. Looks like we have a few more aces up our sleeve now. You bet. Diamond added to the court record. A $2 million gem used to ransom Dahlia lost in Eagle River five years ago. Train wheels come off now, Mia. You've got to strike while the iron is hot. That's one of my rules, remember it. Oh, I thought we were done, actually. I thought it was going to be... There was going to be nothing else after the recess. February 16, 149 p.m. District Court, Court Room 4. Alan, let's continue with the trial of Mr. Terry Falls. Witness, are you feeling better? Yes, Your Honor. I'll try my best.
Talk to Dahlia, tell her this time the whole truth must come out. Okay. Does this even read like it was from Terry? No, 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 it's not from Terry, is it? Sorry, this is this is the note that the, the victim left. My bad. All right, so Terry does this, so the victim left this, okay. Yeah, so Dahlia is alive, I guess. All right. Yes, Your Honor, I'll try my best. Oh, you're a brave young lady. Not this again. I can understand a defense lawyer want to get her client off the hook. However, to try to pin the crime on an innocent student is... What are you talking about? My witness is not the person on trial here. She's an innocent bystander who witnessed a violent crime, that's all. What possible reason would a girl like this have for murdering a policewoman? Huh. It's certainly hard to imagine this woman as a murderer. Her motive, huh? I figured that's what I had to establish next. Well, Miss Faye, do you have any evidence of a motive? Er, yes, of course. I think. Ha. Huh. You're still acting as tame as a kitten, kitten. Mr. Armando. Listen. A lawyer is someone who smiles no matter how bad it gets. Smiling on the outside while your guts are twisted in knots is the mark of a pro. Like, you have not done that in the other trials, bro. Maybe so, but I wish you would quit grinning at me like that. Um, excuse me, may I speak to Mr. Judge? Oh, of course. Of course. Mr. Mr. Judge is ready anytime you like. I'd like, I'd like to say something. Some people here are suspicious of me, right? But that's why I, I at least wanted you, Mr. Judge, to know that it's not true. Aww. Mm. I, I see you're such an honest and upstanding young lady. It looks like this witness is a real professional. What do you mean? Look at that 100 watt smile. Just when things are darkest for her, click, she lights right up. Very well then, let's hear what the witness has to say. Melissa Foster's history. Bom, 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 bom. I, I was out of the country until the year before last. Until I entered college, I had never even been to the Eagle Mountain before, and I certainly don't have any reason for wanting to hurt a police officer, holding a grudge and killing the officer who testified against me five years ago, or kidnapping a poor girl. I just think the defendant is a terrible, horrible monster. Doo -doo -doo. Huh, out of the country, eh? Precisely. Furthermore, she has no possible motive for committing murder. Hmm, indeed. You're up to bat, kitten. Sharpen those claws and put on your best smile. You bet. Somehow I have to tie her to this case. Melissa Foster's history. I was out of the country until we fell last. Was it Canada? So what country were you living in then? We were all living abroad, but after my parents were killed... It was a brutal civil war. She had to try to make her way back home alone. I lost everything. I didn't even have any personal identification. Aw oh, man, really? God damn, what kind of sob story is this? What do I do? Should I press her? Press her? Yeah, press her. Always press. Witness, answer my question. I'll even repeat it for you. What country were you in? Your Honor, this line of questioning is childish. What country she was in and how many languages she may speak are irrelevant here. What we're here to evaluate is whether this witness has any connection to this case. I've lived abroad ever since I was a little girl. That's why I could never have known Mr. Falls or Detective Hawthorne. Yes, I think we've established that point. Yes, indeed. Well then, shall we add what you've just stated to the official testimony? Yes, please, Mr. Judge. What? Naturally, I, I didn't know either the victim or the defendant. You didn't know either person? Are you certain of that? Yes, I'm afraid I'm rather shy around people. Hmm, oh well, that can't be helped. Why is he just agreeing with everything that comes out of her mouth? The first time you saw either of them was when they were on a bridge, correct? Yes, it really was a coincidence. Until I entered college, I've never been close to you. So what made you decide to go to, go to Eagle Mountain anyway? I just love being outdoors, picnics, hiking, you know, that sort of thing. You don't look like much of a hiker to me, but you do like you do look like a digger of sorts. But Eagle Mountain is a two-hour drive from here, and no trains run through there. There are plenty of mountains that are closer and easier to get to. Well, I went there once with the college hiking club. I fell in love with its stark, desolate beauty and its cold yet romantic gloominess. Didn't know you were such a goth. What? By the way, what's the name of your college? 
prosecution objects to any questions that involve the witness's private life. But... All that matters is that she is a material witness to a crime. The witness doesn't need to respond to questions that are clearly malicious in intent. Thank you, she's really gone too far. Huh. Miss Faye, you're treading on thin ice here, and I should know ice. I hardly said anything. Talk about sensitive. And I certainly don't have any reason for wanting to hurt a police officer. Alright, so we have to push something about her past here, I'm guessing. Perhaps, but your behavior that day was very suspicious. Not only have you contradicted yourself here in court, but you know things you shouldn't. For example, the scratches on the trunk of the car. Well, that's... Unfortunately, Miss Faye, your last statement proves nothing. Oh, really? And why is that? The witness came to the station once, so I don't know how suspect. Alright, conversation's over, chat. Done. Done. There's the line. No more. The witness came to the police station once to identify the suspect. It's entirely possible that at that time an officer showed her this photo. Huh, that seems like a rather serious mistake. Ah, that's the oldest trick in the prosecutor's book. That's not fair. That wicked inmate. I've ne never be I'll never be able to forget that horrible day. Holding a grudge and killing an officer who testified against you five years ago. A grudge? Well, the policewoman's testimony was crucial, wasn't it? Crucial in getting the defendant sentenced to death. Yes, and that's precisely why he harbored such deep anger against her. So much anger that he forgot his own guilt. My client has always maintained that he's innocent of those charges. He seems rather forgetful, your client, I mean. Not only did he forget about what he did, but he forgot the poor policewoman as well. What do you mean by that? Your client, he forgot what the detective looked like, right? It's too bad for her that he didn't forget about her testimony as well. Well, she's right about that. Mr. Falls is kind of forgetful. Press harder. Always. You said he forgot what the, de the detective looked like. What do you mean by that? Well, he couldn't tell who she was without some kind of identification, right? Quite right. That's why the victim was wearing a scarf as identification. We brought that up in front of her, right? I think we did. Why, if I had why if I had been wearing a white scarf that day, then he probably would have tried to kill me. That's true. He's clearly a bitter man. This is bad. Mr. Fall's reputation just keeps getting worse and worse. Sometimes it's best not to poke too deep. What should I do with that last statement? Have it added to testimony. Of course. Your Honor, what the witness said just now was tremendously important. I'd like to add it. I'd, I'd like it added to the uh, added to the official testimony. I can't read. Fucking hell. <laughs> The prosecution has no objection. After all, the defendant is a killer and a mentally unbalanced one at that. That testimony only helps further prove that point. <clears throat> no, that's not why I... Enough, witness, if you would. My pleasure, Mr. Judge. Do you guys think that um, having Mia go up against Chadworth, of all people, as her first case, and, and making Chadworth and Mia equals kind of weakens her a bit? Like, she's been like this... Like monolithic figure in Phoenix's life has been like the constant like pillar of of like look you you look up to her but like you go up against this against her rival and you like you beat him handily in almost every single case does I feel like that weakens weakens her a little bit and strengthens Phoenix a little bit I'm, I'm not sure do 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 like I thought Phoenix and and Chadworth were like the counterparts like equals but it turns out that that no even even his mentor was had the same problem with him like hmm do do I guess I'm lucky I wasn't wearing a white scarf do do what do you mean by lucky well, it's February now. Everyone is wearing scarves. If I had accidentally worn a white scarf like he said, then you would you yourself might have been killed. Hmm, that would have been a terrible loss for this world. Ha, it looks like you pressed too hard this time, kitten. Mr. Armando, keep looking around and you're going to lose sight of the finish line. Justice is blind, but she's not deaf. Sometimes you have to know when not to talk. I'm assuming that she loses this case, because doesn't she have another run-in with her in the first case? I, I, I'm not remembering 100% of the facts from the first one. I remember her saying she had a bad time in, in the first case, in the in the in in case number one in this game. So, like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's, it's fine. Or kidnapping a poor girl. I just think the defendant is a terrible, horrible monster. You knew about that incident, but weren't you out of the country until the year before last? Well, I saw a report about the escaped convict on the news. They had an in-depth report about his whole history. So you're still living abroad five years ago, is that right? Yes. I can't let her get away with these lies. 
Listen to me, she's neck deep in this whole thing. Somehow, you're just gonna have to get her to show the court her true self. Oh, shit. Okay, so how am I... How am I doing this? We still don't have much, um... Of, uh... In a way of evidence. Not losing her sister, victim of the kidnapping, murder, fell from the bridge, nobody found the law. Okay, so we have to prove that these two are the same person because that's clearly what's going on here. Okay, so how can I how can I like crack that? Start with a knife. Is it that talk to Dahlia? Tell the whole truth must come out. Before the truth, before the truth. I was on the country before last, actually I didn't know either the victim or the defendant. Until I entered college, I'd never even been to Eagle Mountain before, and I certainly don't have any reason for wanting to hurt a police officer. Holding a grudge and killing the officer who testified against you five years ago, I guess I'm lucky I wasn't wearing a white scarf or kidnapping a poor girl. I just think the defendant is a terrible, horrible monster. Okay, I'm pretty sure that she was there when we read this out, but just in case, like, how do you know that? Do it's true, Miss Falls did get the instructions of Valley Hawthorne about their meeting. The note that she left said, wear a white scarf for identification. Yes, what about it? Isn't it obvious? Doesn't it strike you as odd? That note was a secret piece of evidence. How is it the witness knows about it? Didn't... Didn't we say it in front of her? Ah... Uh, what? Maybe we didn't. Okay. Order, order. Hmm. It is odd, isn't it? Well, Mr. Mr. Shadworth, did you show top secret evidence to the witness? Your Honor, I certainly never gave anyone permission to do such a thing. In that case, the only way the witness could know about the... Just a moment. Wasn't she here on the stand when we said um, that, that he didn't know how to identify her and we presented this? I, I thought for sure it was more recent than that. I guess not. Okay, just a moment. Of course, of course I didn't know about the note. It's just I saw it when it, when it happened with my own eyes. When the victim went to see the killer, she used her own scarf to signal him. That's why. That's why I assumed that the signal was a white scarf. Oh, I suppose that makes sense. Come on, Mia, you can't let her weasel out of that easily. Out of it that easy. Witness, sorry, but your explanation isn't going to work here. But, but why? It's true. That's what I saw. Impossible. There's no way you could have seen the victim use a white scarf to signal him. If it's because the scarf is blue, are we, if we're finally pointing out that the scarf is blue, this one... You said several times in your testimony that the victim was wearing a scarf. A white scarf, correct? Yes, is something wrong? That's why I'd like to know, Miss Foster. Have a look at this. It's the victim's scarf. Ah, I'm sure people would disagree about what we call this cult. <sighs> However, it certainly is not white. You knew what the note said. She knew the contents of the note. No! It says, wear white scarf for identification. That's the reason why you said it was white. Uh, uh, uh. Well, Miss Foster? Meanwhile, in chat. No, it's white. It is white, though. It is... Joe, it's white. It's white, Joe, it's white. It's, it's white, Joe. Joe, it's white. It's white. It's white. It's white. It's white. And Chatterworth's hair is gray. Or, 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 or Mr. Chatterworth. I'm waiting for explanation. <laughs> I'm quite sure this note wasn't leaked to the public. Nothing about the brown scarf. And yet, this witness knew exactly what the note said. <laughs> At the time of the murder, the number of people that knew were quite limited. <laughs> Joke, just to make it strong. Yeah, I'm just having some fun. Don't take it seriously. Terry Falls is one. No one in chat was saying that. The person who wrote the note, Valerie Hawthorne, is another. And finally, one more person. Did you say one more person? That's right, a person that no one would have suspected. Have you figured it out, kitten? Yep. The third person that knew the contents of the note was... Uh... Well, 
Wait, what did they say? Shit, I missed what they said. I'm guessing it's Dahlia. It's either Dahlia or Melissa. And that person is Dahlia Hawthorne. Dahlia Hawthorne! I've never heard that name before. Look at the victim's note. This is what it says. Talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time. There, there is her name right there. Well, what's this? So who is this person? This Dahlia Hawthorne. Sigh. Miss Faye must be desperate if she's trying to bring the dead back to life. The 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 dead the dead. There is a ghost in this picture after all. Da <laughs> Alright, that's pretty good. Dahlia Hawthorne was the victim's deceased younger sister. She was killed in a crime five years ago. Killed in a crime? You don't mean... Yes, she was kidnapped and killed by Terry Falls. You said she was killed, but was she really? What are you implying? Of course, people thought she had died five years ago when she fell off the dusky bridge and was lost in the Eagle River. However, her corpse was never found. And as we know, if a corpse is never found, they're not dead. She was declared legally dead five years ago. As far as the law is concerned, Dahlia Hawthorne is officially dead. But the fact remains that her body was never recovered. She could be alive. Dahlia Hawthorne was 14 years, 14 years old five years ago. If she were still alive, she would be 19 now. Melissa Foster. I believe that's the same age you are. Uh, even you couldn't. Miss Faye, you're not saying. But I am. That's precisely what I'm saying. This witness before us is the girl that was kidnapped and killed five years ago. This girl's in fact Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. What? what? Nice work. That was like tossing a grenade into a three fire, al three alarm fire. But unless you can tie all the loose ends together, you're nothing but a hit and run arsonist. I understand. If I can expose, this is loud. If I can expose to nature, I can turn this whole case on its head. Now is my chance to make Mr. Chad worth squirm. Mm -hmm, mm hmm. Witness, just who are you anyway? I, I, I'm. I didn't think it'd come to this. That's enough. You don't have to say any more, witness. Yes, I understand. What, what? Mr. Chadworth, explain yourself. Your Honor, I have an admission to make. I honestly never thought the defense would pursue the matter this far. You don't... You don't mean... Yes, the prosecutor's office isn't filled with the fools, you know. Naturally, we conduct full background checks on all of our witnesses. What did he say? Ah, it looks like the kid knew. He knew her true identity from the get-go. No way, but then why? If you hadn't revealed her secret, he wasn't going to say anything about it. All he wanted was her testimony, so he made a little trade. Surely, that's at least a shade of illegal. Surely, surely. Come on, judge, let me introduce you to the victim's younger sister, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Yo, what's up? But, but I thought she died five years ago. We thought so as well. But, well, as you can see. Why? Why did she hide her identity for five years? That has nothing to do with the current case. Yeah, okay. She was merely an accidental witness to a crime. Sure. Her name is on the note, Chadworth. Accidental, I don't believe that for a minute. For the last five years, she's been playing the role of a victim. And now we find her acting suspiciously at the scene of another murder. Really, Miss Faye, I must say your strategy here is painfully obvious. You're trying to pin your client's crime on an innocent witness in order to win. At any cost. How dare you. Please, let us take a moment to think. Five years ago, this girl was kidnapped and nearly killed. Hmm. But even worse than that, five years later, Dahlia Hawthorne lost something much more precious. The red diamond. Oh, her big sister. Miss Faye must be insane to even suggest that she murdered her. How many levels of perjury is this on? With, I was out abroad, and I don't have an identification, and I don't know who I am. I'm inclined to agree with the prosecutor's logic. Miss Faye, do you have any evidence to back up your assertion? Okay, cool. What possible reason would this witness have for killing her beloved sister? Well, you see. I, th I thought I was winning, but somehow he's turned it around on me. Damn. Turnabout. Ha. Ah, I think you need a little push in the right direction, kitten. Have a sip of my coffee. 
The defense is prepared to present evidence supporting our claim. Ah, uh, that wasn't me. It was this guy. This crazy coffee addict. Objection! Objection. No, it was you. I think we've heard enough empty threats from you, old man. Ha, uh, what makes you think they're empty, boy? Because your protege looks like she's sweating bullets. Ah, I am sweating bullets. You think you're in a tough spot, huh? Of course, aren't I? No. You've just arrived at the moment of truth, that's all. Whether you win or lose, that's up to you. Up to me. Th thank you, weird coffee guy. Thank you, coffee dad. The rashness of youth, how charming. This is coming from someone younger than me. Now then, let's not waste any more time this way. What motive would this witness have for murdering her own sister, Valerie Hawthorne? Like, it has to be the diamond, right? There's literally nothing else. What is this? Is this the defense's idea of a joke? If so, I certainly don't get the punchline. Well, Miss Faye. Oh, that was the rashness of youth. The rashness of youth? And what is your point in this? Oh, shit! The witness stayed hidden for five years, Kitten. There must be a good reason for that. And somehow, must involve Valerie Hawthorne. Okay, one more time, Mia. You gotta read the court record more carefully this time. Oh, shit! Damn, let's not waste any more time this way. What motive would the witness for murdering her own sister, Valerie Hawthorne? Um, okay. It's not that? Did I hit the wrong thing? Can I save it? Oh shit, we really need to save. Can I hit can I hit E and save it? No. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay, it's probably the note, right? It's the note. Tell her this time the whole truth must come out. She was going to reveal the truth. It's got to be that. The story starts after Terry Falls escaped. He called Valerie and told her he wanted to meet. This isn't the note she left. It says, talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time the whole truth must come out. Valerie Hawthorne gave Dahlia a warning. She told her since she was going to reveal the world the, to the world the whole truth. The whole truth, eh? There was a dangerously important secret between Valerie and Dahlia. That's the reason Dahlia felt she had to kill Valerie, to keep her mouth shut permanently. A terrific story, Miss Fay. If you like fiction, that is. Aw, oh, damn, got him. Yeah, got him, eh? They enlightened the court, Miss Fay. What was the secret? The secret that was so important. Where's your evidence? Dahlia and Valerie Hawthorne and Terry Falls. There's only one important secret that connects them all. Oh yes, I know the secret. Your Honor, the defense would like to request further testimony. All right, let's save it. About this diamond. What testimony? Regarding the kidnapping five years ago, we believe it will explain a lot of things, such as the nature of the important secret between the Hawthorne sisters. Uh. Very well, I grant your request for further testimony. I know it will be painful for you, but can you enlighten us once more, my little maple leaf? <laughs> yes, I'll try, Mr. Judge. <laughs> Putting on the old charm one more time, Dahlia. Where this will be the last time you hide beneath behind your womanly wiles. <laughs> Five years ago. Five years ago, I was kidnapped by Mr. Falls. The ransom price was a raw diamond. My sister, Valerie, brought it to the bridge. After she made the exchange, she shot Mr. Falls in the arm. Is the bullet still in there? Metal detector, let's go! That's when Mr. Falls tried to kill me by shoving me off the bridge from behind. I survived. I lived, bitch, but I was afraid I might be kidnapped again for my money's family's money, so I decided to change my identity and start a new life. This is a long testimony, holy shit. Hmm. The kidnapping left her emotionally scarred. With her sister's help, she left the Hawthorne family and started all over again. And we're to believe after all that, she murdered her sister? Preposterous. Thank you, Mr. Chadworth. Miss Faye. Yes, Your Honor. As you've heard, the witness is still traumatized from the kidnapping. I'll ask you again to be extremely gentle in your cross-examination, even though she could be the murderer. Mr. Chadworth got to jump on me again. Ha. If we're not allowed to fight, then let's twist some arms. Listen up. We've still got that info that ace up our sleeve. What info? Come on, kitten. Don't say you've forgotten already. I mean, this guy at this point is probably the most veteran, like, defense attorney we've seen in the game, right? 
I guess Grossberg. Has there been anyone that's been more veteran than this? Is there, I, I'm starting to think that maybe there's more than coffee in these cups. <laughs> To, to deal like he's just like taking all this horseshit in stride he's like this is what this every trial is like this man you gotta get used to it he's like yeah it's bullshit whatever like there's more than coffee in these cups the, the fact that the kidnapping five years ago was staged do, 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 do. that's right it was a fat gay kidnapping terry falls told us that in the lobby i do anything she says anything dahlia says what you're saying is that the kidnapping five years ago was planned by, yeah, me and Dahlia and Valerie too. Yeah, that's it. The fucking kidnapping is your best shot, Mia. That's her secret. Five years ago. All right. Five years ago, I was kidnapped by Mr. Falls. Did you and Mr. Falls have a relationship? Yes, as a tutor. You were tutoring him, Mr. Falls? No, of course not. Don't be ridiculous. Mr. Falls came to the house to tutor me. In what? That makes sense. Five years ago, she was only 14. You probably came up with the kidnapping plan during that time. The Hawthorns are in the jewelry trade and are quite wealthy, you see. Huh. Quite the clever fellow, that Mr. Falls. No? Did I hear him right? Did he, I, did he just call Mr. Falls a clever fellow? The ransom price was a rare, di rare raw diamond. My sister Valerie brought it to the bridge. I heard the diamond is valued in the neighborhoods neighborhood of two million dollars. Our daughter is is she's too smart. We need someone to come in and tutor her how to be more of an idiot. Come on in, tutor her, make her a bit more dumb. Two million, two million dollars. It was still uncut, so it was about the size of a pint of milk. Hmm. A two million dollar pint of milk, eh? I don't know what to think about that. You can make a lot of double doubles with that. The defendant demanded that her sister Valerie make the exchange. Not as a detective, of course, but as an individual. By the way, I want to ask you, Mr. Chadworth, why do you think you wanted to make the exchange up, on, up there on the mountain? If you ever got surrounded, it would be hard to escape. There's one thing a kidnapper. If there's one thing a kidnapper wants to prevent. There's one thing a kidnapper wants to prevent, and that's police involvement. In a place like that, it would be easy to tell if he was being followed. With only one entrance to the mountain, he was ensuring his safety. Sure. What a wickedly clever man that Mr. Falls is. <laughs> yeah, right. It was all your plan. Anyway, Valerie brought the diamond to the mountain, and... After she made the exchange, she shot Mr. Falls in the arm. That was a dangerous thing to do, considering you were being held hostage. Yes, but... Actually, that saved my life. What do you mean? You see, Mr. Falls was holding a knife in his right hand. Somehow, I just knew he was going to use it. I knew he was going to use that knife to kill me. That's why my sister shot him. It was to save me. That's why Mr. Falls tried to kill me by shoving me off the bridge from behind. Instead of stabbing. I guess it could have been his, his knife arm was shot. I'd like to hear more about what happened right at that moment. Well, when Mr. Falls was shot in the right... There we go, he let go of me. I was dazed. I turned to try to run away, but Mr. Falls turned to grab me as well. As I ran past, he and I locked eyes for a second, and he gave me a large, bloodthirsty grin. A bloodthirsty grin, eh? Oh, it's getting interesting. Please go on. And in the next instant, Merry Christmas. I advise the court to remember that the river is eight... It's 18 feet deep and incredibly swift. I was a strong swimmer, but I was knocked out. When I came to, I had been carried away by the river to a strange place. I'll never forget that day. A crumbling bridge, nowhere to run. Then just one little shove from behind. That was it. And then Valerie found me, and they let the police search the river for weeks and months, and my family poured resources into it while I was still alive and just being like, yeah, I'm just gonna chill with my sister. Before my sister could catch me, I fell into the river. Nothing to do with the two million dollar diamond. Nothing at all. I survived, but I was afraid I might be connected again to the, for my family's money. And that's why you hid your identity? Yes. I only told my sister. Value Hawthorne, eh? Yes, she's the only one who knew about me. Meanwhile, legally, this witness has been deceased for five years. I, I didn't ever want something like that to happen to me again. Thanks for bringing it out. So I decided to change my identity and start a new life. And that new identity was Melissa Foster, right? I'm starting to think they're never going to explain how the body got in the trunk. Yes, my sister helped me get the get the official paperwork taken care of. That makes sense. Without an insider's help, doing all of the paperwork would have been impossible. She was the only person left in the world I could count on. 
And you, you think I killed her? There's no way I could. Hmm. It's the moment of truth for this witness, too. Once the truth about the stage kidnapping comes out, everyone in the court will know how much of a Jezebel she really is. I just gotta prove that the kidnapping was a hoax. Okay, so how do we... We proved that with a diamond, we have to. It's gotta be the diamond on something. So what happens to the diamond, right? Diamond on the exchange? What happened to the diamond? Your honor, what is the shit? No. The diamond helps. It's gotta be the diamond. It's gotta be the diamond. It's gotta be. Mm, maybe it's not the diamond. Okay. Uh, do I have to press everything again? How do I prove that it's a hoax? I can prove it's a hoax with this. The whole truth. Something bad happened. No, no, maybe, maybe, no. Taken by the witness bridge exchange for unchanged for five years. Oh, now we know it's unchanged for five years. Maybe, no. I'm a lawyer. This is a the original body count. Five years ago, I was kidnapped by Mr. Falls. All right, there's no way to say that it was a hoax. The ransom price was a raw diamond. My sister Valley brought it to the bridge. After she made the exchange, she shot Mr. Falls in the arm. That's why Mr. Falls tried to kill me by shoving me off the bridge from behind. Is it the same like you were at the edge of the bridge? How did you turn around? Where were you going? Maybe? I survived, but I was afraid I might be kidnapped again for my family's money. How did you survive? So I decided to change my identity and start my new life. Let's try that. This evidence established the defendant is lying, right? That must be to confirm. Nope, it's not that. Okay. Is it this one instead of the other one? Addiction. You said that Mr. Falls pushed you into the Eagle River. However, that's hard to believe, but it's true. I felt a push on my back. I'm certain of it. It was Mr. Falls. I'm sorry. I guess I wasn't clear enough. I shouldn't have said that's hard to believe. I should have said, that's impossible. Impossible? I asked that the court recall the, c the condition of Dusky Bridge an hour and five years ago. That bridge hasn't changed one bit in the these last five years. If someone had pushed you from behind as you would have claimed. Oh yeah! Oh yeah, okay. Fuck, I didn't even notice that. I mean, I guess there's this one too. I guess push from behind like, over the side, right? Isn't that what it looked like in the image any too? Like it looked like she was pushed over the side? Mm, but then like, where would she be running to? Maybe she grabbed onto that? Uh, I don't know. That's that's a neat detail in, in the um, in, in the diagram for sure. I like that. But, 
Okay, instead of being carried away by the river. You would have been smashed by the bedrock below, and most certain death. Like he's a huge guy. He could he could easily just shove her right over uh over the sides, right? How tall are they? Honestly, he could probably shove her through those. It's hard to tell actually, but yeah. Uh I think he could do that. It does say shove though. Hmm. I would like to see I would like to see the flashback again to see what the bridge looked like, because I feel like this isn't right. Do you understand now, Dahlia Hawthorne? The very notion that my client pushed you from behind is impossible. Uh, Your Honor, this event occurred five years ago. Why, for all we know, the water level in the river may have been higher back then. <laughs> but it's 40 feet from the bridge to the river. A small change in the water level wouldn't have made a difference. Ugh. I mean, I think we need to know more about this river. There's a river down in Moncton that has like the, one of the highest or the highest change in tides in the world. I think that might I think that might matter. You know, you're right. If the events occurred just as the witnesses testified, then the defendant couldn't have pushed the witness into the river. Young lady, what is the meaning of this? Uh, I I er, you see I. Just a moment, Your Honor. It's true that the witness testified that the defendant pushed her into the river. However, she never stated that she fell from the back end of the bridge. What? What do you mean? After being shot in the arm, it's plausible. Yeah, he looks way taller than that. Yeah, shove- eh, I don't know. It's plausible that, that Mr. Falls panicked. Therefore, he could have unwillingly pushed her off the side of the bridge. If that's true, she would have fallen into the river. Well, Miss Hawthorne, is Mr. Shadow's explanation correct? Now that you mention it, I do remember now when I fell off the bridge, my skirt got caught on one of the bridge's side wires. You can't be serious. Order, order in the court. It seems Miss Faye's assault has finally reached its conclusion. Not now, Mia. This is no time to retreat. Unfortunately for you, this is just the start of Miss Faye's assault. What, what? I believe your reasoning went something like this, Mr. Chadwick. After being shot in the arm, it's plausible that Mr. Falls panicked. Therefore, he could have unwittingly pushed her off the side of the bridge. However, once again, I'm forced to say that's impossible. Ridiculous. What's so impossible about it? Because your flawed logic contradicts the court record. Alright. What court record does it contradict? The diamond! I mean, how tall it is, I guess? It's gonna have to be. It doesn't look that tall on, in, in the flashback, though. Mm, yeah, I guess so. Alright. Your Honor, all the answers are right here in this photo. Take a look at the wires supporting both sides of the bridge. They extend up to about five feet off the ground. It would be impossible to push someone off from there. No! Let's remember the size and strength of the defendant. Wires like this wouldn't be a problem for him. He could have easily picked up a 14-year-old girl and thrown her over. Yeah, but she didn't say that. She just said push. So young and already so forgetful, Mr. Chadworth. Mr. Falls have been shot in the right arm. Eh, I, th I think he could still do it. Uh, and more importantly, Valerie Hawthorne had, had her gun trained on him at point-blank range. Ugh. So Mr. Falls throwing the witness off the bridge? That is clearly impossible. Gah. Order, order. What's the this? Dahlia Hawthorne, you jumped into the Eagle River intentionally. What? What is this? What was that growl? Indeed, what do you mean by such a ridiculous remark? Yes, it's ridiculous. My sister was there to help me. She had her gun and handcuffs. She could have saved me. Jumping into a raging river like that, that would have been suicide. Perhaps, but still, that's exactly what you did. You were probably confident that you could handle the swift current, but even more so, the witness had a much more compelling reason for jumping into the river. Oh, then what was it? What's so important that she'd want to jump into the river? The witness is still alive. The fact alone explains everything. 
This is why she risked her life by jumping into the rapids of the Yellow River. I'm a lawyer. It's gotta be the diamond. Now it's the diamond. Five years ago, something else disappeared along with Dahlia that day. The item that that Valerie brought to the mountain with her. The $2 million diamond. Ah! Uh, no, no. It can't be. Yes, Dahlia had it all planned from the beginning. The $2 million. She was going to keep it all for herself. She forced Mr. Falls to help her fake the kidnapping. Bang. At the last minute, she betrayed him and threw herself into the river, with the ransom tucked away safely in her backpack. This is one risky-ass plan. Why, that's... That's simply ridiculous. I agree. Order, eh? Your Honor, five years ago, the witness was only 14 years old. Do you really think a 14-year-old is capable of such a demonic plan? This woman is a demon, and there was one more person who helped make a demon out of her. Her sister, Valerie Hawthorne. You mean the victim was involved in the kidnapping plot as well? But she was a detective then. You're saying she participated in her sister's kidnapping? Precisely. I'm sure that it weighed heavily on her conscience for the past five years. This is the sole reason behind the victim's murder. What do you mean by that? <laughs> it's the worst voice on the day of the murder. After receiving the phone call from Mr. Falls, Valerie called her sister Dahlia, and then she told her what she was planning to do. Planning to do? She was going to tell the whole truth, as she wrote in her note. That is what sealed Valerie Hawthorne's fate. That is when you hatched your demonic plan to kill two birds with one stone, a plan that would ensure neither of your accomplices to the kidnapping would talk. And that is why you killed your sister, Valerie Hawthorne. Okay, how is she getting out of this? To go and make a simp out of Phoenix, what the fuck? Hee <laughs> hee. Who is that laughing at a time like this? Or is, is that the whole case that she, um... Was Diego the one that died? When she came in with the poison and the vial, and I guess that's how she gets away with it, because they had to, like, just throw the case out. After, after all, that's all it took? But... Okay. Who is that laughing at a time like this? Forgive me, it's just hilarious. Witness, is that you? You amuse me, woman. Miss Mia Fey. You can certainly weave an exciting tale. Naturally. You have the evidence to back it up, don't you? Evidence? Evidence that I planned the kidnapping, of course. That at 14, I plotted it with Mr. Falls and my sister. Well, I... And then one more thing. What happened to the $2 million diamond? If you can't provide evidence for it to at least show that... Huh... Well, Miss Faye, I... I don't know. What a joke. You, Miss Faye, are you stupid or something? I mean, I think this is enough doubt to pursue a different investigation. Or how can I prove a fake kidnapping that happened five years ago? I don't even have decisive proof of Valley Hawthorne's murder. I mean, just prove that she did this killing. Well, it seems that we've come to the end. We're out of the playoffs. To be honest, the witness's behavior does raise certain suspicions. However, I am forced to reject the assertion... As assertions? So, sorry, I want to say assertions. I read that wrong. Assertions made by the defense. Of course you are. Is this it? Is it really over? That girl's made a fool of me and there's nothing I can do about it. Time for Diego to pull out some bullshit. Huh. Without evidence, the trial is over. Who decided that? Mr. Armando, 
Come on now, kitten. Let's just make up some fucking evidence. Haven't you figured out that you can make your own rules? <laughs> this is kangaroo court, kitten. Do whatever the fuck you want. Make it a kitten's court. Just fucking sh bullshit. Just fucking just pull on your pants, take a shit on the courtroom. It's gonna be it's gonna be fine. There's your evidence, and the, and the judge will be like, "Hmm, that's a good point. What do you say, prosecutor?" For example, even if there's no evidence, there's still testimony. Testimony on the day in question. Dahlia Hawthorne murdered her sister, Valerie Hawthorne. She hid her body in the trunk of Mr. F in, of Mr. Fall's stolen car and then went to meet with him. Disguised as her sister, Valerie Hawthorne. That's what you think, right? Yes, that's right. In that case, there's only one answer, right? There's only one person left who can testify about Valerie Hawthorne's murder. Since there's no proof, there's only one thing left to do. Who is the one person who can testify uh, to that demon's crimes? Um, Terry Falls? We're not really going to put Terry Falls on the stand, are we? Valerie! Wait, are we going to channel a ghost? Your Honor, the defense wishes to call a new witness. A new witness? Yes, we would like to hear the testimony of Terry Falls. The defendant? There's only one person that can shed any further light on the situation. Only one person that knows what Dahlia's role in the kidnapping was. Only one person that can say whether the person in the photo is Valerie Hawthorne, or whether it was in fact her younger sister Dahlia disguised as her. There's only one person who can solve this riddle once and for all, and that person is... Terry Falls. No! Well, Mr. Chadworth, what is your take on this? See? Yeah, yeah, what do you, what do you think? Yeah. Huh, I guess so. Go ahead. Why not? The prosecution has no objection. Very well. Bailiff, bring the defendant to the witness stand, eh? As you can see, my client is an idiot. There's no way he could have orchestrated this kidnapping. This is my last chance, Mr. Falls. My last chance to establish Dolly's guilt. You're all I have left. Defendant, you've heard everything that's been said up to this point, yeah? Um, uh, um, uh, I don't believe it. No way. Dahlia died five years ago. Valerie betrayed me. Mr. Falls, I don't know what she said to you five years ago, but one thing is clear. Dahlia is very much alive, and you were used for two million dollars. That's not true. Mr. Falls, there's only one question I want the answer to. Two days ago on Dusky Bridge, who did you meet? Was it Valerie Hawthorne, or was it Dahlia Hawthorne? Dahlia, Dahlia, did you betray me? Five years ago, she promised, she promised, never ever betray each other. Terry. Strong Terry. Dahlia. It's true. It's true, you are alive. You don't trust me anymore? That makes me sad. Tell the truth, the real truth. I, I believed in you. I shouldn't need to say it. You should already know. And then Phoenix becomes the new Falls. Wow! Eating glass like he's eating his fucking prison ball, but there is one thing I will say. My life is in your hands right now, Terry. Dahlia. I will let Mr. Falls satisfy once and once only. Well then, Mr. Falls, yours will be the final testimony in this trial. Thank God. Witness. Gah. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> Go. Water. Please. Water. Hmm? Can't talk. Need water. Huh? Oh well, I guess it'll have to be my coffee instead. Okay, is he gonna fucking kill himself? W Wait, what's about to happen here? At least it'll match the way he's probably feeling right now. Darker and bitter than hell itself. Wow. Oh, okay. Who Terry Fla Falls saw? That day, 4 p.m., I stopped the car. I was in front of the bridge. She wasn't there, so I waited on bridge. I watched my car from bridge. I never put no body in that car. Finally, one woman came. She stood in front of me. We talked. Then she let... So it really was! Dun -dun 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 -dun. Let me pass you on this bridge. Hold on. That was... That was Valerie. Not my Dahlia. <laughs> Mr. Falls, you're covering for her. Do you think she would... That's enough, Miss Faye. His last statement was a fitting way to end the final testimony of the trial. Well then, Miss Faye, please proceed with your cross-examination, eh? Is this what you, how, you end, how you wanted to end, Mr. F Mr. Falls? Another guilty verdict to go along with your death sentence. There's only one person who can stop it. You, kitten. I think. I think. 
But she had the wrong color scarf, Terry. Wrong color scarf. That day, 4 p.m., I stopped, in the, stopped the car. I was in front of bridge. According to the note, the meeting was supposed to take place at 4.30. You certainly arrived early, didn't you? It was raining, already dark, too. You waited on the bridge for 30 minutes? Wow, Mr. Falls, Eagle Mountain, that spot. Strong, strong memories. 30 minutes of, uh, get the fucking thing open. All right, time to take the body. Hope he's not looking. God damn. Why didn't, why did he just climb up? Could it be he's hiding something here? You were quite early, so you wait on the bridge, correct? Yeah, I like waiting. I'm used to it. I'm sure he is. Zebra Boy waited five years to ask a single question to find out why a woman betrayed him. To him, 30 minutes must have been like a blink of the eye. I watched my car from bridge. I never put no body in that car. But someone else did! You were watching the car? That bridge. Other side is broken. Nobody can come from there. So, I was watching car. What, what, what else were you expecting him to do? I suppose that's the obvious thing to do, but something's bothering me. I'm getting a, that feeling. A contradiction? I wonder what's on the other side of the broken bridge anyway. Me too, actually. No one no one lives there. There's a small shrine up on the mountain, but that's it. No one gives a shit about that mountain. Don't even ask about it. Everyone hates it. That's why they never fix the bridge. It's just the worst mountain. That's what everyone reviews it after they come back. Anyway, nobody came. No car, nothing. Finally, one woman came. She stood in front of me. Mr. Falls, think carefully now. Are you certain that it was Valerie Hawthorne? Uh, 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 I never lie. It's the truth. It was Valerie. I remembered her. Wait a minute. If you had remembered her face, then why did you make her wear a scarf as identification? Uh, sorry. I told the little lie. But the woman I met, she was different from woman standing here now. She was different. It was Valerie. We talked, then she left. What did you talk to her about anyway? Mr. Falls. Valerie told the truth about the kidnapping five years ago. She said someone needed to take the blame for it. That was all I could think to do. She said that. That's why she lied. Got me the death penalty. And were you satisfied with that answer, witness? Dahlia died. It was my fault. But I don't really remember. Maybe I did. Maybe I did push her in. It don't matter no more. Either way, my Dahlia, my sweet teen angel, dead. But you just saw that she isn't dead. After Valerie talked to me on bridge, nothing left to live for. That was... That was Valerie, not my Dahlia. How can you be so sure? It was raining at the time, and sunset that day was at 5 o'clock. It would have already been pretty dark on that mountain at 4.30. Please, Mr. Falls, this is your last chance. You've already taken the fall once for something you didn't do. That woman. It wasn't Dahlia. Stop right there. What more needs to be said? Hmm. Lots more. Even if it means the death penalty. Even if it means taking the blame for murder. You'll still do whatever is necessary to protect her. Won't you, Mr. Falls? I know it's obvious, but he's clearly lying. He's been cursed by Dahlia Hawthorne. He'll probably go to his grave still believing in her. Mr. Falls. Even if you can show he's lying, the poor guy will still be cursed. You'll still have to point out the contradiction anyway. That's the curse of being a defense lawyer, I guess, and putting up with the judge. Okay, so I watched a car. I never put no body in that car. Okay, but that doesn't mean someone else didn't. Right? That's gotta be it. That doesn't mean someone else didn't put a, car, a body in the car. Alright, so what do we want? But there's still a body in there, Mr. Falls. Attention! Your Honor, that statement contradicts this evidence. Shit. Can you even see it from there? I mean, probably. Car? That bridge, other side is broken, nobody can come from there, so I was watching the car. 
Sorry, what else were you expecting me to do? I suppose it's obviously to do, but something's bothering me. I'm getting a feeling of contradiction. What was on the other side of the broken bridge anyway? No one lives there. Is this only this anyway? Okay. okay, can't be the diamond. Can't be the photograph. It wasn't this. this or is that just a clue for the contradiction? She wasn't there way down the bridge. That's at 4 p.m. We on the bridge. And there's just something on the so on the bridge. She wasn't there, so I waited on the bridge. Alright, I watched my car from the bridge. I never put no body in that car. Can I say that, that Dahlia did though? Like, I don't even have Dahlia. Which would it be? Nah, it wouldn't be that. Finally, one woman came in front of me. We talked, and she left. That was that was Valerie, not my not my Dala, Dalia. Okay, but how did she end up dead then? Then she left. All right. Then how did she end up in the in the car? No. Man, I feel like there's, this is a really easy contradiction to like be like, well then how did she end up dead in the car if you didn't do it, Falls? Like, something was see here, but it wants something very particular and I don't know what. Okay, let's go through it. That day, 4 p.m., I stopped the car. I was in front. I was in front of a bridge. Yep. Okay. So you just stopped the car. That seems right. You stopped the car. You're in front of the bridge. All right. It wasn't there. So you went on the bridge and you waited for it. Yep. Okay. I watched my car from bridge and never put no body in that car. Yep. Finally, one woman came. She stood in front of me. So so Dahlia showed up and, and crossed the bridge and, and walked past them onto the bridge. And they talked. And then she left. That was that was Valerie, not my Dahlia. Okay, I'm I'm really not seeing any like slam dunk contradiction here. That that isn't like it's not accepting it. So it must be need something like um like I don't know like something specific. Like, this is right. Stop the car in front of the bridge. Yep, there's nothing wrong there. She wasn't there, so I waited on the bridge. Yep, that's true. Yep. I washed my car from the bridge and I put no body in that car. Yeah, but, like, someone else did. I could say, like, just because you didn't put it in there doesn't mean someone else didn't. That 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 seems like a, a good line of thought. Finally, one woman came. She stood in front of me. Yep, that's fine. Like, that, that's all the information is there. She, she, she came, she passed him, and she stopped in front of him. That's fine. Like, that is what happened. We talked, then she left. And that's not what happened, like, I guess, because someone died, but, like, how do I do that? That was, the, that was my Valerie, not my da Dahlia. Like, is it that it was the wrong scarf? Addiction. Your Honor, that's statement country statement. No, okay. Like, I feel like, I feel like there's so many contradictions here and it's not accepting any of them. I never put no body in my car. Okay, but that doesn't mean that Dahlia didn't put a body in the car. No. That doesn't mean that Melissa Foster didn't put the body in the car. 
No. How did her... How did the scarf get muddy if she just talked and you left? No. Alright, I think it's this one. Let's just shotgun it. Nope. This is the one where it said she smells a contradiction, so let's just shotgun it and see. Nope. So when you got to the bridge, no one had arrived, huh? Okay. So you waited on the bridge, you're sure of that. How... how is that it? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. You're sure, huh? Well then, I'm sure too, Mr. Falls. I'm sure that you're lying. Huh? Uh, wah. Wah, wah. Wah. Oh? I would love to hear your rationale on this, Miss Faye. You want to know who arrived at the bridge first? Just look at this photo, it's perfectly clear. Obviously the person that came first would be the one at the end of the bridge, right? Yeah, but she could pass him! There's enough room on the bridge to pass. He held her- he had her at knife point before. He- she just could have passed him. It's dumb, but then how else did the body get in the trunk? Unless he- unless he's completely in on it, but then why would he go, like, be pleading to the defense attorney? Like, he didn't know Dahlia was alive at that point. But that's the victim at the end of the bridge. Precisely my point. In other words, Mr. Falls, you must have arrived at the bridge after she did. Then how did the body get in the trunk? Ah. Uh, um, Mr. Falls, please don't get so worked up. We just want the truth. I want to know how the body got in the trunk before I judge this. I want to know how the body got in the trunk. In, in the trunk. I got there around four o'clock. It's true. I I had somewhere to go, a special place. Did you go to a special place before you went to the bridge? Yeah, it's an old temple, about fifteen minutes from the bridge. Five years ago, me and Dahlia we promised each other. We swore we wouldn't betray each other. We brought a memento. Sh sorry, she brought a memento to represent our love. A memento. Five years ago, I hid it under base of a tree there. It's a special memory for me. Okay, cool. And then Phoenix ate it. This is it. This is what I went to get. This little bottle on your necklace is a memento, eh? It's quite charming, but it looks empty. Your Honor, you heard what my client said. He arrived at the scene at 4 o'clock, but he then left his car unattended and walked away. He was gone for approximately 30 minutes. Urgh. Without much time... Dahlia Hawthorne could have easily hidden the body in the trunk of his car. Mm. 
Nah, it's not worth it. No. Indeed, there certainly was enough time for it. I've got a chance, Mr. Falls. There's no mistaking it. Huh, Mr. Falls? Whoa, what the fuck? That's enough, please. Witness! I promised her five years ago, if it ever happens, that we can't trust each other no more. Then, we're supposed to drink bottle. Urgh. No, stop the trial. Your honor, we need a recess. I, I was stupid, couldn't keep promise. So I did it. I drank this. Okay, did he just try to st stop the trial so his client wouldn't be declared guilty instead of trying to st stop the trial to save him? Or like a recess, not an ambulance? Huh. No, we are close, just a little more. I was going to prove your innocence. No, don't want that. Don't trust self. Maybe kill again. Kill Sweet Dahlia again. Mr. Falls. Mr. Armando. Thanks for the coffee. Ah! Merry Christmas. Mr. Falls, he just fell. Shit. And so my first trial ended suddenly and tragically. It ended with no winners, only losers. Ah, okay. so deep into my soul I thought I'd never heal. I'm sure it was the same for the younger prosecutor as well. But one person, the true criminal, Dahlia Hawthorne, she left the courtroom with a secret smile on her demonically sweet face. But at least my client got declared not guilty. Confetti court! Confetti court! Unforgivable, that witch. Mr. Armando, we were so close to the truth. It was right there in front of us. You were just a little too soft, kitten. It's my fault. It's all my fault that Mr. Fox killed himself. Mr. Fox, Fox. Don't cry, kitten. You're going to make my coffee all salty. I knew it. I knew I wasn't cut out for this. Mia. Don't you get it? You can't cry yet. This is what being a defense lawyer in kangaroo court does to a man. The only time a lawyer can cry is when it's all over. Meanwhile, Mia has shards of coffee cup all in her face. Mr. Armando. No matter how tough the case, no matter how bitter the memories, they always fade over time. Then you file them away and eventually forget them. This very same courthouse. Is that an IV bag or something else? Like, what is this? I myself got wrapped up in that case. <laughs> Only after that did Dahlia Hawthorne get put on trial for her crimes. But she miraculously disappeared before she could be found guilty. The verdict that was ultimately handed down to her was... Guilty, of course. Naturally, when the verdict was read, she had a perfect angelic smile on her face. It was finally all over. At least, that's what I thought at the time. Unfortunately, I couldn't have been more wrong. It's been five years, but now something has happened that's made me remember all this. I finally shat out the glass. <laughs> A 
brand new episode has been added. Bridge to the turnabout. Okay. So we have Phoenix. And is that is that the only Chadworth that we get in this game? What the fuck? And then and then I don't know who this is down here. Okay, we're gonna watch the intro and then that's the stream, everybody. And then we will continue this tomorrow. We will also watch the intro again tomorrow, fresh together. So if you want to skip out, that's you. Oh, that's the statue with the, the sword. Sword. The treasured Crane Village heirloom, whose name means seven branch sword. Aw, oh, man, it's, it's Crane Village bullshit. Okay. Less interested. It is said that this sacred sword represents life itself. Though the branches may appear to be infinite, the choice is limitless. It's not. Like our destinies, the sword comes to but one end, one mercil merciless point. Oh, this is a cool effect. I like this. And when the silver cord, the fragile but not that fragile thread that binds us to this world is severed, Who the fuck is that? The illusion is revealed and the Im implacability of fate is finally laid bare. February 6, 9.48 a.m. Wright & Co. Law Offices. Don't be my- Alright, well, this just started with a fucking whimper. Alright, let's see how it goes. Hope you're intrigued to watch tomorrow after after that take I just had. Uh, thank you Blobfish2000 for the 37 month resub. Thank you very much. Thank you Parzavale for the 3 month resub as well. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Phoenix Tun, Phoenix Sun for the 300 bits. Thank you. And last but not least is Griffin Knight with a 3 month resub. Thank you very much Griffin Knight. Alright, so uh, this took longer than I thought. I thought we could be done in 5 hours, not 6, but an extra hour, that's not too bad. Okay, so this is probably how long the streams are going to be all week, because it's probably going to be like 6 hours and then 6 hours to make sure that we're, we don't have to go like 8 hours on one of the streams. And then I'm guessing Cyberpunk's going to be like a longer stream too, depending on how it goes. But I don't know, maybe we can get Cyberpunk done in 4, four hours. Cyberpunk is only first impression stream. I'm not going to be streaming it more than that stream on Thursday. That's it. It's not a full playthrough. Um... I, I don't think that would be a good stream experience, so we're just gonna we're just gonna play it once, see see how it is, you know, experience it together, and then and then that's it, and then we'll we'll be back with um, uh, maybe a different game the week after, and then we'll go into uh, the David Cage marathon. Maybe we'll do like a, a short game or something after that, and we'll see. Anyway, see you guys later. Have a good night. Thank you for watching. Oh, thank you, uh, Launcher AF. Or Locker AF, not sure, for the new sub right now. Welcome. Thank you very much. Last case was pretty good. Uh, it was alright. You know, it, it had some some bad moments, but it was an interesting, like, back and forth. And uh, it feels like a prelude to, to this one, I think, I'm guessing. So it was a pretty good setup. It was alright. 